So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto is a full-blooded Acha. Part 3. If you guys enjoy this, what if? Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 13. Lucky Number 7 and Sasuke Recovery. Two months passed since Tsunade became the new and not a lot had happened really. She was focused on rebuilding the village and everything was going smoothly thanks to the help from Koyuki as they were now allies. Naruto and Natsumi went on a few CNB rank missions together since Tsunade wanted to get them ready for their departure soon. When Natsumi wasn't with him, Naruto went on some A and S rank missions as well. Natsumi learned of her training trip with Jiraiya and was a bit hesitant at first given his antics. That was understandable due to the fact that she noticed she was starting to grow now and she didn't want him aim her like he does everyone else. Naruto gave her a barrier seal that keeps anybody from seeing through it just in case and then she accepted the trip. Naruto was unable to tell Natsumi what he was doing due to the status of it but he just told her that she'd better come back able to match him in skill or else her trip was for nothing. This of course led to her challenging him again much to everyone's amusement given that they probably passed Guy and Kakashi on the amount of challenges they've had. Naruto's birthday also passed and Natsumi threw him a last minute party at Ichirikus. However, Naruto took that day to remind Natsumi that she was younger than him still and that led to a sibling spar which she of course lost but she had fun. Naruto was currently walking into the hospital with Natsumi and wasn't happy about it since he just finished a B-rank mission. Remind me again why we're at the hospital. Naruto said. Because Sir Duckbit got hurt again on our mission. Natsumi said. I'm surprised you're not the one getting hurt a lot on your missions given your temper. Naruto said. I know right. It's like he has some sick fetish for getting hurt. Natsumi said. You think Sasuke's a masochist? Naruto asked and she nodded. That's the only way to explain why he's always hurt. What about Anko? Isn't she into that stuff? Natsumi asked and he sighed. Sort of. Anko's more of a sadist. Naruto said. I guess I can see that. Natsumi said. Switching subjects now. How's your training going with this Naruto asked. It's going great. Granny Tsunade said she'll help me with some next week. She thinks I'm ready for some more advanced ninjutsu now. Natsumi said. I see. What about the other thing? Naruto asked. Um. I may have a problem with that. Natsumi said. What do you mean? Naruto asked. Well, I was testing my limits with the chakra and it formed a cloak with one tail on it. What do you think it means? Natsumi asked. It could mean a number of things, but to be on the safe side, I suggest you don't use it for now. Naruto said. What if I talk to it? Natsumi asked. Can you talk to it? Naruto asked. Yeah. He talked to me during the exams when you were fighting that guy. Natsumi said. About what? Naruto asked and she sighed. He said that I'm only on this team because the Sharingan has the ability to control a tailed beast and that's why we were put on the same team. Natsumi said. I see. Naruto said. Is that true? Does the Sharingan have the ability to control a tailed beast? Natsumi asked. Yes. Naruto said. So, you're only on my team to control me if I lose control. Natsumi said and Naruto flicked her forehead. I'm not on a team to control you if you lose control of the Nine Tails Chakra. We were already going to be on teams the moment our parents found out about us. Besides, I can just knock your ass out if you lose control or simply use a chakra suppressing seal on you. Naruto said. 1. Don't ever flick my forehead again. 2. He also said something about you going blind because you have a Manjikyu. Natsumi said. Well it's true that I do have my Manjikyu Sharingan unlocked, I barely use it. My eyesight is fine. Naruto said. So you won't go blind then? Natsumi asked. Oh. I'll eventually go blind, but I'll be okay. I know how to deal with that. Kurinai and Anko know what to do when I go blind. You don't have to worry about it. Naruto said. If you say so. Look, there's Sakura. I should have known she'd be here already. Natsumi said. What did you expect? She's in love with him. Naruto said. Hey Pinky. We're here. Natsumi said. Huh? Oh hey. I didn't expect you to be here so soon. Sakura said. Oh? Why's that? Were you expecting some alone time with Sasuke? Natsumi asked and Sakura turned red. Let's shut up. Sakura said and opened Sasuke's door. Hey, Duckbit. Natsumi said. Look, Sasuke. I brought you some apples. I just need to find that knife I had before. Sakura said. You've been here before? Naruto asked. Yeah. He's been here for a couple of days now. Sakura said. Here's the knife. 
If that was your way of trying to get us to leave, then you need help lying. You suck. Mitsumi said and Sakura nervously laughed. Oh. Silly me. Sakura said. Oh well. Look at you. Getting all flustered because Sasuke is in front of you. Mitsumi said. Why do you have to come in here and ruin everything? Will you knock it off already? Sakura asked and Sasuke looked at Mitsumi as he remembered all the times she had to save him on missions. So, what exactly happened to you? Naruto asked as he looked at Sasuke. He got his ass kicked. We fought some guy named Aoi Rakushim who claimed to have the second sword of the second. Like I'd ever believed that bullshit. Mitsumi said and Naruto just looked at her. You mean to tell me that you had a chance to retrieve the sword of the thunder god and you didn't get it? Naruto asked. Wait. He was telling the truth. Mitsumi asked. Yes. That sword belonged to the second. What happened to it? Naruto asked and Mitsumi scratched her cheek. Well, I may or may not have destroyed it with a Mitsumi said and Naruto sighed. Should have known something like that would happen. Naruto said and they looked at Sasuke who smacked a plate of apple slices out of Sakura's hand. What the hell is your problem? Mitsumi asked. A Sasuke. Sakura said and he glared at Mitsumi. What the fuck are you glaring at me for? Mitsumi asked. You, Mitsumi. Sasuke said. That's my fucking name. Mitsumi said. I want you to fight me. Right now. Sasuke said. Um no. Granny Tsunade just healed you and I don't really feel like kicking your ass right now. We both know the outcome of our fights now and it's pointless to keep doing it. I've got bigger fish to fry and you're not one of them. I have no interest in fighting you anymore. Mitsumi said and Sasuke was officially pissed off. Shut up and fight me. Sasuke said and activated his Sharingan. Yup. Should have seen this one coming. Naruto thought. Do you really think you saved me? I don't care if she's the fifth. You shouldn't have gotten her involved in this. Sasuke said. Are you fucking stupid? You couldn't move a damn muscle. You should be thanking me for saving your ass. Mitsumi said and Sasuke got in her face. What's the matter? Afraid you'll lose? Sasuke asked and Mitsumi sighed. Sasuke, don't do this. Naruto, say something. Sakura pleaded. I think I'd rather have them sort this one out. Besides, this has been a long time coming between the two of them, and you know that. Naruto said. Sasuke, I'm not fighting you while you're injured. Maybe if you were healed and 100%, but the answer is still no. Mitsumi said and walked away, but turned around to catch a punch aimed at the back of her head. I said fight me. Sasuke said and Mitsumi squeezed his fist making him wince. If you want your ass kicked that badly, then fine. After this I don't want to hear shit else about you challenging me. Mitsumi said. Follow me. Sasuke said and walked away with Mitsumi following him. Naruto, do you really think they'll fight? Sakura asked. Yes, but Sasuke better be careful what he asks for and control himself. Naruto said. What do you mean? Sakura asked. Sakura, if Sasuke doesn't calm down, he'll eventually challenge the wrong person and they won't hesitate to kill him. He's a flight risk and is already on thin ice with the village. Naruto said. He's about to fight Natsumi. Is she one of those people that will kill him? Sakura asked and Naruto was silent for a minute. It's possible. There's only so much that a person can handle and we both know Natsumi has a short fuse when it comes to her temper. I'm not saying she will during this fight but it's always a possibility. Naruto said. Maybe we should go make sure it doesn't get that far. Sakura said and Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder. Let's go. Naruto said and vanished. Rooftop. So, you picked a spot where nobody can see you lose, huh? I promise I'll end this quickly. Mitsumi said and Sasuke grit his teeth. What was that, loser? Sasuke asked. I'm not a loser. If anybody is a loser it's you. You were hailed as a prodigy, yet you were surpassed by me in a few months. This loser also made before you and and this loser has beaten you more times than you've beaten me. You're beneath me. Mitsumi said, as Sakura and Naruto arrived. You have no business acting all high and mighty. Sasuke said. You must be looking in a mirror. You've flaunted your strength every day, and now that I'm stronger, faster and smarter than you, you decide to act out. Now, put on your headband. Mitsumi said. There's no reason for me to put it on because you won't be able to lay a single scratch on my forehead. Sasuke said. Just for that I'm going to mark you with my clan symbol. Mitsumi said. Your clan is nothing compared to mine. Sasuke said. Then prove it. Mitsumi said and Sasuke's eyes widened as she appeared behind him. How did? Sasuke didn't finish because Natsumi punched him right in the stomach, making him cough up some spit, and then she kicked him into the fence on the roof. Natsumi waited for Sasuke to get up, and he finally stood up, he jumped into the air and used a fireball. Natsumi countered with the water trumpet, creating a steam cloud that she took advantage of and used her sensing ability to get in close to Sasuke. 
She used a great breakthrough to blow away the steam and then smirked at Sasuke. You lose. Mitsumi said. Naruto and Sakura. Huh? How did he lose? He's still standing. Sakura said. Look at his forehead. Naruto said and she did seeing a swirl on his forehead. That's the symbol of the leaf village. Does she really think the village is a clan? Sakura asked. The swirl is the clan symbol of the Uzumaki clan. Kanoha used the symbol as a way to symbolize the friendship between both the Senju clan and Uzumaki clan. Naruto said. Senju and Uzumaki. Does that mean Mitsumi and Lady Tsunade are related? Sakura asked. They're distant cousins. Tsunade's grandmother is Mito Uzumaki. Naruto said. How come this wasn't taught in school? Sakura asked. You know, you really ask a lot of questions. Anyway, the history of the Uzumaki clan is in the restricted section of Kanoha records only accessible to two people. Mitsumi and Tsunade since it requires the blood of an Uzumaki to unseal. Mitsumi knows more than I do since she spends more time with Tsunade than I do. Naruto said, and then they heard a familiar screeching noise. Sasuke and Mitsumi. There's nothing on my forehead. I told you that you wouldn't be able to land a single scratch on it. Sasuke said. I didn't scratch you. Wipe your forehead. Mitsumi said and when he did, he saw ink on his forehead. How? Sasuke thought and glared at her. That's right. I marked you with the Uzumaki clan symbol. The steam was the perfect cover for me. This is over now that I've branded you and made you my bitch. Mitsumi said. She turned and started to walk away, but then she heard the sound of the Chidori getting closer to her. She sighed and created in her hand to stop him, but both of them were thrown towards the giant water containers. Sasuke removed his hand and smirked when all of the water came out of a hole the size of his fist, while Natsumi only had a small stream coming from where her attack landed. What do you two think you're doing up here? That was a little intense for a sparring match, wasn't it? What's wrong with you two? Naruto, why didn't you stop them? You're more than capable of stopping them yourself. Kakashi said. You were nearby watching since you got here so quickly. Besides, Sasuke and Natsumi just used their strength. Before that, Sasuke was getting his ass kicked. Up until the end, there wasn't any need for me to interfere, and when I was about to, you showed up. Naruto said. Well, he has a point. I just thought he'd stop them before it got this far. I am surprised to see Natsumi using the thought. Master Jiraiya didn't tell me that when I saw him last time. Kakashi thought and then looked at Sasuke. Were you really going to kill her, Sasuke? You really need to watch your anger and that sense of superiority. That Chidori is not the size you'd aim at a comrade from the Leaf Village. When are you going to finally grow up, Sasuke? Kakashi asked and Sasuke just jumped off the roof, only to see the opposite side of the water container Natsumi hit was completely obliterated by her. Damn it. Sasuke said and banged his fist against the wall before leaving. So much for teamwork. I'm guessing you finally got around to teaching her Kakashi asked. It wasn't me. Naruto taught it to her. She's ready for it and I won't hold it against her for using it. That Chidori undoubtedly would have killed her and we both know that can't happen. Jiraiya said, as he was leaned up against the water tank Kakashi was sitting on. Still, you should talk to her about the power it contains. Kakashi said. She only used enough chakra to cancel out the Chidori. At best both of them would have been thrown off the roof. Jiraiya said. Well, we've got bigger problems. Naruto said, as he walked up to them. What's that? Jiraiya asked. Four unknown chakra signatures just appeared in the village, but they hid their chakra as soon as they stepped into the village. Naruto said. Great. You try to find them. I'll alert Tsunade and have her send some out to find them. Kakashi, talk to your student. Mitsumi, come with me. Jiraiya said and everyone nodded before vanishing. I guess I'll go see what Ino is up to. Sakura said. Few hours later. Naruto looked around for whoever was in the village and had no kind of luck. He sent out shadow clones to try and speed up the search, but they couldn't find anything either. He thought about getting a member of the Inuzuka clan to help, but they only track based on scent, and they had nothing on the enemy to use for their scent. His hunch was correct because he felt Sasuke's chakra spike and sensed the curse mark power as well. He teleported over there and saw Sasuke on the ground while four people were surrounding him. He hid his presence and decided to listen to what they were saying. What does Arachimaru want with this guy anyway? I don't see anything special about him anyway. Kamimura would have been much better. Oh well. You spent most of your life in a village like this place, and you'll turn out mediocre at best. If you just keep playing ninja with all of your friends here, you'll continue to rot on the vine. Seiken said. You're acting like a fool. You should come with us. Lord Orochimaru offers you power. He said there'd be no point in taking you by force. You have to decide. Taiya said. This is turning out to be a real pain. Are you in or out? What do you say, kid? If this runt makes me wait any longer, I'm gonna wring his little neck. Seiken. 
Come and try it. Sasuke said, as his curse mark spread across his body and then he attacked Seiken only to be kicked into a well. Come on. You didn't think you're the only one Lord Orochimaru gave that to, did you? One shouldn't use the curse mark so recklessly, kid. Although it doesn't look like you have much of a handle on it, do you? If you unleash it for too long, the curse will eat away at your body. You're in the early stages of it, so it shouldn't sink its teeth into you too quickly, but once it spreads through your body, your former self will be gone. Never again to return. Seiken said. In exchange for the curse's power, you will be tethered to Lord Orochimaru. All semblance of freedom will be lost to you. To gain one thing, another must be left behind. What is your purpose in life? To stay here in this backwater village hiding with your little friends. Surely you haven't forgotten Itachi Ichiha. Teia said. You mustn't forget your purpose. Life in this village is little more than bondage for you. Sever your ties to this pathetic place. If you can do that, there will be no limit to the power you can wield. Remember your purpose. Seiken said and the four members jumped away. Well this just got a lot harder. Naruto thought and vanished. Tsunade's office. Bakashi, any word on the four unidentifiable people Naruto detected? Tsunade asked. No. It's like they just disappeared as he said. I couldn't use the ninja hound since we didn't have anything to smell. What about Master Jiraiya? Kakashi asked. He had to leave in the middle of his search. His spy network caught onto some ramblings about the Akatsuki. Have you heard from Naruto? Tsunade asked. No. I haven't talked to him since the search. Kakashi said. None of my found anything either, and I had to spread them thin, since a lot of them are out on missions. Tsunade said and Naruto appeared in the office. We have a problem. Naruto said. What is it? Tsunade asked. I found those four people who came into the village and they're after Sasuke. Naruto said. Why would they be after Sasuke? Tsunade asked. Because they work for Rachimara and that's not all I found out. Naruto said. What else did you find out? Tsunade asked. There's levels to the curse mark, and Sasuke's is only in the beginning stage. Orochimaru is promising him power. I didn't fight them because I could tell they each had a lot more power from their curse marks, and it wouldn't be good for me to fight them four on one if what they said is true about there being more levels. Naruto said. Damn it. We're spread thin, and I need both of you for separate missions that should have you back by tomorrow afternoon. How much time do you think we have before they make their next move? Tsunade asked. Maybe a couple of hours at best. They left the decision up to Sasuke, but if he doesn't meet them, then they'll take him by force. Naruto said and she rubbed her temples. Damn it. Listen, Kakashi. You already know your mission. Get back as soon as possible. Tsunade said. Yes, Lady Hokage. Kakashi said and vanished. What's my mission? Naruto asked. It's just a simple delivery to the hidden waterfall village. You'll meet with Shibuki to hand him an update on the information we know about the Akatsuki. After that you need to head back immediately, or I'll send a Katsai slug to you. Tsunade said. What about Sasuke? You can't leave him unattended. Naruto said. I know. That's why I'll have a team go watch his apartment until Kakashi arrives tomorrow. If anything should happen, I'll send a Katsai slug to inform you of any changes. Tsunade said. Alright. Naruto said and vanished. Shizun. Tsunade yelled. Yes, Mladi. Shizun asked as she came into the office. I need you to get four and I don't care if they're asleep. Get me the best we have. Tsunade said. Yes ma'am. Shizun said and quickly left. I need a drink. Tsunade said. Naruto. After summoning Dash, Naruto quickly flew to the waterfall village in less than two hours, but he was tired. He had to wait for Shibuki to meet him at the entrance which was being guarded by hidden members. After waiting for nearly an hour, Shibuki finally came out and escorted him into the village. The scroll was delivered and Shibuki in return gave them information on a possible Akatsuki member. When Naruto asked about FK, Shibuki blushed a bit and told him she was at her usual hideout spot in the village. I know you're there, FK. Naruto said and heard some giggling. Nice to see you again, Naruto. FK said as she jumped down to him. Same. So, how's the village been for you? Naruto asked. It's been great ever since I helped defeat Suyan and his little group of goons. I even made a few friends. FK said. So, they aren't afraid of you anymore? Naruto asked. Nope. I guess since they accepted Natsumi being a since she used Tailed Beast Chakra to defeat Suyan, they decided to give me a chance. I mean they even let me train with them now. FK said. That's great. No problems with the Seven Tails. Naruto asked and her stomach growled. Sorry, but he doesn't like being called that. FK said. Then what should I call him? Naruto asked and she held a fist out to him. Bump fists with me. FK said. Why? Naruto asked. I'm gonna take you to meet him and let him judge you. 
FK said. Uh, okay. Naruto said and bumped fists with her. FK's mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes and was inside of FK's mindscape. It was basically a wide open area filled with grass and bugs. There were some trees, but they were huge compared to the ones in the real world. Pretty sweet, right? FK asked. Yeah. How does your mind look like this? Naruto asked. Well, when I was bonding with my fellow resident, I thought about what I would want my mind to look like and this happened. I guess it's only something a person from the Yamanaka clan can do. FK said. That's really interesting. Naruto said. Follow me. FK said and ran off. Hang on. I don't know where I'm going. Naruto said and chased after her for about five minutes. Here we are. FK said as she stopped running. Where exactly? Naruto asked. Where my friend is, duh. FK said and then Naruto heard wings flapping followed by a voice. FK, who is this? The Seven Tails asked. This is my friend, Naruto. He's one of the people that helped defeat Sui in a few months ago. FK said. I see. A friend of yours is a friend of mine. I don't sense any ill intentions from him at all. Not even a little drop which is rare in an Acha. The Seven Tails said. How do you know I was in Acha? Naruto asked. Before I met FK, I could still see and hear what she did. Plus, I saw your Sharingan in use. The Seven Tails said. I see. Naruto said. Anyway, he's here because he doesn't know what to call you, since you don't like being called Seven Tails. FK said. I understand. My name is Lucky Seven Chimay. Chimay said. It's just Chimay. He only introduces himself like that because seven is a lucky number. FK said. Naruto Ichihan Amicus. Naruto said and bowed. Alright, now that we've got that settled, let's go. FK said. Wait. I want to talk to Chimay. I never know when I'll get to talk to a tailed beast again, and this is the only time I can do it at the moment. Naruto said. What did you want to talk about? Chimay asked. It's about a stone tablet that's in the Ichiha clan district. Naruto said. Hop on. Excuse us for a moment, FK. Chimay said and flew off after Naruto jumped on his head. Naruto and Chimay. Would you fly us away from her? Naruto asked. Because I have a feeling I know what you want to talk about and she's not ready to hear it yet. Chimay said. I understand. There's not much I can read on the stone tablet, but I read some of it. Naruto said. What do you want to know about? Chimay asked. When I was reading the stone tablet, it said something about a god seeking stability was divided into yin and yang, but when these two came together you obtain all things in creation. The only person I could think of was the sage of six paths, but nobody really knows anything about him. Do you know about him or what that means? Naruto asked and Chimay nodded. Yes. The sage of six paths as you call him is my father. He created the nine tailed beasts after using his powers to split the ten tails into nine separate bodies. Chimay said. How did he manage to split the ten tails? Wouldn't the ten tails be way too powerful for him? Naruto asked. Yes, but after the sage of six paths and his brother defeated the ten tails, the sage of six paths sealed the ten tails into his own body, becoming a after splitting up the ten tails and creating the tailed beasts, the sage of six paths then used a planetary devastation to seal the ten tails husk away and thus creating the moon. Chimay said. The sage of six paths has a brother and created the moon? Naruto asked. Yes. His brother was known as Hamuro Tsutsuki. They are the sons of Kugai Tsutsuki who merged with something known as the God Tree and became the ten tails. Hamuro Tsutsuki lived on the moon for the rest of his life where he would eventually pass away. Hagoromo Tsutsuki had two sons named Indra and Asura. Having been around for as long as I have, I can tell which reincarnate you are, but the difference is that I can tell you don't hold his thirst for power. Chimay said. Reincarnate, huh? Which one am I? Naruto asked. You are the reincarnation of Indra. However, your immense potential is far greater than his and Madara Cheha, who was also a reincarnation of Indra. Chimay said. So if me and Madara were reincarnates of Indra, then that must mean Asura has a reincarnate as well. From the way that Madara was I can guess Indra was the bad guy as we would say, and Asura was the good guy. So, that would make Hashirama send you a reincarnation of Asura and Natsumi as well. I don't get it though. It's like the reincarnates are all from one side of the family for Indra and Asura. Naruto said. You are correct and quite smart for your age if you were able to figure that out. Now, as for your assumption about the reincarnates being from each side of the family, you are right. Hagoromo's bloodline was divided into the descendants of his two children, which would eventually form the Senju clan, and through distant relations, the Uzumaki clan from Asura and the Ichiha clan from Indra. Tamei said and Naruto nodded. Can you tell me what the power of Saks Ra is? 
The tablet said that when someone who possesses the power of Sax Ra approaches the moon, an eye will open that is reflected on the moon to grant the eternal dream. Naruto said. The power of Sax Ra is known as the Outer Path and is used to revive the dead. However, the Outer Path can only be used by a that has not been seen since the time of the Sage of Six Paths, so you do not have to worry about that. The eternal dream is just powerful that traps you in a dream forever. Jimei said. That's what the infinite Tsukiyomi is. An eternal dream like an unbreakable. Naruto said. Correct, but the infinite Tsukiyomi can be undone when the powers of yin and yang come together. Jimei said. Then why is the tablet saying that the infinite Tsukiyomi will save the Ichiha clan? Naruto asked. That is false information. What else is on the tablet that you can see? Jimei asked. Other than what I told you it just talks about the Sharingan, the Manjiku Sharingan, its abilities, and the way you must unlock it, which I already know is a complete lie. Naruto said. How do you figure that? Jimei asked. The abilities of the Sharingan and Manjiku Sharingan are true since I have some of them, but the way to unlock the Manjiku is false. It said that in order to unlock your Manjiku Sharingan, you need to kill your best friend. My mother and I didn't unlock ours like that. She unlocked hers after her best friend died and I unlocked mine after I watched my mom die. Naruto said. Then it seems someone or something has been manipulating the stone tablet. Be careful looking into it though. We don't know what or who is doing it. Jimei said. Yeah. Wait, I have two more questions. Naruto said. What is it? Jimei asked. What about the descendants of Himura? Plus who is Hagoromo and Himura's father? Naruto asked. Amura's bloodline on Earth continued, which eventually would become the Haikta clan, and the Byakugan was also passed down to them. As for who their father is, he is known as Tenji. However, that is a story for another time. I can sense FK trying to communicate with you in the real world. Farewell Naruto Uchiha. Jimei said. Say and let FK know that she needs to get stronger. Tell her to be aware of the Akatsuki. They walk around with black cloaks with red clouds on them. They're dangerous and they want the tailed beasts for something. Naruto said and disappeared. Real world. Hello. FK yelled into his ear. Damn it. I'm up. Naruto said. Finally, a slug is here waiting for you. FK said and Naruto looked around. Man, what time is it? Naruto asked. It's morning time. We fell asleep with our fists connected. FK said and Naruto nodded. Lady Kitsai, what did you need? Naruto asked. Lady Tsunade wants you to head back to the village immediately. Sasuke Uchiha killed his guards, knocked out Sakura Hirono and fled the village a few hours ago. Kitsai said and went up in smoke. Damn it. FK, I'll talk to you again, alright? Naruto asked. Sure. FK said and gave him a fist bump. Make sure you keep on training. Naruto said and vanished. Naruto. Naruto quickly left the waterfall village and had Dash take him back to Konoha as quickly as he could. He got there in an hour on dash, and after talking to Tsunade about the problem, he was sent out with the medical corps. He saw Choji first, and his condition was critical, but the medical corps quickly took him back to the village. Niji was next, and he was in even worse condition than Choji as he was nearly stabbed through the heart. He couldn't find Kiba, but felt his chakra heading back towards the village. He heard the sound of trees breaking and headed in that direction. When he arrived, he saw Shikamaru there with Tamari and the same redeed from the other day that was after Sasuke, but the red-haired girl was dead underneath some trees. Shikamaru. Naruto said, as he landed next to him. Hey Naruto. Shikamaru said. Hello. Tamari said. What happened here? Naruto asked. Crybaby here needed some help. The Leaf Village called us to help them out. I didn't see anybody else though, but Kankuro and Gara are both here as well. Tamari said. These guys are insane. They have the same mark as Sasuke, but theirs is a lot stronger than his. There's a fifth member that Natsumi went after since he had the barrel containing Sasuke, and I can tell he's stronger than all of them combined. Shikamaru said. I'll go after her. You two head back to the village. If I see Gara, I'll tell him the same. Naruto said, but then they felt an immense amount of chakra that Naruto and Tamari recognized. What the hell is that? Shikamaru asked and the sky turned black in the distance. Head back to the village. I'll get Natsumi. Right now, neither of you would stand a chance if that's what I think it is. Tell Tsunade to get a room ready for Natsumi and Sasuke. Naruto said and vanished. Naruto was running through the forest as fast as he could, and with each step he felt the chakra getting stronger. Along the way he passed Gara and Rock Lee, telling them to head back to the village. He was sent flying back when a huge gust of wind from the direction he was going blew him back. He grit his teeth and then ran again hoping to make it in time. Just as he almost reached the valley of end, an explosion happened. Valley of End. 
Natsumi and Sasuke were both battling it out, while Sasuke was using the power of the curse mark, Natsumi was using a full tail of the Nine Tails Chakra. Natsumi gave up trying to reason with him, so now she was fighting him to the death like he wanted. Natsumi just looked at Sasuke as he started to transform thanks to his curse mark. His skin turned dark gray, his hair grew longer and turned dark blue. His eyes also turned dark gray, but his Sharingan was still active. Natsumi charged at him and grabbed him by his face before dragging him across the wall of the Valley of End. They stopped and the Natsumi was thrown away by something. She looked up and saw that he grew webbed claw-shaped wings from his back. Natsumi felt the power coming from him and knew she needed more. She drew out another tail of the Nine Tails Chakra and the ground underneath her caved in a bit. Sasuke went through Hans signs and Natsumi watched on as the Chidori he created turned black due to the influence of the curse mark. Natsumi held her hand out and created a hand that turned purple thanks to the influence of the Nine Tails Chakra. Sasuke flew at Natsumi ready to strike with his Chidori and Natsumi jumped towards him with her. They collided causing an explosion and in that brief moment Sasuke went to stab Natsumi in her heart but she managed to only have him hit her shoulder. Natsumi on the other hand was just going to knock him out but then she realized Sasuke is too far gone to be saved. So with a heavy heart, she gave him an apologetic look before she created another and tore through his chest, where his heart was a-killing him. Storm clouds formed and it started raining, while Natsumi just fell to her knees, looking at Sasuke's lifeless body on the ground. She started crying and closed his eyes. Up until Sasuke ran into Orochimaru, he was starting to come around, and she thought they were becoming friends. Their spars had a friendly vibe to them, while the need to prove themselves to one another about who was better than the other. He even cracked a smirk a few times at some of her jokes. The more she thought about it, the harder she cried. She was so distraught that she didn't know somebody was behind her until she felt a hand on her shoulder. She turned around and saw that it was Naruto standing there. Naruto, I. I know. Naruto said. She just jumped into his arms and cried for as long as she needed to before she eventually passed out due to exhaustion. Naruto pulled out a scroll and sealed Sasuke's body away before placing Natsumi on his back. He watched as the rain completely washed away Sasuke's blood before leaving. On his way back he met up with some of the medical corps who were headed in that direction. Naruto, what's Natsumi's condition? A med ninja asked. She'll pull through. She has a shoulder wound, but she's healing up as we speak. I'll still take her to the hospital though. Naruto said and he nodded. What about Sasuke Cha? Where is he? The med ninja asked and Naruto stayed silent before switching subjects. How is everyone else? Naruto asked. They're all in the hospital for emergency treatment. Shikamaru Nara has minor injuries, Kiba's injuries are more serious, not life-threatening. Niji Hayuga and Choji Akimichi are in serious condition. At this point there's no telling what could happen. The med ninja said. Hanoha Hospital. Naruto arrived at the hospital and Natsumi was immediately taken into the Aiku for treatment. Naruto went to the waiting area where he saw Tamari and Shikamaru who had his finger wrapped up. Naruto sat down on the floor against the wall and sighed before putting his head against the wall. He looked up when he felt a hand on his shoulder and saw Tamari giving him a smile. Come sit on the bench. The floor is uncomfortable. Tamari said and he nodded before sitting next to her. I'm surprised to see you at the hospital. I figured you'd be off in a hotel or something. Naruto said. I had to make sure the crying baby got back safe. Shikamaru, there's no point in making yourself crazy you know. Don't you remember your psychological training? With every mission comes sacrifice. Tamari said. If she's trying to cheer him up, she's doing a horrible job. Naruto thought. Training and reality are two different things. I thought I knew about missions. I thought I knew what it meant to be a shinobi. Now after this mission, my first mission is squad leader. Only one thing is clear, I'm just not cut out to be a shinobi. Shikamaru said. So you're giving up because your friends came back injured on a mission. What the hell did you think would happen on an S-rank mission? I've been on plenty of high-ranked missions and trust me, what you're going through now isn't even close to what I've seen out there. All of your friends made it back alive. Two of them are fighting for their lives right now, but they'll make it. Meanwhile the friends I've gained never had the chance to make it back to the village and you don't see me moping around like a fragile little boy. Get your shit together. You know damn well you aren't quitting being a shinobi because the instant you try to resign over this mission you'll get denied and your mother also wouldn't allow you to quit. Naruto said. I should have done more, but I didn't have the strength. It's all my fault. Shikamaru said. What? Are you afraid you might get hurt next time? Stop being a baby and man up. Go train instead of watching the clouds all the time with your lazy ass, so something like this won't happen next time. That's the second girl that kicked your ass in a fight and I'm the first one. You suck right now, but that doesn't mean you can't change that. Damari said and Shikamaru walked away only to stop when his father said something. 
Shikamaru, a girl disrespects you like that and you just walk away. Shikaku asked. You bet I do. Standing around arguing is not my thing. It's something girls like to do. Shikamaru said. Then what are you? You're not a man that's for sure. As far as I can see, you're nothing but a coward. You think if you quit the missions will stop. Someone's gotta do it. Your comrades will be sent out again on other missions with someone else leading them. They'll face the same risks and like Naruto said, some of them might not make it. Ones you might have saved if you'd been there to lead them. How are you going to feel then? You've got a chance to reflect on your mistakes and learn from them. Use your failures to make yourself a better leader. You won't help your friends by running away. Instead you should be trying to make yourself stronger for their sake. That way the next mission goes perfectly and everyone gets back safe. The choice is simple. You're either a leader or a coward. So, which are you? Shikaku asked and the Tsunade came out of the Aiku. Toji is going to be just fine. The antidote worked. The extermination of cells caused by the effect of the pills has been nullified. I couldn't have done it without your help, Shikaku. The Nara clan's secret medicinal preparation manual was very useful. The work that went into that manual, the years of research is quite impressive to say the least. Tsunade said. Thank you. Shikaku said and Shizun came running up to them. Lady Tsunade. Niji Hayuga is safe, his condition has stabilized, and there's more. I heard Natsumi arrived and has been examined. Natsumi's injuries are serious, but not life-threatening. She's going to be okay. Shizun said. Shikamaru, your mission was a failure. Tsunade said. No, it wasn't. Naruto said. What do you mean? Tsunade asked. The mission was successful. Naruto said and tossed her a scroll. What's this? Tsunade asked. His body. Naruto said and everyone's eyes went wide. You killed him? Tsunade asked. No. Natsumi did. I got there a few seconds late. Naruto said and she sighed. I guess it wasn't a failure after all. Tsunade said. Depending on how you look at it. Naruto said and stood up. Where are you going? Tsunade asked. Poem. I'm tired and Natsumi isn't light. Naruto said. You should go see her. Tsunade said. She needs time alone right now. I'll see her in the morning. Naruto said and walked away. Hang on. I need to pick up my fan from the exams. I'll walk with you. Tamari said and they left. Meanwhile in river country, a black-haired male with two lines on his face wearing the Akatsuki cloak was standing outside as it started to rain and his partner was standing behind him. If it weren't for the rain hitting his face, you could see tears falling from the corners of his eyes. Chapter 14. Departure. A few days went by since the Sasuke retrieval mission and everyone was released from the hospital. Natsumi stayed by herself in her apartment and refused to let anybody see her since she knew all they wanted to talk about was the mission. While she was in the hospital Shikamaru, Ino, Sakura, Niji, Kiba and Choji came by to see her, but she didn't say much to them. News spread about the mission around the village and surprisingly nobody hated Natsumi for her actions given that Sasuke killed those that were guarding him. Naruto decided to give her a few extra days to herself as the others told him how she was at the moment and he respected her wish to be left alone. However, Naruto decided to cheer her up a bit and made a pit stop to the Hayuga compound for her surprise. The people in the village were surprised to see a Hayuga and an Ichiha walking together, but they realized it was Naruto. He made it abundantly clear that he doesn't care about some silly clan rivalry. He made it to Natsumi's apartment building and went up to her apartment. Open up, Natsumi. I know you're in there. Naruto said and knocked on the door. Go away. I don't want to be bothered right now. Natsumi said. Come on. I've brought a gift for you. It's something to make you feel better. Naruto said. Is it Raymond? Natsumi asked. It's better than Raymond. Open up or I'll just use the key you let me have. Naruto said and he heard a groan. Fine. Natsumi said and opened the door. Yo. Naruto said and gave her a two-finger surprise. I'm here. What's the surprise? Natsumi asked and trailed off as she saw the person next to Naruto. Natsumi, I'm sure you know who this is. Naruto said and she just stood there with her mouth open. I'm Hiroshi Hayuga. Pleasure to meet you. Hiroshi said and Natsumi screamed. Naruto, what the hell? I'll be right back. I have to face my teeth and brush my wash. Natsumi said and slammed the door. Is she always like that? Hiroshi asked. You could say that. Naruto said and they heard crashing followed by swear words. She has quite the mouth on her. Hiroshi said. That she does. So, are you a ninja? Naruto asked. No. I was in your class for a bit, but I pulled out due to an injury which would prohibit me from fighting at my best. Now, I just help train some of the Hayuga members and take care of the compound. Hiroshi said. 
I thought that if you were a trainer in the side branch of the Hyuga clan, you aren't given the responsibilities of a caretaker. Naruto said. I'm not, but I have nothing else to do with my free time, so it's the least I can do. Hiroshi said. You should hang out with the Konoha Genin and see if Tsunade can fix your injury if you want to become a ninja again. She fixed Rock Lee, and I doubt your injury is as bad as his. Naruto said and the door swung open. Well, hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. Please come in. Natsumi said. Thank you. I must say your hair is very vibrant. Hiroshi said as he entered the apartment. D thank you. Natsumi said and blushed. You're welcome. Naruto and was about to go in the apartment, but she stopped him. Leave. Natsumi said and he raised an eyebrow. Why? Naruto asked. Because you're going to embarrass me. This is the first time I've said anything to him. Natsumi said and glanced at him as he was looking at her flowers. This is the first time you're talking to him and you're worried about me embarrassing you. Did you forget what you looked like when you opened the door? Naruto asked. Naruto, please. Natsumi said and gave him a pleasing look. Just answer my question. Are you feeling better about the mission? Naruto asked and she looked back at Hiroshi. I think I'm feeling better now. Natsumi said. Are you going to confess your love to him? Naruto asked and she blushed hard. Will you shut up? Natsumi asked. Not a chance. Payback. Hey Hiroshi. Naruto said and Natsumi's eyes widened. Yes Naruto. Hiroshi asked. Did you know that Natsumi loves it? Naruto said, but Natsumi covered his mouth and gave a nervous laugh. I love flowers as you can tell. Natsumi said and glared at Naruto who gave her an annoying eye smile. Quite the collection you have here. However, you should move them closer to the window for more sunlight. Hiroshi said and she nodded before closing the door. Naruto. What the fuck? Natsumi asked. What? I didn't do anything. Naruto said. Don't give me that shit. Natsumi said. I thought you'd be happy to see your boyfriend. Naruto said and she glared at him. He's not my boyfriend. Natsumi said and her eyes went wide. Now you see how it feels. Naruto said. Okay. Fine. I'll stop teasing you about Tamari. Can you please leave? Natsumi asked. Fine, but maybe you should talk to him about what's going on. You might feel better. Naruto said and she sighed. I don't know. Did you ever talk to Tamari about something like this? Natsumi asked. Yeah. One of my missions turned into an s rank mission, and I was the only person to make it back alive. I can't go into details, but I talked to her about it, and she made me feel better. Naruto said. I guess I'll give it a try. Wait. Do you think he likes me? Natsumi asked. Given how he didn't run away from you when you answered the door and then complimented you on your hair it's a possibility. Naruto said. Nice. Wait, do you even like Tamari? Natsumi asked. Yes. Naruto said. Then why aren't you together? Did you even kiss her? Natsumi asked. I've only kissed her on the cheek goodbye, and we're not together because she can't really leave the village due to them not having a current Kazakiage, so everything is right over there right now. She was barely able to come to the rescue mission. Naruto said. So you're saying that you won't be able to see her is the reason why you two are not together? Natsumi asked. Yup. Naruto said. Then how is it any different with me and Hiroshi? Natsumi asked. Because you both are in the same village and you can visit each other whenever you want. Now, go inside. Naruto said and she gave him a hug. Thank you. Natsumi said and Naruto hugged her back. For what? Naruto asked. For being a great big brother for all these years. Natsumi said. You're welcome. Naruto said and they broke the hug. I'll see you later. Natsumi said and Naruto walked away, but not before embarrassing her. Natsumi has a boyfriend. Naruto yelled and vanished making her scream. You fucking asshole. Natsumi yelled and ran into her apartment. Tsunade's office. Mission accomplished. Naruto said as he appeared in the office. What mission? Shizune asked. I had him get Natsumi to stop moping around in her apartment. What did you do? Tsunade asked. Hiroshi is over there. Naruto said. Wait a minute. You mean Hiroshi Hayuga? The boy she has a huge crush on? Shizune asked. Yup. That's the one. Naruto said. What did she do? Tsunade asked. She freaked out since she looked like shit. Naruto said. You just randomly showed up, didn't you? Shizune asked. Yup. I sure did. She'll thank me later. Naruto said. If you say so. Now, since you're here I think it's best that I let you know about your little trip. Tsunade said. What about it? Naruto asked. Instead of the six months that was originally planned, you'll be there for the same amount of time that Sumi is gone. Tsunade said. Why? I thought six months was all the time they needed. Naruto said. It was, but somebody had been supplying the Mizukage's forces and I need you to stay there a bit longer. 
Sonati said. That's an extra two years. I highly doubt that counts as a bit longer. Naruto said. True, but I know you can do it. If I didn't believe you could then I wouldn't be sending you there. Which reminds me. Your mission file. Sonati said. What about it? Naruto asked. I was reading it since you're about to leave on a long-term mission and I noticed that your missions on capture or kill, all of them have been captured on them. Why is that? Sonati asked. Because I only kill if I have to. The enemy was already defeated and killing them would just be going too far. Besides, all of the people I had to capture were sent to blood prison after their chakra was sealed away. Naruto said. Yes, but I figured some of them would be killed given their history. Sonati said. Well, there's already too much blood spilled in the world. I try not to add to it, but sometimes I'm left with no choice. Naruto said. Naruto, when was your first kill? Shizune asked and he sighed. I was seven and Danzo sent two of his roots after me. They had me, but I managed to kill them. Naruto said. How? Tsunade asked. Yeah. You were so young. Shizune said. My Sharingan. Naruto said. You must have been training hard then if your Sharingan was able to keep up with them. Tsunade said. I mastered my Sharingan when I was seven. Naruto said and they were shocked. Did you say seven? Shizune asked. Yes. Naruto said. That's unheard of. I know Itachi mastered his Sharingan at eight, but seven is even more of a shocker. Tsunade said. Not really. Shisui mastered his Sharingan at seven, but I've gotten beat by a few months. Naruto said. I see. Shizune said. Well, I need to get going. I've got some training to do. Naruto said. Right. Oh yeah. If you've seen Itsumi, make sure you tease her for me. Sanadi said. You got it. Naruto said and vanished in a swirl of fire. That was cool. Shizun mumbled. It's flashy. Just like his father. Sanadi said. Naruto. After leaving Tsunade's office, Naruto decided to walk around the village a bit and see what there was to do. He was greeted by civilians and ninja during his walk, and he kindly replied to them with a wave. It wasn't much of a secret that most civilians preferred him over Sasuke due to him being respectful and not full of himself. Naruto was walking around when he found himself in front of Kurinai and Anko's apartment building. He shrugged and went to see if one of them were home. He stopped by Kurinai's first, she wasn't home, so he went to Anko's place and heard her screaming in pain. He quickly went to her room and saw she was sweating a lot in her sleep with a pained look on her face. Anko. Anko, wake up. Naruto said and shook her making her jump up while breathing heavily. Naruto. Anko asked and held her neck in pain. Yeah. Same nightmare again. Naruto asked as he used some medical ninjutsu to relieve her pain, the curse mark was causing her. Yeah. The same one over and over again. I'm in pain on the ground from the curse mark and he just walks away doing his usual evil laugh. Anko said and laid back down. Need me to stay for the night or get Aruka? Naruto asked. No. I'll be fine. Anko said as she looked out of the window since it started to rain. Then how about I cook you some food? Red bean soup and dango. Your favorite. Naruto said. I'm not really hungry. I just want this nightmare to end. Anko said. Maybe it's still occurring because you need closure about the situation. Naruto said and she held a kunai to this throat. I'm fine. I don't need any closure. Anko said and Naruto calmly lowered the kunai. Anko, I've known you since I was a baby. I can tell when you're lying about something. This nightmare keeps happening because you still feel betrayed by Rajimaru. Is it the fact that he abandoned you or the reason he gave for abandoning you? Naruto asked. Neither. I want to know why he didn't kill me that day. I was right there, lying helplessly on the ground and I was an easy kill. Why didn't he do it? Anko asked. Because you're valuable to him. Naruto said. He fucking left me there to die. He said I lack the drive after he gave me this curse mark. Valuable to him, my ass. Anko said. Think about it. You told me that he tested 10 subjects including you with the curse mark, right? Naruto asked. Yeah. What about it? Anko asked. You were the only one to survive. I'm guessing he had been expecting the curse seal experiment to fail and was really surprised that you lived. It isn't your fault, but you're the reason he's able to give out so many curse marks like he did with the group that came after Sasuke, and I'm willing to bet that he has many more people with a curse mark. Naruto said. That doesn't make any sense. If I was so valuable to him, he wouldn't have abandoned me. Anko said. You have a point, but him not killing you had nothing to do with you seeming too weak for him. It was basically a giant middle finger to the people who made fun of him because of his desire to become immortal. You being alive showed them that he had a breakthrough albeit a small one in his quest for immortality. He basically used you as living proof that he can become immortal. Another thing, him abandoning you must have been because you were always strong-willed. 
Even to this day you refuse to use the curse mark, even though it's fully functional and causing you pain. Naruto said and she sighed. I guess it makes sense, but I have to live with this thing forever. Anko said. Well, not really. Naruto said. What do you mean? Anko asked. Remember when I was five and I first saw the curse mark, then you explained to me what it does and its purpose. Naruto asked. Yeah. Anko said. Well, I've been looking into it over the years, and I may or may not have come into your apartment while you were sleeping to look into it some more. Naruto said and she interrupted him. You do realize I sleep completely naked at night, right? Anko asked. Yeah, but I only need to see your shoulder, and I didn't touch anything. Anyway, the seal can be removed from what I can tell, but it's extremely dangerous. Naruto said. How? Tell me. Anko said and shook him causing her cover to fall off her chest. Please cover yourself up. I don't want to see that. Naruto said and she did. It's not like you haven't seen them before. Anko said. That's besides the point. Anyway, inside that seal is something evil. Although yours isn't to the level like the other ones we recently saw, it's still just as dangerous if released. Naruto said. What do you mean? Anko asked. That cursed seal has three components. One of them is his sinister chakra, which is how he's able to track curse mark users so easily if it isn't sealed off, the second component is what I'm guessing your seal doesn't have, which is supposed to be filled with some kind of dna to transform you, and the third component is the part that makes it so dangerous. Naruto said. What's that? Anko asked. He basically placed a piece of his soul inside of the curse mark. Naruto said. What? Anko yelled. It's true. It was the only logical thing to do. If the curse mark is supposed to be placed on people he wants to use to revive himself after death, his soul would need to be there for the seal to work how he wants it to. The question of how he managed to seal a portion of his souls into that is a completely different problem. Naruto said. Wait, so if we were to remove the seal then what would that mean for his soul? Anko asked. It means we'll have more than one Orochimaru to deal with, and I highly doubt we want that. There's only one way to remove that seal, and it's the evil unsealing. Naruto said. That sucks. The only way to remove it will cause more chaos. Anko said. Well, there is another way for it to get removed safely, but you'll slap me if I tell you. Naruto said. Tell me. Anko said. Well, you'll have to activate the curse mark for a bit, and I can use my chakra to force my consciousness inside of the seal and defeat the Rachimaru that's in there. Naruto said and Anko looked at him before slapping him as hard as she possibly could. Are you fucking nuts? There's no way in hell I'm letting you do that. Anko said. Just hear me out. You'll be able to tell if I'm in danger, and you can stop using the curse mark which will force me out. The plus side of this means the seal can be safely removed, and there's a high chance that killing this portion of Orochimaru's soul can cause him excruciating pain. Naruto said and she sighed. Naruto, I can't. What would Kurinai think if she heard about this stupid plan of yours? Anko asked. I'd slap him just like you did. A voice said and they saw Kurinai standing there. Shit. Naruto mumbled. That's right. Besides me, think about Natsumi and Tamari. They'd be distraught if you did that and died. Kurinai said and Naruto thought about it for a bit until he thought of something. I got it. Naruto said. Got what? Kurinai asked. A way to fix this and get that mark off of her after destroying the soul. Naruto said. Explain. Anko said. Okay, remember when I told you that FK took me into her mindscape to talk to the seven-tailed beast? Naruto asked. Yeah and you refused to tell us what you talked about. Kurinai said. I have my reasons. Anyway, what if we do the same thing? Technically speaking, Anko is kind of like that with that seal on her. She has the soul of something sealed inside of it, and she has the ability to use its power, but she doesn't. While you're sleeping, have you ever woken up in a weird space, and you were able to control what it looked like? Naruto asked. Yeah. After I had got the curse mark I was out for a few days, and I was in a dark space that turned into a torture chamber when I thought of killing Orochimaru. Anko said. If you can manage to do that, then you'll meet me in the sea. Together we can take on the part of Orochimaru's soul that's inside that curse mark. While the soul may have a form, you can control what happens inside of it and help me destroy the soul. You can make it so he can't move and quickly destroy him, or you can torture him for as long as you'd like. Naruto said. That seems kind of far-fetched to me. How would the three of us even get in the seal if your hand has to be in contact with the seal? Kurinai asked. Well, you'd have to stay out here and watch us. If either of us show any signs of danger, wake Anko up. She can force me out of the seal and we'll be back in the real world. Naruto said and Kurinai looked at Anko. What do you say? It's your call. Kurinai said. Would it really work? Anko asked. I'm 65% sure. Naruto said. What if it doesn't? Anko asked. 
I'll tell you where Aruka hides the extra dango, play kunai tag with you, and I'll let you tell Tamari an embarrassing story about me. Naruto said. I want something more. Anko said. What? Naruto asked. You have to pay for my dango for the next three years. Anko said and Naruto was silent. You should have known that coming. Kurinai said. I know, but I'm leaving for nearly three years soon. Naruto said. What? Kurinai asked. I have a mission and I'll be gone for two and a half years. I can't tell you what it is, but how about I leave you in charge of my money if this doesn't work and you can buy as much dango as you'd like until I get back. Naruto asked. Deal, but we're talking about that mission when this is over. Anko said and he nodded. What do you need us to do? Kurinai asked. I need Anko to activate the curse mark just a bit and then go into her mind. She should be able to feel my chakra being forced into the seal so she can pull my consciousness in there. All you need to do is supervise us really and pull us out if any signs of danger begin to show. Naruto said and they nodded. Okay. Let's do it. Anko said and activated her curse mark as Naruto placed a hand on it. Anko's mindscape. Anko opened her eyes and saw that she was in a torture room of sorts. Everything in here is what she dreamed of torturing Orochimaru with, and it made her smile as she ran her hands across all of the equipment inside. She felt Naruto's chakra and sort of grabbed it, then he appeared next to her. I guess it works. Anko said. Yeah. What is all of this stuff? Naruto asked, as he looked around. My equipment I want to torture Orochimaru with. Anko said. So you want to torture him? Naruto asked. I did, but I want this damn seal off as soon as possible. Anko said and then they heard an evil chuckle. What a wonderful surprise, Anko. Look at how much you've grown. It's been quite some time since I last saw you. Arachimaru said. Cut the shit. Anko said. Anko, this Arachimaru doesn't know what's going on because your seal was blocked off. Naruto whispered and she nodded. So he doesn't know about anything after that day? Anko asked. Apparently not. His chakra levels are low as well, so he's obviously a lot weaker than the current Orochimaru. Naruto said. I want to watch him burn alive and scream. Anko said and suddenly Orochimaru burst into flames making him scream. Well, there you go. Naruto said. I wonder what else I can do. Anko said. While Orochimaru was burning to death, Anko made sure to torture him as much as she could. His arms were ripped off, reattached and then ripped again. He was electrocuted multiple times, stabbed all over his body. She even castrated him a couple of times, making Naruto cover his man parts. While all of this was going on Anko was laughing and crying at the same time as she got her aggression out on him. Years and years of torture of her not being able to get her hands on him finally came to fruition. Eventually the soul of Orochimaru was no more as it was burned to ashes, and the best part about this was that Orochimaru in real life was screaming at the top of his lungs as his body was in immense pain right now. Anko collapsed to the floor and started to cry, so Naruto just gave her a hug as she let out all of her emotions. Thank you. Anko said and wiped her face. Any time? Ready to go? Naruto asked. Just a second. Anko said, and then nine tombstones appeared before she was ready to leave. What are those for? Naruto asked. The nine other people who died during that experiment. I may not be able to come back here after the seal is gone, but at least I'll always know they're here. Anko said and they faded away. Real world. They've been like this for how long? Haruka asked as he came to see Anko after his class was over with. About an hour. Kurinai said. Is she crying and smiling at the same time? Haruka asked. Yup. I guess it worked. Kurinai said and then Anko opened her eyes followed by Naruto. Finally, Anko said. Did it work? Kurinai asked. Yup. It's gone. Just one more thing to do. Naruto said and did the evil unsealing method on the curse mark, then watched it burn away. How does it look? Anko asked. Looks like you never even had a curse mark to begin with. Kurinai said and Anko pulled her in for a hug. It's about time I got that shit off of me, huh? Anko asked. Yes, it is. Now, not that I don't appreciate the hug, but can you at least put some clothes on first? Kurinai said and Anko laughed. Not happening. Haruka is here. The two of you have to leave. Anko said and pulled Haruka into a kiss. I'm out. Naruto said and vanished. One month later. Time went by and Naruto was getting ready to leave for Kiri in a few days. He and Natsumi wanted to get some more missions in so Tsunade sent them out on a few B-rank missions to keep them from bothering her. Natsumi was in a good mood because she spent every second she was in the village with Hiroshi and Naruto teased her for payback. Right now Naruto and Natsumi were in Tsunade's office after returning from their last mission. Mission accomplished. Natsumi said. Did the client get there safely? Tsunade asked. Define safe. Naruto said. What did you two do? Sanadi asked. 
In our defense, the guy was an asshole. Mitsumi said. What did you do? Tsunade asked. Wait a minute. It wasn't me this time. Mitsumi said. I find that hard to believe. Tsunade said. She's not lying. Naruto said. You did it. You're like the most level-headed person here next to Kakashi. Tsunade said. He had it coming. He kept bragging about being rich and that he could kick my ass. Simply put, he wanted to fight and got his ass handed to him. Naruto said. How bad was it? Tsunade asked. He won't be eating anything for a few weeks. Naruto broke his jaw in multiple places. Mitsumi said. Naruto. Tsunade said. Yeah. Yeah. Don't harm the client. I know, but rules say we must obey the client and I did. I technically didn't do anything wrong. Naruto said and Tsunade sighed. Fine. Tsunade said and Shizune came bursting into the office. Lady Tsunade. It's an urgent message from Suna. Shizune said and gave her scroll. I see. Mitsumi, Naruto. I have one last mission before the two of you leave for your respective journeys. Tsunade said. You're leaving. Where are you going? Mitsumi asked. It's not important. Naruto said and Mitsumi looked at him. Bullshit. Mitsumi said. Mitsumi. That's enough. I want the two of you to gather a team and head to Gara. Naruto's a sensor so I'm sure he can find them. It's Gara, Tamari and Kankuro. Four ninjas from the village of artisans have kidnapped a girl who is Gara's student. It's clear that they're after Gara, but we don't know what for. They challenged Gara and took off. They're headed toward the land of fire so you might run into them. You have 30 minutes to leave. Tsunade said and both of them vanished. Team Naruto. So what's going to happen? Mitsumi asked. We split up. They're already fighting. It's four enemies and one of them is further ahead. Kiba and Choji take to the west forest. Ino and I will take the hills to the northeast. Mitsumi and Lee take the northwest forest. We'll operate in backup squads of two. Naruto said. I still think we should have gotten the others. Ino said. You mean Shino, Niji, Hinata and Sakura? Mitsumi asked. The four of them are already ahead. They've been sent on a different route and won't be participating in the battle. They'll be responsible for healing the wounded so we can keep fighting. Niji and Shino will be the backup fighters in case somebody gets hurt, while Hinata and Sakura will focus on healing. Move out. Naruto said and they all went their separate ways. Damari. Damari was covered in cuts and bruises, and she was in a tough position. Her opponent was also a wind user, but she used her wind on a level completely different compared to Tamari, because she could use her swords to slice the wind or send Tamari's attacks back at her. Her opponent just destroyed all of the trees surrounding them with a powerful wind, and Tamari was in a pinch right now. Ah, nowhere left to hide and you feel helpless. Poor thing. Kujaku taunted. She can take everything I throw at her. I've got no choice. I have to try it. Tamari thought and used her wind style. Sea dragon, but nothing happened. I'm waiting. Wasn't something supposed to happen? It looks like the wind has turned its back on you. Kujaku said. I wouldn't be so sure. The wind and I are good friends. Tamari said. She held her hand up and then Kujaku was caught in the middle of a tornado that formed from the sky. However, much to Tamari's shock, she recovered and countered the, sending it back towards Tamari. Once the hit, Tamari was sent flying into a tree and coughed up some blood. Kujaku used the air slash and before it connected to kill Tamari, Tamari vanished. How did she dodge that? Kujaku asked. Right on time. Sorry to disappoint you, but she's not dying. Naruto said as he was holding Tamari in his arms and Ino was next to him. Who are you? Kujaku asked. Allies of the Sand. We're shinobi of the Leaf Village. Naruto and Ino said. So you're the one the Leaf trotted out for me, huh? Tamari asked as Naruto put her down. Something like that. Think of it as us cashing in the favor. Naruto said. Gara and Kankuro are chasing down the ones who have our village girl. You should go help them out. I can handle this. Tamari said. You sure are doing a fine job of handling it. You look like shit and she looks like she's not even trying. Besides, Gara and Kankuro have their own back up on the way. Naruto said. Good to know. Kujaku said. Why don't you take a break? I'll handle this one and we can go get the girl. Naruto said. I said I can handle it. Tamari said. Sure you can. Ino, make sure she doesn't fall over. Naruto said. Uh, sure. Ino said. You want to fight me as well? Fine, just another person eager to die. Kujaku said and got her swords ready. Don't worry, I'll end it quickly. Naruto said and pulled out his sword. Naruto took one step and then he just vanished before their very eyes, making them gasp. Kujaku wasn't prepared for an attack from behind due to how fast he was moving and he sliced her on her back. She dropped one of her swords as she yelled in pain and then Naruto appeared in front of her. 
Before Kujaku could react in time, Naruto kicked her other sword out of her hand and then punched her in the gut. He did more damage than I could after only three moves. Tamari thought. Man, he's fast. I can't even see him move. Ino thought. H how are you so fast? Kujaku asked. Draining and I get natural speed from my father. He was the fastest shinobi alive before he died. Naruto said. Is that true? Ino asked and Tamari looked at her. You mean to tell me that you didn't know the fourth was the fastest shinobi alive before he died? What did they teach you in the academy? Tamari asked. Why you're the son of the yellow flash? Kujaku asked. Yup. Naruto said. Before Kujaku could make her move, Naruto punched her again in the stomach and then gave her a few strikes underneath her left arm, striking a few pressure points, rendering that arm useless. While she was kneeled down holding her arm, Tamari came and smacked her away with her fan, before finishing her off with a wind dragon that literally ripped her to shreds. That's not fair. I had her. Naruto said. Well, I was tired of seeing her face. Tamari said and fell down in pain. See what happens when you don't listen. Naruto asked and poked her nose. Shut up. Ino, can you heal me? Tamari asked. Sorry. I don't know any medical ninjutsu. Ino sighed and Naruto smirked. I know medical ninjutsu. Naruto said and she looked at him. Then heal me. Tamari said. What's the magic word? Naruto asked. Seriously? You're going to do this now? Tamari asked. You're right. Kankuro and Gara might need backup. You're a big girl, I'm sure you can handle a little bit of pain. Naruto said and he was about to leave. Wait. Will you heal me please, Naruto? Tamari asked as she grit her teeth. Sure. See, that wasn't so hard. Naruto said and started to heal Tamari's wounds. I'm going to kick your ass when you're finished. Tamari said. You can try. Naruto said. Who taught you this stuff? Ino asked. Myself. I'm surprised you don't know any medical ninjutsu. You aren't much of a fighter. Naruto said. Hey. I can fight. Ino said. Yeah. Maybe an academy student. You're a far range fighter thanks to your clan techniques. Learning some medical ninjutsu won't hurt. It would actually help your team. Naruto said as he finished healing Tamari and helped her stand up. Thank you. Tamari said. You're welcome. Now, let's go save your brother and his student. Naruto said and left in a swirl of fire. He's so amazing and he's cute. Ino said and left. Oh hell no. He's mine. Tamari thought and quickly went after them. Few minutes later. Who the hell is that? Naruto asked as he, Ino and Tamari met up with the others. My name is Seimei. Seimei said. He was resurrected thanks to them taking away Gara's chakra. I think he wants to extract Shukaku from Gara. Mitsumi said. Well, unless he knows how to open that seal on Gara, then it's not going to happen. Naruto said. Mitsuri, are you okay? Tamari asked as she went over to the girl. Yeah, but Gara-sensei needs help. Mitsuri said. Okay. You guys look after her. I'm going to help Gara. Mitsumi said. Will you all relax? Gara is fine and doesn't need any help. Naruto said. He's losing chakra though. Kenkuro sighed and Naruto chuckled. Taking chakra from people like Gara and Mitsumi is pointless. Mitsumi and Gara have more chakra than everybody in their respective villages combined, but Mitsumi has way more chakra than Gara. He hasn't lost much chakra actually. Naruto said. Then why is Gara turning into the Shukaku? Kenkuro asked. Well, he's pissed off. They came into his village and took his student. Naruto said and then the sand started to fall off of Gara. Look. He's returning to normal. Mitsuri said. How tough? Mitsumi asked. He's fighting off the transformation. Tamari said. He wants to finish this fight using his own power. Not the monster within him which he knows he can't control. Kankuro said. So, you still have some fight left in you to fight off the Shukaku, huh? Seimei said. If I'm to help my friends, I must do it for myself on my own. Gara said. You're such a fool. Allowing your emotions to guide you. A shinobi must abandon emotion to obtain ultimate power, and power is the only truth in this world. You're about to find out. Your time is up, freak of the sand village. Seimei said and Gara smirked. That's what you think. Gara said. Why so cocky? I'm still draining your chakra as we speak. Seimei said. It's as Naruto said. I still have plenty of chakra left. However, all that time you had me trapped in that cage earlier, do you think I was sitting on my hands doing nothing? Gara asked. Meaning what? Seimei asked. Gara clapped his hands together and used his sand tsunami to create sand from the earth around them. Gara buried Seimei with his sand burial, but Seimei managed to escape it and then started to drain Gara's chakra even faster. Gara simply held his hand in the air and formed his ultimate attack known as Shukaku's Pike. 
Barra threw the pike at Seimei, and it broke through his ninja tool armor, as well as stabbing him in the stomach. With his ninja tool broken, Seimei fell to the ground, and Gara buried him underground with his giant sand burial, trapping him for good. All right. Mitsumi said. Gara sensei beat him. Mitsuri said and then Gara fell to the ground. Konoha few days later. So, this is it, huh? Mitsumi asked as she was standing next to Naruto at the gate. Yeah. I guess it is. Naruto said. I'm sure the two of you will be fine. Sanadi said. Maybe, but I have to travel with the pervert and I'm developing now. He might try something on me. Mitsumi said. Just remember to use the barrier I gave you. Trust me, you're going to love it. Naruto said. What does it do? Mitsumi asked. You'll see. Naruto said. There you are. I was looking all over for you. Jiraiya said as he appeared at the gate. You obviously didn't look hard enough, Kirby Sage. Mitsumi said. Don't call me that. Jiraiya yelled. Bite me. Mitsumi said. Will the two of you calm down? Anyway, Mitsumi. This scroll is from my grandfather's vault. With the way you progress, you should have most or all of them down when you get back. I also added some wind, earth and water ninjutsu in there as well. Tsunade said and gave her a scroll. Looks kind of small to hold all of that. Mitsumi said. It's a storage scroll. You have sections labeled for each chakra nature on the scroll to make it easier for you. Tsunade said and Tamari appeared at the gate. There goes your girlfriend, Naruto. Mitsumi said. Shut up. Naruto said and walked away. You didn't deny it. Mitsumi yelled. Naruto and Tamari. I thought you went back to Suna. Naruto said. Not yet. I wanted to see you before you left. Two and a half years is a long time without seeing you. Tamari said. I'll still write you letters. Tatsu doesn't mind. Naruto said. I know, but it's just weird not knowing where you are. Tamari said. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I promise. Naruto said and she looked down. What if you're not? What if something happens and then I? Tamari was cut off by Naruto who pulled her in for a kiss that made her eyes widen until she slowly closed them and relaxed into the kiss. This was their first official kiss instead of on the cheek like they always did and she pulled him deeper into the kiss. They broke apart and she stared up into his eyes with a smile on her face. I'll be fine, okay? Naruto asked and she nodded. Okay. Just promise me that you'll write as soon as you get there. Tamari said. I promise. Naruto said. So, are we official? Tamari asked. I don't know. I'm about to be gone for nearly three years. Who's to say that you don't find somebody else? Naruto asked and she gave him a kiss. I don't want anybody else. Tamari said. Then I guess we're official then. Naruto said and they heard a hawk in the sky signaling he had to leave. I'll be here when you get back. Tamari said and gave him a hug. I'll see you later. Naruto said and gave her a kiss before going back to the others. So, how was it? Did you kiss? Mitsumi asked. Did you kiss Hiroshi on your birthday? Naruto asked. No. Mitsumi said and blushed. Right. Anyway, do you still have the scroll on the Naruto asked. Yeah. Mitsumi said. How about a challenge? One more for the road. No wagers on this one. Naruto said. I'm listening. Mitsumi said. My challenge for both of us is to create our own version of the. Dad already had the massive. I'm talking about something unique that's never been seen before. Naruto said and spit on his hand. You're on. Mitsumi said and spit on her hand before shaking his. Come back as strong as me, Mitsumi. I may want to test you when you get back. Naruto said and gave her a hug. I'll come back even stronger than you. I can't become someone stronger than me. Mitsumi said and he chuckled. Of course you can't. Take care of yourself. Naruto said. You do the same. Mitsumi said and then Naruto left with a squad of making her sigh. Are you alright? Tsunade asked. No. He's been with me like every day since we were five. It's going to be weird not having him around. Mitsumi said. I guess you're right, but this is best for the both of you. Tsunade said. I guess you're right. Mitsumi said and gave her a hug. Take care of her, you pervert. Tsunade said. Don't worry I will. Jiraiya said and they started to walk out of the gates, but Mitsumi stopped to say something. I'll see you later, mom. Mitsumi said and ran after Jiraiya. Mom? I thought the day would never come when I'd hear those words. Tsunade said and looked at the direction they went. Take care Natsumi. It'll be a long two and a half years without you. Tsunade thought. Chapter 15. Return. Two and a half years have gone by since the departure of Natsumi and Naruto. The village has grown a lot along with the other Konoha genin, while Shikamaru and Niji were the only ones made. The news of Natsumi leaving the village with Ureya made the Akatsuki halt their plans since they couldn't track her movements. 
There were also ramblings of the Akatsuki failing in some attempts to capture any stray, but nothing was ever proven. Itsumi grew a lot over her training with Jiraiya, and she was thankful for the seal Naruto gave her, because Jiraiya did in fact try to peep on her a few times. Her growth made her an exact replica of Kishina, but she was a couple inches taller than her mother, as she stood at 5'8". Her hair also grew to her thighs, but she has loose bangs covering her forehead and side bangs framing her face. In terms of her overall skill, Jiraiya said he rated her above Kakashi, but below himself. Her ninjutsu skills were off the charts, and Jiraiya knew she'd excel at ninjutsu, but not to the level of not really needing hand signs so early. Her tojutsu was enough to force him to nearly fight her at full strength. She mastered her Wing Chun fighting style, and Jiraiya wanted her to learn something else, so she decided on Muay Thai and Krav Maga. Jiraiya also got her started on Frog Kumite to get her ready for when the Toads decide to train her. Jiraiya nearly took her everywhere except Kiri and Kumo. They didn't go to Kiri due to the war they had going on, and he didn't take her to Kumo because of the past when they tried to kidnap her mother. He didn't want to risk them being ambushed and possibly having the Akatsuki catch on to them. Her lessons were taught to her by Samurai in the Land of Iron, and she was a master since it was in her blood. In order for her to use the Kubakirabacho easier, she placed a small storage seal on her, and so she can just summon it in the middle of a fight. Her training with Jureya also meant that she had to learn to use the Nine Tails Chakra, and Jureya was shocked that she didn't have any negative effects until the fifth tail started to show. Jureya has a huge gash on his chest because she lost control one day and attacked him. He worked with the necklace of the first to suppress the Nine Tails Chakra since he used a chakra suppression seal. She woke up the very next day without knowing what happened, and Jureya decided to keep that from her. She was still horrible, but she could break out of B rank now. She also came along great, and she learned most of the Tsunade gave her. Jiraiya deduced that her wood style is a possible reason for her to use so much of the Nine Tails Chakra with no negative drawbacks, and she told him that she already figured that out with Naruto. So, pervy sage. Mitsumi said. I thought I asked you to stop calling me that. Jiraiya said. Yeah and I also asked you to not peep on me during the trip, but that didn't happen. Mitsumi said. I didn't do it much. Jiraiya said. You've tried every single day we've been traveling. You're lucky you aren't dead right now with your nuts chopped off. That seal Naruto gave me saved your life. Mitsumi said. I still want to know how that thing works. Jiraiya said. Nope. If you know how it works then you'll find a way to get rid of it and that's not happening. Mitsumi said and he grumbled under his breath. What is it then? What do you want? Jiraiya asked. Do you think I'll make it after all of this training? Mitsumi asked. Isn't that what you were aiming for? Jiraiya asked. Yeah, but the way some people on the council feel about me, they might still treat me like the plague and vote against it. Mitsumi said. You didn't read the messages Tsunade sent me so it's no wonder you don't know this. Tsunade changed the entire council so now only the shinobi council decides who gets promoted. I think you'll just do a test as a formality to see where your skills are. Jiraiya said. I guess. I mean I don't mind kicking somebody's ass. I hope it's Anko. I still owe her for cutting my cheek during the exams. Mitsumi said. That was like three years ago and you instantly healed after that. It's not like you have a scar on your cheek. Jiraiya said. That's not the point. I will have my revenge. Mitsumi said. Make sure you fight her wearing skimpy clothing in a pool of water. Jiraiya said as he started to giggle with blood coming out of his nose and Mitsumi turned to give him a creepy smile. You know what comes next, right? Mitsumi asked and Jiraiya paled. Mercy? Jiraiya asked. Not a chance. Mitsumi said and Jiraiya could be heard screaming for miles making all women smile that hurt him. Kanoha. The Hidden Leaf Village has been quiet without Natsumi around and the village morale was a bit low. It was Natsumi's pranks or challenges with Naruto that gave the village a bit of extra life and without it everything seemed so boring. However, Tsunade did her best to change the village and she did just that. Her medical program was an instant success and she even took Sakura on as her apprentice. Their mortality rate on missions were significantly less than they were before, since every mission had at least one medic in the team now. The village also expanded further out thanks to the increased population, as many have heard about Kanoha prospering under Tsunade. Of course there were the usual spy that would try to get into the village, but everyone had to go through a screening process which involved dealing with Anko and Ibiki, which easily spelled disaster for any spy. Once the spies were caught, they were simply placed in a stasis scroll and sent back to their home with a kind message from Tsunade, which had an underlying threat if they did it again. But the village expanding and more money coming into the village under Tsunade, many merchants started to redirect their routes to take them through Kanoha and see the village themselves. The allies of Kanoha eventually came to renegotiate their treaties, and each treaty was better than the previous ones they had. 
of course many villages were hesitant on Kanoha's growth since they looked like they were getting ready to attack somebody, but Kanoha was adamant on not attacking anybody who did not attack them. Speaking of Tsunade, she quickly became the focal point of many of the new men that moved into the village, and some of them even asked her out on a date, but she respectfully declined. It flattered her to be wanted still at her age, but she couldn't bring herself to go out with them since she loved someone else. Shizun also had her fair share of interests and went on a few dates, but the most shocking date she had was with Genma who she would still occasionally go out with. Lady Tsunade, it's almost time for their return, isn't it? Shizun asked and Tsunade looked up at her. Already? I thought they had at least a few more months. Tsunade said and went back to her paperwork. Nope. I marked it on your calendar. I knew you'd miss them. Especially Natsumi since she called you her mom before leaving. Shizun said and Tsunade smiled. Yeah. She's grown on me faster than I thought she would. She reminds me so much of Kashina that it's not even funny. Tsunade said. I wonder what she looks like now. Do you think Jureya actually trained her? Shizun asked. He did. I sent him a few slugs on the mission and he said she's grown quite a bit. Tsunade said. I see. I couldn't help notice your paperwork is nearly done and you've been caught up on work for the past year. This wouldn't happen to have anything about a certain pervert returning to the village that you mumble about in your sleep, is it? Shizun asked and Tsunade blushed. No. You've been keeping up with your hair and making sure your breasts are nice and perky. This wouldn't happen to have anything to do with a certain chewing, would it? Tsunade asked and Shizun turned bright red. And no. Shizun said. Really? Seems like he notices and you two do spend a lot of time together. Is it possible that Shizun has finally settled down? Tsunade asked and now Shizun had smoke coming from her ears. W we're just friends. Shizun said. Somebody you're just friends with sure does take you out on a lot of dates. Somebody you're just friends with gets an awful lot of kisses on the cheek and each one moves closer to his lips. Tsunade said and Shizun held her head down. Okay. Fine. I like him, but we haven't declared what we are yet. Shizun said. You'll be fine. Anyway, the exams are coming up soon. Have you heard from Shikamaru? Tsunade asked. No. The combination of him being lazy and Tamari traveling between here and Sauna is making things difficult. Shizun said. Tamari should be here in a few days, so I'll just talk to both of them then. Tsunade said and stamped a rejection sign on a piece of paper. Another for the rejected pile I see. Shizun said. Yeah. The old civilian council members have put in a request for an early release. They've got about two years left. They'll be fine. Tsunade said. I must say that the crime rate in this village has gone down now that we've expanded our prison here after the village grew. Shizun said. That's because before we had limited space and now it's more space for more people. Everyone that has been killed in this village was sent to blood prison while the lesser charges are spent here. Tsunade said and had a shocked expression on her face as she read a letter. What is it, Lady Tsunade? Shizun asked. It's a recommendation for Naruto to get a field promotion too. It's signed by Mei and the other leaders of the rebel faction. She said he's shown growth in leadership, skill and tactics. Every mission he was on he made sure his comrades returned safe even if it meant failure. Tsunade said. Wow. I wonder how we missed that. Shizun said and Tsunade approved of it. This had to be sent two years ago. It's at the bottom of the pile. Tsunade said. So, he's A, but Natsumi isn't. Shizun said. I think we both know what Natsumi will make when she comes back. I didn't want to give Naruto the vest right away since I wanted to test them first. I know it's pointless, but it's something I promised somebody I would do. Tsunade said and Shizu nodded. I can't lie and say that I'm not eager to see how much they've grown. Who do you think will be stronger? Shizu asked. Without a doubt Naruto will, but I think with Natsumi getting uninterrupted training with Jureya who said he didn't go easy on her, I think that she'll be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him for a bit. Tsunade said and Shizu nodded as she grabbed the cart-filled stacks of papers. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I'll take these to the filing office and then take my lunch. Do you need anything before I go? Shizun asked. No. Just tell Genma that I said he has a mission tomorrow morning. Tsunade said. I will. Shizun said and left with a smile on her face. Kiri. The Bloody Mist Civil War was something that plagued Kiri for years under the reign of the fourth Mizukage, and it was finally over. Although it wasn't much, thanks to Kanoha sending over support and medical supplies during the Civil War, the rebel faction led by Mei Turumi was finally able to win and put an end to the Civil War. It wasn't easy, but thanks to Kanoha sending aid, there were a lot less casualties on their side, and they were able to counteract the Mizukage followers. Mei was very thankful when Naruto made it to Kiri because at first he was the medic of the faction, thanks to his knowledge in medical ninjutsu. 
he trained a few people with the help of his shadow clones to add more medics to the faction and even gave them some books to study from that he had. About two months after Naruto arrived in Kiri it was revealed that the fourth Mizukage, Yagura, was already dead and his death was a mystery. Ao pointed out that he detected that Yagura was under and Naruto pointed out that only a Sharingan user would be strong enough to control A. This led to a discussion about and about a year after Naruto was sent there is when he discovered Danzo was sending his men to help keep the civil war going while trying to manipulate the Mizukage loyalists to his side. He brought this to Mei's attention and assured her that Sanadi knew nothing about this because Danzo has been sending Root after him as well for years, but there's never any trace of them left after they die since their body goes up into flames. He had the idea for her to send her best stealth team with him to take out some of their bases around the village and she agreed to the plan. It took about five weeks to do so, but they managed to take out most of the loyalist bases around the village that would prevent them from moving forward. The final year was spent picking off loyalists and sometimes killing them if they didn't surrender when given the opportunity. Naruto has begun to wear his mask again when he reached Kiri because they were supposed to be there in secret just in case they were on the losing end and he struck fear into the hearts of the loyalists because many of them thought he was a younger version of Kakashi who earned the moniker Sharingan Kakashi in Kiri during the Third Shinobi War. The biggest difference was Naruto gave them a chance to surrender, whereas Kakashi wasn't so nice and 9 times out of 10, they surrendered when Naruto gave them the option. While Naruto was there, his fellow comrades dubbed him Kanoha's Dragon Rider due to him always going into a fight with the dragons. He was lucky nothing leaked out of Kiri because he would be in the bingo book right now, but without a face to match the name. Of course with him wearing his mask again and being recognized in the rebel faction, he was sought out by almost every woman around him. He kindly declined their offers but took the chance to help his comrades get laid and that gained him an even higher respect amongst the men. While he did learn some more skills while in Kiri, he mainly focused on execution and timing of said skills. You could know a lot of ninjutsu, tojutsu and more, but if you didn't know how to properly use them in battle they were useless. He grew in strength and he was the second strongest amongst the bloodline faction behind Mei Terumi, but many believed he could actually defeat her in combat. That was their belief, but he and Mei had a private spar, and he lost. However, the fight was extremely close, and she told him that given a few more months or a year, that he should be able to beat her. She was a cage-level ninja and the fifth Mizukage after all, so he took pride that he was able to push her so far. While he was there during the war, Naruto hit a growth spurt that made him seem like he was a grown man, despite him being almost 17 years old. His voice was deep, but it was calm similar to Minato's voice, and you could hear the power behind it if he gave out an order. He lost all of his baby fat and grew some muscle that was built for speed and power. His hair grew out quite a bit until he had it cut back to its original length with two jaw length bangs. He now stood at 6'3 and he stood out like a sore thumb in the rebellion faction since he was the tallest person there. He was currently sitting on top of the Mizukage building when somebody walked up and sat next to him. You know everyone is looking for you. Mei said as she was wearing her cage hat. I know, but it's good to have some time to myself every once in a while. Naruto said. You don't have to be such a loner, Naruto. The people here love you. Mei said. True, but I've always been the loner type. I have no problems hanging out with people, but being alone sometimes is nice. I'm sure you understand since you're the new Mizukage and I'll also guess that's why you're up here instead of in the office. Naruto said and she giggled. That is true. Who knew being Mizukage would involve so much paperwork? It's like it doesn't stop. Mei said and he chuckled. You are fresh off of a civil war which nearly brought the village to its own end. You're cleaning up the mess of your predecessors. It's not going to be easy. You have to rebuild with what you have. Naruto said and she sighed. Just remember to give Lady Tsunade the treaty I drew up. It's not much, but it's the best I can do at this point. Mei said. Come on. Have I ever forgotten to do something important since I've been here? Naruto asked. Yes. Quite a bit in fact. I remember numerous occasions of you nearly burning the food. How about the time I sent you out hunting and you forgot to bring the food back? Mei asked. Ah. That's all in the past. Naruto said and waved her off. It was three weeks ago. Mei said. Still in the past. Naruto said and she sighed. Smartus. Anyway, as thanks for helping us win and put an end to the civil war, I have something for you. Mei said. Mei, as many times you've tempted me, I'm not sleeping with you. Naruto said and she rolled her eyes. It's not that. I am Mizukage. I must have more respect for myself. I can't be chasing men. I have more important things to do. Mei said. Then why do you always get sad when somebody brings up marriage? I recall you nearly killing five people because they said they were getting married after the civil war ended. Naruto said and she looked at him with a sweet smile. Naruto, shut up. Mei said. 
Well, that's rude. Naruto said and she pulled out a scroll. I'm not offering you sex. I respect a man when he tells me he has a girlfriend, and especially when his girlfriend happens to be the Kazukiage's sister. This is a thank you gift as well as an apology for melting your sword during our spar. Mei said and gave him a scroll. What is it? Naruto asked. Unseal it and you'll find out. Mei said and he unsealed it revealing his old sword. It's my old sword. Naruto said and she shook her head. It's a completely different sword. Although it looks the same, it was made from the fang of one of your dragon summons. The machine that was used to create the seven ninja swords of the mist was still intact and I used it to make your new sword. It's the same length as your old, but it's sharper, handles chakra better, and since it's made from one of your dragon summoned teeth, I assume it should be able to handle your second source of chakra as well. I don't know why it came out the color it did, but it matches the color of your eyes. Mei said and Naruto gave her a hug. Thank you. You didn't have to do this. Naruto said. I know, but I overheard you telling Chijuro that your father made that sword of yours, and I figured this was the least I could do. Mei said and pouted when he broke the hug, making him chuckle. Thank you for this. You know, if I'd met you before the exams and you were my age, I'd seriously make you my girlfriend, but I have Tamari. Naruto said and she smiled seductively at him. She could always share. I'm okay with that. Mei said. Tamari already made it abundantly clear that she isn't sharing me with anybody. I'm sure you remember when a female medic wanted me to ask Tamari if she could share me with her, and Tamari nearly made the girl run away so she wouldn't be able to find her. Naruto said and Mei laughed. Oh boy do I ever remember that. Still, it doesn't hurt to try. Mei said and Naruto had an idea. Why not ask Jijuro out? Naruto asked. Jijuro is too sweet and nervous to even have a girlfriend. Besides, I'm in my 30s now and he's only a few years older than you. Mei said. True, but I've caught him checking you out quite a few times over the past two and a half years. He likes you, but he's too scared to say something to you. Naruto said. How can you tell? Mei asked. I overheard him one night rubbing one out and saying your name. Why do you think I decided to get my own space away from him? It was like every other night with him. Naruto said and Mei blushed. I had no idea. Mei said. Just go easy on him in the bedroom. I don't think he's prepared for all of your built-up sexual tension. Naruto said and she chuckled. He sure isn't. Now, how's it going with you and Tamari? Mei asked. We're good. We miss each other and Tatsu has been busy with the letters being sent between us. Naruto said. Ah yes. Tatsu. The lovable dragon responsible for paralyzing my entire medical corporation. Mei said. I did warn them to not surround her and grab her. Naruto said. That is true. So, have you and Tamari talked about the next step? Mei asked. It's been brought up, but we're not in a rush. Sure the tension will be there after not seeing each other for nearly three years, but if it happens it happens. Naruto said and then it appeared behind Mei. Can I help you? Mei asked. Lady Mizukage, the water daimyo is here to see you said. Tell him that I'll be there shortly. Mei said. Of course. The said and vanished. Beauty calls. Naruto said and she chuckled. You could always fill in for me. You'd made a great cage. Mei said. Being cage doesn't really interest me. Naruto said. So, if you were offered the position you wouldn't take it. Mei asked. Nope. Being born is my sister's dream. I'll gladly pass the opportunity to her. Naruto said and Mei nodded. What is your dream? Mei asked. Settle down and have a family. Naruto said. Well, I think you're already halfway there. Tamari sounds like a nice girl. Mei said and they stood up. She is once you get past the tough exterior. Naruto said. Apparently you've already done that. If I don't see you before you leave, I just want to thank you again for your help. Mei said and gave him a hug. You're welcome. I'll make sure Tsunade gets that treaty. Naruto said. Thank you. Now, I must go use my womanly charms to seduce the daimyo to give us more money. Mei said and pushed her breasts up. If he's an old man then the meeting won't even last an hour. Naruto said and she smirked. An hour is too long. I'll have to get a tighter dress, maybe show a bit too much for him. All these old men are the same. Show them some breasts and they'll do anything you want. Mei said. To make things better, give him this. Naruto said and gave her a book. What is it? Mei asked. The latest book in Jureya's Itcha Itcha series and it's autographed. Natsumi sent it to me since he gave her two of them. Naruto said. Not even official allies and you're already helping me out. I'll be sure to give this to him. Go and enjoy the feast later. Mei said and left. Kanoha three days later. The village was quiet, calm and filled with laughter from the children playing in the village. The villagers were enjoying their peace and quiet, unaware of a certain somebody returning to the village. 
two and a half years of peace and quiet was about to be disrupted, all because of one person, as she ran up the tallest pole she could find. Natsumi Uzumaki Namikas is back bitches. Natsumi yelled and all of the birds flew away. Natsumi, is that you? When do you get back to the village? A voice asked and Natsumi looked down to see a familiar head of pink hair. Just now. Long time no see huh, Sakura. Natsumi asked. Look at you. You've grown up quite a bit. You're even taller than me now. Sakura said. Yes. Her height isn't the only thing that's changed. Jiraiya said and giggled. Excuse me for a moment. Natsumi said and Sakura was a witness to attempted murder right before her very eyes as Natsumi nearly killed Jiraiya. I see her temper hasn't changed at all. Sakura thought. Don't do it again. Do you understand me? Natsumi yelled. Why yes. Jiraiya said and Natsumi twisted his arm even more. I didn't fucking hear you. Natsumi yelled. Okay. I won't do it again. Jiraiya said and tapped out. Better not. Natsumi said and stood up. Yup. Same old Natsumi. Sakura thought. So, look at you. You haven't really changed at all. I mean you've gotten a bit taller, but you're still as flat as a cutting board. Natsumi said and Sakura's eye twitched. Gee. Thanks. I can't believe I missed you all this time. Sakura said and Natsumi pulled her in for a hug. It's good to see you again, Sakura. Natsumi said and Sakura hugged her back. Yeah. Same here. I love what you've done to your hair. Sakura said. Thanks. I see you still keep yours short now. Natsumi said. Yeah. It gets in the way and can easily be grabbed during a fight. Sakura said. That's why my hair is a literal weapon. They can grab it if they want to. They won't like the end result. Natsumi said. Oh. You will never believe this. Sakura said. You finally got a boyfriend. Natsumi said and Sakura rolled her eyes. No. Sakura said. Your breasts are actually bigger than that and you're hiding behind them. Natsumi said. No. Sakura said. Oh. Oh. I know. You and Ino finally settled the sexual tension between the two of you. Natsumi said. No. Sakura yelled. Then what is it? Natsumi asked. Shizune has a boyfriend. Sakura said. What? No fucking way. How? Natsumi asked. Natsumi, we need to go see Tsunade. Jiraiya said. Yeah. Yeah. Sakura, tell me all about this on our way to the office. Natsumi said and they walked off towards the tower. Tsunade's office. Shizune, how much longer? Tsunade asked. Any minute now I assume. Shizune said and there was a knock on the door. Come in. Tsunade said. It's me, Lady Tsunade. I have the papers from the gate for you. Sakura said and placed them on her desk. Thank you Sakura. Tsunade said. Oh and there's one more thing. Sakura said. What is it? Tsunade asked. Come in. Sakura said and stepped out of the way so she could see the door. Hey, Tsunade. Long time no see. Jiraiya said and Tsunade deflated. Oh. It's just Jiraiya. Tsunade said and grabbed some paper. Well, that's not the response I was looking for. We've been friends for over 30 years. Surely you can do better than that. Jiraiya said. Master Jiraiya, it's good to see you again. Shizune said and bowed. See. Shizune gave me a proper greeting. I guess I'll just take my surprise back home. Jiraiya said. What surprise? Tsunade asked and then Natsumi burst into the room. It's me. Hi mom. Natsumi said and Tsunade gave her a big hug. Welcome back, loud mouth. Tsunade said. It's good to be back. Natsumi said and they separated. Let me take a look at you. You've grown so much. Tsunade said. She sure has. Jiraiya thought and pulled out his notepad only to scream at the top of his lungs. I didn't say anything. Wait a minute. What happened to my voice? I sound like a little kid. Jiraiya yelled. Looks like you have to wait for your balls to drop again before you get your original voice back. Natsumi said. Good shot. Tsunade said and gave her a high five. Traveled with him for nearly three years. I can tell when he's thinking something perverted as well. Natsumi said and Tsunade sat in her seat. So, how was the trip? Did you actually train her? Tsunade asked. Come on. You didn't think we'd come back without any results, did you? Jiraiya asked and they laughed at his voice. I'm very glad to hear that. Show me what you've got, Natsumi. Tsunade said. Oh yeah. I've been waiting for this. I kick your ass and then force you to hand over the hat. Natsumi said, as she imagined herself wearing the hat. I have someone I'd like for you to go up against. You're not ready to face someone like me yet. I'd kick your ass. Tsunade said. Then who is it? Natsumi asked and there was a knock on the door. Come in. Tsunade said, as the door opened revealing Shikamaru and Tamari. Hey. Shikamaru said. 
Hey, Shikamaru, Tamari. Look what the fox dragged in. Sakura said. Oh ha ha, Pinky. A fox joke. Not like I haven't heard that one before. I give you 2 out of 10 on that one. Natsumi said. That's Natsumi. Shikamaru asked and his eyes wandered. My eyes are up here. Natsumi said. Sorry. Shikamaru said. That's the same little redeed. Wait if she's here, then where's Naruto? Tamari thought. So, you're back, huh? Shikamaru asked. Yeah. I just came back today. Natsumi said. Look at you. You've grown. Are you the same as before? Shikamaru asked. She's still the same. The instant she saw me she called me flat-chested. Sakura said. It's not like I was lying. Does this mean you're my opponent, Shikamaru? Natsumi asked. Opponent? What are you talking about? I just came here to drop off some paperwork. Shikamaru said. Oh. Then if it's not you, then is it, uh? What's your name again? Natsumi asked as she looked at Tamari. You don't remember me, Tamari asked. I'm just joking. How could I ever forget my future sister-in-law? Come here. Natsumi said and pulled her in for a hug. It's good to see you again. Tamari said. Yeah. Hey, looks like you've grown as well. Those things are bigger than mine. I'm sure Naruto will love them. Natsumi said and Tamari blushed. Yes, shut up. Hey. What are you doing? Tamari asked and removed Natsumi's hands off of her breasts. Um. 98 centimeters. Nice. Natsumi said and then glared at Jureya who shook his head no. Don't do that again. Tamari said. I won't. They were there for the touching. I did the same thing to mom when I first met her. Natsumi said. Natsumi, you won't find your opponent here. He's out there. Tsunade said and pointed to the window making Natsumi walk towards it. So, Natsumi. You went and got all grown up. Kakashi said. Cyclops Sensei. You haven't changed a bit. Oh wait a second. I have something for you. Natsumi said and went into her ninja pouch. I was unaware that she was giving out gifts. Shizun said. I know. I wish I had one. Sanadi said. No way. Is that. Is that really true Kakashi asked as Natsumi held out a book for him. Yup. The first new edition of the makeout series in three years. Pretty boring if you ask me. There is no romance in it really. It's just plain smut. I had two of them, but I sent one to Naruto through a toad. Natsumi said and Kakashi started to lose his mind as he opened the book. Calm down. This is no time for fooling around, Kakashi. Tsunade said and went back to her desk. So, I guess you're my opponent. Natsumi asked. Well, you're somewhat right. Been a long time hasn't it, Sakura? Kakashi asked. Yes it has, Sensei. Sakura said. Hmm? Where's Naruto? I assumed he'd be back by now. Kakashi said. Hey, that's right. Where is he? We were supposed to get here the same day. Natsumi said and looked at Tamari. What? Tamari asked. You're his girlfriend. Do you know where he is? Natsumi asked. No, but I can find out. Tamari said and used the seal on her hand to summon Tatsu. Yo. Tatsu said. Tatsu, do you know where Naruto is? Tamari asked. He's not here. He left Kiri like three days ago. Tatsu said. Kiri? I thought Kiri was in the middle of a civil war. Jiraiya said and Tatsu started laughing. W what happened to your voice? Tatsu asked. I kicked his nuts back into his body for being a pervert. Natsumi said. Nice. Anyway, I don't know where he is. I can't find his draconic chakra signature since he's really good at hiding it. He must have sensed I was here and hid it. He is alive though because you're still able to summon me. Tatsu said. Maybe he got caught up in something. Sakura said. It is possible. I mean Kiri was going through a civil war and must have stayed behind to help with the rebuild. Tsunade said and then a huge chakra signature was felt in the room. W whose chakra is that? Sakura asked and then a squad of appeared. Lady Tsunade, we have returned. Mission accomplished. Eagle said. Excellent. Where is the other person I sent with you? Tsunade asked. He's on his way. His fanbrils found him at the gates and he's running for his life right now. Eagle said. Of course. Hand me the mission details, please. Tsunade said. He has the mission details and something else from the fifth Mizukage. Eagle said and Tsunade nodded. Thank you. Your mission is successful and you have earned a five-month vacation. Return to HQ and report to the commander. Tsunade said. Yes ma'am. Eagle said and the vanished. You only sent five people to Kiri to help. Jiraiya asked and Tsunade laughed. I can't deal with your voice. Lay on the couch and I'll heal you. It's going to hurt a lot. Tsunade said and Jiraiya nodded with tears coming down his face. Only five people and they managed to get the job done. That's quite the squad you sent, Lady Tsunade. Kakashi said. 
I sent over 20 and now all of them have returned. I'm just waiting for the last person to get here. Sanadi said, as she started to heal Jiraiya and enjoyed hearing him whimper in pain. Who's the last person? Natsumi asked. I'm sure you can guess who it is. Sanadi said causing Tamari and Natsumi's eyes to widen. Naruto. The both said at the same time. Jinx. Natsumi said. What are we, eight? Tamari asked. You're just mad because I said it first. Natsumi said and Tamari rolled her eyes. Still as childish as ever, huh? A voice asked. Minato sensei Kakashi asked. Wrong person. The boy said and everyone looked to the ceiling. I could have sworn whoever said that was on the ceiling. Natsumi said. Nope. The boy said. Show yourself damn it. Natsumi said. Come on out, Naruto. I know it's you. Tetsu said and they heard a sigh. You know, I was really hoping to keep that going for a while. Naruto said, as he appeared. Oh. Sakura said. My. Shizun said. Fucking. Natsumi said. Gosh. Sanadi said. He's even hotter than before. Sakura said. He's mine. Tamari said and gave him a kiss. I missed you too. Naruto said and gave her a hug. And Naruto, you've grown so much. Sanadi said. I'm not the only one. Well, Sakura and Shikamaru just got taller, but Natsumi and Tamari have grown. I see you've copied my hairstyle a bit, Natsumi. Naruto said. Meh. You've gotta admit that it looks nice. Natsumi said. It does. Naruto said and gave her a hug. You look just like dad. Natsumi said. You look just like your mother. Naruto said and sent Tatsu back home. So, how was the mission? Sanadi asked. It was good. Oh, and you're not going to believe what I found out. Naruto said. Does it have to do with you know who? Sanadi asked. Yup. Naruto said. Shikamaru, you're finished for the day. I'll send it to you when I have a mission. Sanadi said. Sure. See ya. Shikamaru said and Naruto sealed the room when he left. He could have stayed for this. Naruto said. He developed a gossip side from hanging around Eno too much. I couldn't risk it. Sanadi said. Fair point. Naruto said. What happened? Sanadi asked. Mei gave me the okay to tell you this, so it can't leave the room. The fourth Mizukage was already dead by the time I got there. Naruto said and everyone in the room was shocked. What? Sanadi asked. Yeah. He must have died around the time we became a genin, because that's when Mei noticed there wasn't any structure to their attacks, and then a complete change in their tactics. Anyway, Ao revealed that Yagura was under, and I told them that only a Sharingan user can cast a strong enough to control a tailed beast in A. After a year, I found out who had been sending help to the loyalists. Naruto said. Who was it? Jiraiya asked and Naruto raised an eyebrow. I kicked his nuts back into his body. That's why mom is holding her hands near his crotch. Natsumi said. Right. Anyway, it was Danzo who was sending help to them. I don't know how, but he sent enough help to keep this going for years. My guess is that after he won the war then he'd run Kiri from the shadows. Naruto said, as he pulled out a root mask. Do you think he had something to do with the death of Yugura? Sanadi asked. It's possible, but Danzo doesn't leave behind evidence. However, that leaves another problem as well. Naruto said. What's that? Natsumi asked. The three-tailed beast will reform soon, and it'll be there for the Akatsuki to take. Mei has already given us permission to stop them when the three tails reforms. Naruto said. How long do you think we have? Sanadi asked. I don't know. It's hard to tell. We don't know where the three tails will appear. Naruto said. That could be anywhere. Tamari said. Exactly. However, I do have a bit of intel that should be good for us to slow down their efforts on capturing the tailed beasts. Naruto said. What's that? Jiraiya asked. They have to seal the tailed beasts in order, but it would still take them a while to seal them away. Each tailed beast has more chakra than the next one. I estimate Shukaku would take maybe three to five days, and the tailed beast's number of tails only gets bigger. Natsumi still has time since she has the nine tails sealed inside of her. Gara is the first one they'll go after. Naruto said. How did you find out all of this? Jiraiya asked. Tatsu isn't the only dragon of her kind. There's plenty of them and they're spy dragons with the ability to go invisible. I simply had some of them fly around the elemental nations, and if they spotted anyone with a black cloak with red clouds on it, then they were to attach themselves to that person. Naruto said. Then you must know where their base is. Kakashi said. I don't. The bad thing about the dragons going invisible is that their eyes still show. They have to keep them closed to keep them from getting discovered. Naruto said. How can they find them with their chakra? Tamari asked. Because only I can sense draconic chakra. They can't and I use that to my advantage. Naruto said. We need to get to Suna then. 
Gara is in trouble. Tamari said. I have dragons all around Suna and they haven't reported anything yet. Now, I also have good news and bad news. Naruto said. What's the bad news? Tsunade asked. The four tails, five tails and six tails, have already been captured. Naruto said. I thought you said they had to capture them in order. Mitsumi said. I said they had to seal them in order. The Akatsuki can capture them whenever they want, but they can't seal them in any kind of way. The Akatsuki have that they've captured in some kind of stasis to keep them from releasing the tailed beasts. Iwai and Kiri have lost their tailed beasts. I know FK is safe for now and will contact me with her summons if she's in trouble. We need to send word to Kumo to either protect there or help us defeat the Akatsuki. Naruto said. I already did and the rakage declined. Tsunade said. We can't go into Kumo territory either. If he is captured I don't want to hear him complaining about it. Naruto said and tossed Tsunade a scroll. What's this? Tsunade asked. A treaty for an alliance between Kanoha and Kiri. Mei said that she couldn't offer much, but that's because she's recovering from the civil war. Naruto said. You can call the fifth Mizukage by her first name? Tamari asked. Yeah. Naruto said. Aha. Uh -huh. How close did you two exactly get? Tamari asked. We're pretty close. After all her failed attempts at flirting with me we became friends. She melted my sword though when we fought. Naruto said. You fought the fifth Mizukage? Sakura asked. I honestly forgot she was in here. Mitsumi said. Me too. Anyway, yes we fought. It was after the war was over for a couple of months and she won. Barely, but she won. She used her lava ninjutsu to melt my sword and she made me a new one made from a dragon's tooth. Naruto said and pulled out his brand new sword. Whoa. It's beautiful. Mitsumi said. Yup. Made from the very machine that was used to create the seven ninja swords. Naruto said. Wow. Mitsumi said. Uh, Naruto. You didn't open this scroll did you? Tsunade asked. No. It wasn't for me to open. Naruto said. Well, these pictures are for you. Tsunade said and gave him a huge stack of pictures of naked women in various poses showing off their goods. Care to explain? Tamari asked. I may have gained an interesting following over there. Naruto said. How interesting? Jiraiya asked. I had women of all ages throwing themselves at me. I mean literally I had to seal my room shut just to get some sleep. The women there apparently have no sex life and I basically became eye candy there for them. However, I passed them off to the other ninja there. My heart and lower region only belongs to Tamari. Naruto said and kissed her cheek. Aw. Oh, I wish I had somebody to kiss my cheeks. Mitsumi said. Oh. Hiroshi was looking for you. Apparently he heard your voice and was looking for you. Naruto said. Really I mean, why should I care? Mitsumi asked. He already told me the two of you started dating before you left. Naruto said. You're dating Hiroshi? Shizune asked. Yeah. You're dating Genma. Mitsumi said. H how'd you find out? Shizune asked. Sakura told me. Mitsumi said. Mitsumi. Well, Lady Tsunade told me. Sakura said. Lady Tsunade. How could you? Shizune asked. I was drunk and it slipped out. Tsunade said. Fine. Lady Tsunade is in love with Master Jiraiya. Shizune said. Shizune. Tsunade yelled. Oops. It slipped out. Shizune said and then an argument started. Ha. Sakura said. I don't see what's so funny. You have a crush on Shikamaru. Tsunade said. What? Mitsumi asked. Wanna get out of there? Naruto whispered to Tamari and she nodded. Yeah. Tamari said and Naruto wrapped an arm around her waist before unsealing the room, activating a silencing seal to keep the argument from getting out. Let's go. Naruto said and they vanished. I guess the test can wait. Kakashi said and went up in smoke. Naruto and Tamari. I missed you so much, Naruto. Tamari said. I missed you too. At least we were able to keep in contact while I was away. Naruto said. Yeah, but it wasn't enough. I mean Tatsu had to tell me once that I was annoying her with all of my messages. Tamari said. That's because Tatsu isn't a fighter. You kept sending her into a war zone. Naruto said. I know. I apologize to her. Tamari said. So, how have you been since I've been gone? Naruto asked as they were walking around the village. It's been something I'll tell you that much. As you know I made it, but once I took the exams I've been traveling non-stop between villages. I was either planning the exams in Suna, helping plan the Kanoha exams which I'm doing now, or I was with Gara for a diplomatic mission. Tamari said. That's a lot of walking. Naruto said. I know. The only good thing about that is my kicks have gotten stronger. Tamari said. Do you use Tajutsu now? Naruto asked. Why do you sound so surprised? 
Tamari asked. Well, you always fight from a distance. You didn't tell me you were learning to jutsu. Naruto said. I had to. I was on a B rank mission and the guy I had to capture was a tojutsu and ninjutsu expert. I mean I won thanks to Kankuro being there, but he kicked my ass. Tamari said. Well, I'm sure you're very good at it. Naruto said. Oh I am. I learned a different chakra nature though. I chose fire to complement my wind. I wanted a defensive chakra nature, but earth and water didn't feel right. Tamari said. Well, wind can be used offensively and defensively if used properly. There was a guy in Kiri who used wind to redirect a fireball back towards his opponent. Naruto said. How'd he manage to do that? Tamari said. He said he used his wind manipulation to suck the oxygen out of the fireball before creating a wind tunnel and sent it back while using the wind chakra to power the fireball. Naruto said. I need to learn how to do that. Tamari said. I would teach you, but I'm not a wind user. Naruto said. Yeah I know. For somebody with as much natural skill as yourself, you don't go out trying to learn any more chakra natures. Tamari said. I'm comfortable with what I have. I focused more on execution and timing during my training. Well I did learn new techniques, all of my moves are fluent and build off of one another. Naruto said and wrapped an arm around Tamari, so she leaned into him while walking. What else did you learn? Tamari asked. Uh, some kinjutsu techniques and better tojutsu. I added a defensive style to the mix. Can't always rely on my Sharingan as defense. Naruto said and she looked at his eyes. Your eyes are different. Tamari said. Different how? Naruto asked. They seem to be losing color to them. Are you alright? Tamari asked. Yeah. I'm fine. Naruto said and she rolled her eyes. I've been around you a lot before you left. I know when you're lying. Tamari said and he smirked. Nothing gets past you, huh? Naruto asked. Nope. Now tell me what's going on. Tamari said, as they entered his apartment. You were here, weren't you? Naruto asked, as he looked around. How could you tell? Tamari asked. It smells like flowers and there's no dust. Naruto said. Yeah. When I was here I figured you wouldn't mind if I used your place. I made sure to keep it clean. Tamari said and sat on the couch. Want something to drink? Naruto asked. No. I want my boyfriend to join me on the couch and tell me why his eyes are losing their color. Tamari said and he sighed. All right. Promise me that you won't freak out and you'll remain calm. Naruto said, as he sat next to her. But something bad, isn't it? Tamari asked. Depends on how you look at it. Now, promise me you won't freak out or anything. Naruto said and she held both hands up. I promise. Tamari said. I'm going blind. Naruto said bluntly and Tamari took a few deep breaths to keep calm. Okay. Mind telling me how? Tamari asked. Because of this. Naruto said and activated his Manjekyo Sharingan. What is that? I've never seen your Sharingan pattern like that before. Tamari said. It's called the Manjikam Sharingan. It's an advanced form of the Sharingan that has only been activated by a handful of Ichiha clan members. Naruto said. What does it do? Tamari asked. The Manjikam Sharingan retains all of the Sharingan's generic abilities. In addition to that, the Manjikam grants powerful abilities that differ between each eye. It drains a lot of chakra to activate and maintain it, as well as using a lot of chakra to use each technique. The techniques are very powerful, but they come with a price. Naruto said. You lose your eyesight. Tamari said. Correct. Naruto said and Tamari just looked at him. If you lose your eyesight then why aren't you bothered? Tamari asked. Because there's a way to reverse the negative effects of using the Manjekyo Sharingan. Naruto said. How? Tamari asked. I need to transplant another Manjekyo Sharingan user's eyes into my own. The key is that the person must have close blood ties with me in order for it to work. Naruto said. Then you're shit out of luck, since your only family member alive is Natsumi. Tamari said. That's true, but I'll be fine. Naruto said. How? You don't have another pair of Manjekyo Sharingan eyes. Tamari said. I do. Naruto said and unsealed his mother's eyes from his arm. Whose eyes are those? Tamari asked. These are my mother's eyes. She awakened her Manjekyo Sharingan when her best friend, Natsumi's mother Kashina Yuzumaki died and our father. When she was dying, she told me to remove her eyes and keep them for later in life, knowing my Manjekyo would awaken after she died. I've kept them ever since. Naruto said. Wait a minute. Your mother died when you were seven, so you've had your Manjekyo for nearly a decade now. Why are your eyes just now fading away? Tamari asked. Because growing up I never used it much. Sure I unlocked the techniques for the Manjekyo, but the strain on my chakra reserves back then would have killed me if I used it more than twice a day. I didn't start to actively use it until I went to Kiri. Naruto said. 
So are you going to do the transplant? Tamari asked. I've already informed Anko and Kurunai about this. They agreed to do the transplant when the time comes. Naruto said. When is that? Tamari asked. I don't know, but soon. With us having to deal with the Akatsuki, I know I'll have to use the Manjekyo a few times. Plus, there's Itachi Ichiha to deal with. Naruto said. What does he have to do with this? Tamari asked. He also has the Manjekyo Sharingan, and if somebody has to fight him, it will be me because I can counter his Manjekyo with my own. Naruto said. Will you be able to see after you fight him? Tamari asked. I don't know. It depends on when he's ready to fight. Naruto said. That could be today, tomorrow or next year for all we know. Tamari said. Exactly. That's why I'll try not to use the Manjekyo Sharingan until we fight. Naruto said and she sighed. Well, I'm coming with you. They travel in pairs. You need somebody to watch your back. Just in case. Tamari said. I already planned on you coming. Word about our fight would have gotten to you anyway, and I know you would use Tetsu to track me down. Naruto said and she giggled. Damn right I would. Tamari said and Naruto looked at her. Did you just giggle? Naruto asked and she rolled her eyes. Shut up. It's not the first time I've giggled around you. Tamari said. Fair point. Naruto said and stood up. Where are you going? Tamari asked. To take a shower and maybe go to sleep. I've been traveling for three days and I miss my bed. Naruto said. Oh yeah. Tamari said and Naruto took his shirt off making her drool. If you plan on joining me, seal the apartment so nobody gets in. Naruto said. W what? Tamari asked and turned red. You heard me. Naruto said. He walked away and went to take a shower while Tamari was just sitting there on the couch. Eventually she got up and sealed the house before taking her clothes off. She did miss him a lot and there was no telling when she'd get this opportunity again. Long story short, it was a long afternoon for both of them that went into the night before they went to sleep. Chapter 16. Protect Suna. Naruto woke up the next morning and noticed his arms were wrapped around Tamari. They were both completely naked still, and he smiled when she yawned cutely before moving closer to him for warmth. It was still pretty early, so he went back to sleep only to wake up a few hours later, thanks to Tamari shaking him awake. Rise and shine, big boy. Tamari said and gave him a kiss. What time is it? Naruto asked. Almost noon. Sakura and Natsumi have a test today. I want to go see it. Tamari said and Naruto noticed the clothes she had on. Are those my clothes? Naruto asked. Yeah. My clothes are all dirty since I was expecting to be back in Suna by now, but obviously plans changed yesterday. Tamari said and he chuckled. Alright. I'm up. I'll put your clothes in the washer. Naruto said. Already did that. You need to get dressed so we can go watch the test. Tamari said. Alright. How are you feeling? Naruto asked. Sore, but I can manage. If it starts to bother me I'll just make you carry me. Tamari said, as she watched Naruto get ready. This will be so much easier when I master them. Naruto said. You didn't learn it yet? Tamari asked. No. I was busy fighting in a war and didn't really have time to study it. Naruto said. I'm sure you'll get it eventually. You're pretty smart. Tamari said. Smarter than you? Naruto said. I doubt it. Tamari said. Really? How long did it take you to figure out Shikamaru's plan of attack in the exams? Naruto asked. A couple of minutes. Tamari said. Took me ten seconds. Naruto said. Whatever. Tamari said and walked out of the room. It's okay. At least you're smarter than Itsumi. Naruto said and helped her put her hair in her usual pigtails. Thank you. Tamari said. You're welcome. Naruto said and kissed her cheek. Have you heard from any of your summons yet? Tamari asked. No. They'll let me know when they're a few days out. I'll summon Comet and he'll take us there within two hours to prepare. Naruto said and picked her up. What are you doing? Tamari asked and blushed. After all this time you still blush. Isn't that sweet? Naruto said. I'm not used to this okay. You're my first boyfriend and the only guy I'm sweet with. Tamari said and pouted. You'll get used to it. Now, let's go. Naruto said and banished. Training ground 7. Come on. It's been almost three years and Cyclops Sensei still can't show up on time. Natsumi said. Did you honestly think he'd show up on time? Besides, Naruto's late sometimes as well. Sakura said. I know why Naruto's late, but he's only late now once a year. Kakashi is late every day. We've been here for hours. When I see him he's going to wish he was on time. Natsumi said and then a puff of smoke appeared. Hello, you too. Sorry I'm late. I ran into this poor old lady who needed some help carrying her bags home. Kakashi said. I don't know why you even bother lying. Nobody believes them. 
since you're late to my test, I'm going to kick your ass so bad that you'd wish you could kill me. Mitsumi said and had a sweet smile on her face. Oh boy. Sakura thought and they walked over to the three stumps in the ground. Man it's been a minute since I've been here. I don't think I've been here since our bell test. Mitsumi said. Back when you were a loudmouth reed. Sakura said. Yeah and you were a hopeless fangirl who couldn't think about anything other than Sasuke. Mitsumi said. That's also the day you and Naruto teamed up against Kakashi Sensei. How did you two manage to get the bells anyway? Sakura asked. Teamwork. Me and Naruto were already strong enough as a team to take on each other, but we couldn't do it with you and Sasuke. The two of you would bitch and complain about how either Sasuke deserved our skills or that Sasuke would have done a better job. Mitsumi said. Was I really that bad? Sakura asked. Yup. You were a complete bitch. Mitsumi said and Kakashi sweat dropped. Sheesh. Tell me how you really feel. Sakura said and Mitsumi grinned. Well, I think my milk was past its expiration date. So if you start to smell something during our test I'd like to apologize in advance. Mitsumi said and Sakura sighed. Can I take my test by myself? Sakura asked. I'm afraid not. This test is between the three of us. Kakashi said. Wait a minute. Why isn't Naruto here? Shouldn't he get tested as well? Mitsumi asked. Nope. Naruto has been getting tested for almost three years. Kakashi said and pulled out two bells. The bell test again, huh? Mitsumi asked. That's right. Show me what you've got. I want to see how far the two of you have come. After all, you can't be a student of two of the legendary and train under them for nearly three years with no growth. The rules are the same as they were the first day. I don't care how you do it. Get these bells away from me and remember. Kakashi said. If we're not prepared to kill you. Mitsumi said. We won't get the bells. We know. Sakura said. Exactly. Show no mercy if you ever hope to gain these bells. You have until sunrise tomorrow. Alright, shall we get started? Kakashi asked and closed his book. Are you going to read your book this whole time? Mitsumi asked. I bet he has already finished reading it. Sakura said. Not quite, but I'm going to save that pleasure for later. Besides, I've got a feeling I'd better keep on my toes. This time it's serious. Kakashi said and revealed his Sharingan. Meanwhile Jiraiya, Naruto, Sanadi, Tamari and Shizun were all watching closely from the forest. They all wanted to see how those two worked as a team since they never worked together by themselves in the past. Let's go. Mitsumi said. She threw some shuriken at Kakashi who ducked out of the way and threw his own shuriken. Mitsumi jumped in the air to avoid Kakashi's shuriken that he threw and used a shadow clone to get out of the way from some more shuriken that were thrown into the air. Impressive. Kakashi said. Nice. Sakura said. She was trapped in midair, so she used the shadow clone to move herself out of the way. Sakura thought. Transform. Mitsumi said. She used a transformation and turned her shadow clone into a giant shuriken and went to throw it at Kakashi, but she was suddenly stopped by Kakashi himself. That'll be enough of that. Kakashi said. She's growing up right before my eyes. Not only that, but her timing with the shadow clone has improved as well. Kakashi thought as he saw a shadow clone holding a kunai to his back. It's a good thing you're just a shadow clone, Cyclops Sensei. Otherwise you'd be dead. Mitsumi said and a shadow clone came from underneath, then stabbed Kakashi with a kunai, making him go up and smoke. How do you know he was a shadow clone? Sakura asked. You can't outsmart me using the very technique that I mastered. I have this kind of sixth sense when it comes to somebody using the shadow clone. Mitsumi said. Then we need to find the real one now. Sakura said and started to look around. I can check further away from you. You can only sense so far and see so far with your eyes. I can find him in a different way. Mitsumi said. How? Sakura asked. I have the wood. Over the years I secretly came up with a different version of sensing where somebody is. I place my hand on the ground or inside of it and I can see anything within a two mile radius. Mitsumi said. Even when they conceal their chakra signature? Sakura asked. I don't look for chakra. I look for body heat or I can create the head of a wood clone to look around through its eyes either above ground or below ground. The bad thing is that I can't do it while I'm mobile. Mitsumi said and knelt down before placing her hand in the ground. That's incredible. Sakura said. Ten yards north underground. Mitsumi said and moved her hand. I've got this. Sakura said and destroyed the ground after a single punch revealing Kakashi. What ridiculous strength. Kakashi thought. Great. The last thing Sakura needs is that monster strength to go with her temper. Mitsumi thought. Seems Lady Tsunade has been teaching her a lot more than just medical ninjutsu. Kakashi thought. Spectators. The same quick temper and monster strength. 
Sanadi basically turned Sakura into a mirror image of herself. Jiraiya said. But you honestly think she wouldn't? We're lucky there's only two of them instead of three. Don't forget that Shizun also learned under Tsunadi. Naruto said. Then why didn't Shizun learn how to do that? Tamari asked. But simple. Sakura was a blank canvas. She had no skills before Tsunadi took her under her wing, and Tsunadi took that opportunity to mold Sakura how she wanted. Shizun was already there when she left with Tsunadi and already had skills. Learning Tsunadi's chakra enhanced strength wouldn't have worked with her. Shizun prefers to fight from a distance rather than up close, the complete opposite of how Tsunadi fights. Jiraiya said. Herbie Sage. Naruto said. Stop calling me that. Jiraiya said. Whatever. Did you know about Natsumi's tracker ability? Naruto asked. No. I gave her free time to work on her own things after every training session. She wanted to work on the for your bed and she was always out late training. Jiraiya said. It is an interesting ability. Not even my grandfather was able to do that. Tsunadi said and they looked at her. Lady Tsunadi, I thought you'd be in your office. Tamari said. I thought you'd be on your way back to Suna, but we obviously had other things to do. Tsunadi said and Tamari blushed. Anyway, I want to test Natsumi after Kakashi is done. He can't test her in everything, and I want to give her the final test. Naruto said. Then I guess you'll be needing this. Tsunadi said and tossed him a scroll. I was wondering when you were going to give it to me. Naruto said. What is it? Tamari asked. My best. May told me that she recommended me for a promotion six months after I arrived in Kiri. Before I left she said that I should get the vest when I returned to the village. Naruto said. She may have sent it over two years ago, but you haven't been officially until four days ago. Lady Tsunadi was drinking on the job and fell behind in her paperwork. Shizun said. You mean to tell me that after all these years none of you have figured out how to defeat paperwork? Naruto asked. You know how. Tell me. Tsunadi said. I'll tell you in two years since that's how long it took you to approve my status. Naruto said. You have the same smart ass mouth like your mother. It's a good thing you can control yourself unlike Natsumi. Tsunadi said. That makes me even worse than her because she can't control it and doesn't mean a lot of the things she says, but I do mean it. Naruto said. Sheesh. It's like dealing with Sayuri and Kishina all over again. Jiraiya thought. Natsumi and Sakura versus Kakashi. Kakashi sensei, we found you, didn't we? Sakura asked and Kakashi jumped out of the ground. She infuses her chakra together. Focuses it into her fist and releases it all at once. Something like that requires incredibly precise chakra control. Medical ninjutsu combined with monster strength. No, it's more than that overall she's more of a type. She just might become a better Kinoichi than her. You had your shot, now it's my turn. Kakashi thought. The SST. Behind you. A voice whispered. Huh? Kakashi asked and when he turned around nobody was there. What was that? Jinjutsu? Of course. Kakashi thought and tried to break it, but he couldn't. What? Why can't I break them? Kakashi asked. Because I'm using Tailed Beast Chakra to power it, Mitsumi said. Of course. She does have great control over the Nine Tails Chakra. Kakashi thought and stabbed himself to break the only to jump out of the way when he heard Sakura come flying at him with a punch that destroyed the ground. You really shouldn't yell when you're going to punch somebody as a sneak attack, Sakura. It will alert them of your presence, Mitsumi said. She's right, Sakura. Had you not made any noise I would have lost the fight and been unconscious. Kakashi said. All right, Cyclops. It's you and me now. Mitsumi said and got in a fighting stance. I'll have to watch out for her to jutsu. It was a major problem when she was a genin. She was able to fool the Sharingan once already. I'll have to keep on my toes for this one. Kakashi thought. All right. Time for today's lesson. This is Shinobi battle skill rule number one, to jutsu. Kakashi said. Back me up when you see an opening. Natsumi said. Got it. Sakura said. Kakashi ran forward and immediately went after Natsumi, who dodged his kicks and punches. Natsumi used her wood ninjutsu to create a root from the ground that Kakashi tripped over, and then Natsumi jumped up into a tree, giving Sakura an opening. She ran at Kakashi and threw punches at Kakashi who easily avoided them. He was backed into a tree and had to move as Sakura destroyed the tree with one of her punches she aimed at his head. Before Kakashi could react, Natsumi was on him and easily started to go one-on-one -on -one with Kakashi into jutsu. She managed to break Kakashi's guard and gave him a punch to the gut before Sakura came and kicked him away. Kakashi landed, then quickly ducked out of the way from Sakura, who was coming at him with another chakra-enhanced punch, and slammed her to the ground. He looked around for Natsumi, but couldn't find her with his tracking abilities. She was trained by Master Jiraiya, so it's no wonder why I can't track her. Kakashi thought. 
He heard a twig break and looked to the direction of the sound, but didn't see anything. He looked back at Sakura who exploded, and he was sent flying back only to get kicked in the back before he hit the ground. Itsumi and Sakura too. Cyclops, zero. Tujutsu, Jinjutsu. Now what? Mitsumi asked. Shinobi battle skill number three, ninjutsu. Kakashi said and rapidly went through hand signs. Higher style. Fireball. Kakashi exhaled a large ball of fire towards Natsumi and Sakura who both jumped out of the way. Natsumi landed and looked at the damage, then noticed Kakashi was missing. Suddenly her ankle was grabbed and she was pulled underground but went up in smoke, signaling she was another shadow clone. Kakashi noticed Sakura and Natsumi running at him, so he rapidly went through more hand signs. Water style. Water dragon. Kakashi jumped onto the river that was near him and created a large dragon made of water. He controlled it and watched as it rushed towards Natsumi and Sakura. Natsumi went through hand signs and used the mud wall to block the water dragon. Natsumi went through more hand signs after and used her own. Wind style. Great vacuum sphere. Natsumi inhaled breath into a single large crushing sphere of wind chakra, then proceeded to expel it from her mouth. It was so powerful that it tore up the ground and Kakashi barely had time to get out of the way. Before Kakashi could use his next, Natsumi already went through hand signs and used the Earth Dragon, followed by the Earth Dragon Bomb. Kakashi had to use his speed to outrun the dragon that was chasing after him and while shooting mud bullets at him. Natsumi went through more hand signs for her next attack. Water Style. Raging Rapids. Natsumi created a powerful vortex of water and unleashed it on Kakashi who was caught into the vortex. While the vortex was damaging Kakashi, Natsumi used the water shuriken to add insult to injury, and the shuriken weren't aimed at Kakashi, but the bells on his belt. It ended and Kakashi was thrown to the ground next to the bells that Natsumi calmly picked up before handing one to Sakura. We win. Natsumi said. Uh, I think you overdid it. Sakura said and looked at Kakashi. I don't think I did. Natsumi said and poked Kakashi with a stick. Please tell me he's not dead. Sakura said and Kakashi groaned in pain. Nah he's fine. Natsumi said. Congratulations, you two. You managed to get the bells. Tsunade said. Natsumi did all the work. Sakura said. It was your punches and kicks that mainly wore him out. Natsumi said. Yeah, but you handled the ninjutsu portion. Sakura said. Well, when you put it like that you were pretty useless. I guess I did do all the work. Natsumi said. Just when I thought we were having a moment. Sakura said and Natsumi pulled her into a hug. I'm just kidding. Natsumi said. Well, that's over with. I'm impressed at your growth Natsumi. Kakashi is one of the top in the village, and the only person I'd probably put above him is Mike Guy. Tsunade said. No way Bushi or Brow Sensei is stronger than Cyclops Sensei. Natsumi said. Yeah. He's weird. Sakura said and Natsumi unsealed the Kubakirabacho to block a sword from taking her head off. Lesson number 4, Kinjutsu. Naruto said. You could have just asked. Natsumi said and Naruto moved his sword. The shinobi will never let his or her opponent know when they're going to strike. Naruto said. Let's get back, Sakura. Tsunade said and Sakura nodded. You got this, Natsumi. Sakura said and jumped into a tree. You know I was trained by Lord Mifune in the land of iron while I was gone. Natsumi said. That's good. I was trained by a master swordsman in Kiri. Until I came around, there was one person who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in terms of. Take a wild guess at who that person is. Naruto said. Lord Mifune. Natsumi said. Exactly. Naruto said. Spectators. I don't understand. From what we've learned in the academy, Lord Mifune was the best of the best. Sakura said. That's not true and it was false information. Tsunade said. Then who's the swordsman that's stronger than him? How strong was he? Sakura asked. His name is Ichigo Kurosaki, but the thing is he died many years ago. Jiraiya said. Not unless he faked his death. Shizune said. I doubt it. From what I've heard about him, he would never fake his death. He was too strong to be defeated by anybody, and I don't even think all seven members of the seven ninja swordsmen would be able to beat him if he fought them at the same time. His skills with the sword are legendary. Jiraiya said. How do you know so much, but Lady Tsunade doesn't? Sakura asked. Because I traveled the world learning new things ever since the Second Shinobi War. I've heard tales of his battles where he single-handedly took out an army of rogue ninja to defend his home. Jiraiya said. Now that same person trained Naruto while he was away. Great as if Naruto already wasn't strong. Sakura said. Don't worry, Sakura. Naruto isn't as strong as you think he is. Tsunade said. What do you mean? Sakura asked. He's strong, but he's not as strong as you think. Meitarumi disclosed that she and Naruto fought. It was close, but he lost. 
it shouldn't mean much, but amongst the ranking of all five cage, Mei would rank fourth in terms of strength. Sanadi said. Where would Gar rank? Tamari asked. Gar is the wild card. He's so technically he's been a cage level shinobi his entire life, same goes for Natsumi. Without the tailed beast chakra in play, Gar is the fifth strongest since I don't think he's stronger than A, but with the tailed beast chakra in play, he's easily at the top. Sanadi said. So, Naruto can lose to you and Pervy Sage still. Tamari said. Stop calling me that. Wait. Don't call me that. Jiraiya said. We kick his ass easily. There's still time for him to grow, but I think he and Natsumi will somehow surpass us in the upcoming years. Sanadi said. That's true and Natsumi's training isn't over yet so there's that. Jiraiya said, and then a shockwave was felt. Looks like they started. Sanadi said. Naruto vs Natsumi. Naruto vanished from his spot in front of Natsumi, and she quickly turned around to black the strike aimed at her lower back. Natsumi channeled chakra into her sword, and Naruto was sent flying away by the force of her chakra. He looked up and saw that her sword had a red glow around it, showing that she was about to use her tailed beast chakra. Natsumi used her drilling crimson blade technique on Naruto who was impressed. Naruto channeled draconic chakra into his sword and countered with his own slash. The collision between both chakras caused an explosion that shook the entire training ground. Natsumi used her divine mountain wind to blow away the smoke and saw Naruto standing there like nothing happened. Impressive. You managed to use the tailed beast chakra in a way that nobody would have thought. Naruto said. I may have grown, but I didn't lose my unpredictability. Natsumi said. Clearly. Naruto said. Naruto started to use the leaf style willow on Natsumi and she was caught off guard when he suddenly had multiple arms waving around. Natsumi barely broke out of the to move out of the way from Naruto's sword coming to stab her in the stomach. Natsumi jumped back and then charged at Naruto with their swords clashing in the middle. Natsumi swung the Kubakirabacha with ease despite its eyes, and Naruto deflected each of her attacks which were heavy. Naruto used his superior speed and cut Natsumi a few times before kicking the Kubakirabacha out of her hands. Naruto jumped back before charging at her again with lightning chakra flowing through his sword, and before he could hit Natsumi, her sword came back to her hand, and she blocked Naruto's attack while channeling wind chakra through her sword to counteract the lightning chakra. Naruto smirked and she did as well so they jumped back. Magnet seal, nice. Naruto said. I may or may not have taken it from your apartment before we left. Natsumi said and he sighed. Of course you did. Naruto said. Shall we continue? Natsumi asked. If you want, let me show you a little something I learned. Naruto said. Naruto channeled chakra into his sword and after gathering enough, Naruto used his moon fang heaven piercer. The results nearly made Natsumi piss herself from what she saw. Naruto slashed his sword in an upward motion, and the slash took the shape of a crescent moon. The damage from the attack was so great that it left a huge gash in the ground, taking out everything in its path which was maybe 100 feet. Natsumi had her jaw on the ground and she just looked at him. Good spar. Naruto said. You mean to tell me you couldn't defeat the Mizukage with that? Natsumi yelled. She used her lava and melted my sword. Naruto said. Naruto Ichihanamakas. Tsunade yelled. Shit. Naruto said. You damaged village property. Sanadi yelled. In my defense I toned it down a bit. Naruto said and they just looked at him until Tamari grabbed him by the ear. That was the toned down version Tamari asked. Yes. Naruto said and then a puff of smoke went off. Naruto, they're on their way to Suna. They'll be there in two days. A dragon said. Thanks Supai. We're on it. Let Gara know we'll be there in a few hours. Naruto said and Supai nodded before leaving. You're lucky. Sanadi said. We need to go. Tamari said. They'll be there in two days. We have time. Comet will get us there in three hours. Naruto said. Comet? What happened to Dash? Natsumi asked. He's retired. Naruto said. Anyway, Naruto and Tamari will go back to his place for her stuff. They'll meet you and Sakura at the gate. Naruto's in charge. Tsunade said. You heard the old lady. Let's move. Naruto said and vanished with Tamari. Naruto. Tsunade yelled. It feels weird hearing you yell his name instead of mine. Natsumi said. I don't know. It feels like it fits better. Sanadi said. Natsumi, after this mission work on your speed. You're still too slow with that sword even though you did good in this bar, it's evident that Naruto took it easy on you. If your speed doesn't change, I'd suggest getting a new sword or something that works with the Kubakirabacho. Jiraiya said and went up in smoke. Move out. Sanadi said and they vanished. Hanoha Forest. So why did we have to go all the way out here? Natsumi asked. Well, Comet sort of hit a growth spurt. Naruto said. He was the size of your arm the last time I saw him. He couldn't have gotten that big. Natsumi said. 
Yeah, I thought the same thing. Naruto said, as he summoned Comet and a huge roar was heard. Finally. Once again I'm in the human world. Comet said and Natsumi had her jaw on the ground. That's Comet. He's fucking huge. Natsumi said. He's not fully grown yet either. Naruto said. Yup. I'll be even bigger raw. Maybe stronger than him as well. So, what can I do for you, Naruto? Comet asked. The Akatsuki will make it to Suna in two days. Naruto said. Hop on. Comet said. Is it safe? Sakura asked. If you hold on it is. Tamari said and jumped on his back. Tamari, it's nice to finally meet you. Comet said. How are you just now meeting Tamari? Natsumi asked as she and Sakura jumped onto his back. She can only summon Tatsu thanks to her mark. I was training at the dragon's den this entire time and since she's not a summoner, she can't come to the dragon's den. Comet said. I guess that makes sense. Natsumi said. Didn't Naruto talk about me? Tamari asked. Not really. He trained there but never mentioned your name a lot. Kummer said and rose up into the air. Please fly slow. Sakura said. Slow? What do I look like, a slug? Comet asked and flew off extremely fast making Sakura scream at the top of her lungs. This is going to be a long ride. Naruto said as Tamari was holding on to him. At least I'm not doing twists and flips like I normally do. Comet said. Sakura shut the fuck up. Natsumi yelled but Sakura couldn't hear her. Maybe we should just walk. Tamari said. Nah. Hopefully she'll pass out from screaming so loud. Naruto said. She is better. Natsumi said and they were wrong. Suna. Two fucking hours. Two fucking hours of this bitch screaming in my fucking ear. Natsumi said as they landed at the gates of Suna. You see the dragon, right? A Suna guard asked. Yeah. I see it. The other guard said. Great. State your business for being here. The gate guard asked. I'm here to eat you. Kummer said and the guards paled. He's just kidding. Tamari said as she jumped in front of them. We're here to help Gara prepare for an attack. Naruto said as he appeared next to Tamari followed by Sakura and Natsumi. Right this way then. A guard said and they ran after him. Where's Gar now? Tamari asked. I think he's evacuating the village. He wants to tell the council about the attack. The guard said. I need to summon Supai. Naruto said and summoned him. What's up? Supai asked. Did you get a good look at who the Akatsuki are sending? Naruto asked. One had blonde hair always talking about blowing something up and the other kept talking about puppets. Supai said. Alright, thanks. You can return home. Naruto said and Supai nodded before leaving. Explosions and puppets. What does that mean? Natsumi asked. The Dara the Mad Bomber and Sasori of the Red Sand. They're members of the Akatsuki. Naruto said. How do you know? Natsumi asked. The dragons I had sent to spy on the Akatsuki over the years gave me their information. I know a few of their names and their abilities. Dadara and Sasori were mainly sent because Sasori used to be part of Suna's puppet corporation. Naruto said. What about Dadara? Tamari asked. He was a member of Iwa's Explosion Corporation. He became a rogue ninja when he stole to further enhance his explosion techniques and he used his explosive clay to kill the people sent after him. Naruto said. So an explosion master and a puppet user. Both long-range fighters. Sakura said. Exactly. I'll take on Dadara with Gara, and the three of you can take on Sasori with Kankuro, since he uses puppets as well. Sakura I want you to hang back with the three of them and provide medical assistance, should they need it. Natsumi and Tamari should work together. Wind and fire will burn all of his puppets. Naruto said. Why do you take on Dadara with Gara? Natsumi asked. Because Dadara fights on a clay bird that flies in the air. I can use my dragons and Gara can use his sand to stay airborne. Naruto said and she nodded. I'll have the other ninja lay back and protect every entrance to the village. Tamari said. Tell Gara not to call a council meeting. The fact that he wasn't alerted of this before Supai got to him means you have a traitor amongst the village. One of them could slip out after the meeting and warn the Akatsuki of our plan. Naruto said. You got it. Tamari said and went her own way. Itsumi, create some shadow clones and have them roam the city. If your clone sees anything suspicious, apprehend the person and keep them in lockdown. I'll have my own shadow clones out as well. Naruto said. No problem. Natsumi said as Kankuro came up to them. We have a problem. Kankuro said. What is it? Naruto asked. One of our council members managed to slip out after our meeting. Kankuro said and Tamari appeared. Damn it. Naruto said. It's Ikra who's missing. Tamari said. What does he look like? Naruto said. He's a short man with black hair that hangs over his right eye, a goatee and dark eyes. Kankuro said. 
Natsumi, go find him and bring him to Gara's office. Naruto said. Sure thing. Natsumi said and vanished. We've got Jen in and guard the bunker we have. We'll keep our medics on standby just in case. Gara said as he approached them. Keep an eye on the skies. Dadar likes to travel by air. Naruto said and Gara nodded. I've got him. Natsumi said as she appeared with a knocked out Ikra on her shoulder. Ikra? What's he doing here? Gara asked. He's a spy. He killed two of you at the gate and wounded three. They're getting medical help right now. Natsumi said. Take him to interrogation. Gara said. Uh, we don't exactly know where it is. Sakura said. We don't have enough time to send him there anyway. Who knows how long it'll take to get him to talk. Kankuro said. I can get what you need. What exactly do you want to know? Naruto asked. I want to know who he's a spy for and how long. Gara asked. All right. No problem. I just need 10 seconds. Naruto said and turned away from Tamari to use his Manjekyo Sharingan. Are you sure 10 seconds is enough time? Sakura asked and Naruto lifted one of Ikra's eyelids. Yeah. Naruto said and used Mainder plus D to get the information he needed. What's he doing? Tamari asked. Basically reading his mind. He's using his Sharingan for this one. Natsumi said. The Sharingan doesn't have that ability though. Sakura said. Naruto does. His Sharingan is. Different from the one Cyclops Sensei uses. Natsumi said and Naruto was finished. I'm done. Naruto said. Your eye is bleeding. Sakura said and he wiped away the blood. He's a spy, but he doesn't know he's a spy. Naruto said. How is that possible? Natsumi asked. The memory concealing manipulative sand. Naruto said. Who was he spying for? Gara asked. Tsusori, which means they've picked up their speed if he was able to activate them and he's not even in the village. We may have less than a few hours until they reach the village. I managed to cancel it so when he wakes up, he won't remember any of this. Naruto said and Gara nodded. Let's go to the gates. Naruto will fight me while the others take on the other one. Gara said. The one we'll fight is named Dadara who fights from a distance. We'll be in the air. Naruto said as they started running. All right. Gara said. A few hours later. Naruto, Gara, Natsumi, Tamari, Kankuro and Sakura were all at the village entrance gates. They were all prepared to fight and doing different things to get Rei prepared for the fight. Natsumi was sitting down meditating, Tamari was making sure her fam was in prime condition, Kankuro was tinkering with his puppets, Sakura was going through her medical supplies, Naruto and Gara were both staring out into the desert. As they were waiting, Naruto saw a giant bird made of clay in the sky and used his thunderclap arrow to destroy it. Once the bird was destroyed Sasori and Dadara appeared in front of them. Be ready, Gara. Naruto asked. Yeah. Gara said. What the hell? What are the Nine Tails doing here? I thought she went missing. Dadara said. It doesn't matter. We get two. Sasori said. Not gonna happen. The two of you will die today. Naruto said. Yeah, you fuckers are done for. Natsumi said. Big talk from somebody who ran away. What's the matter? Did the big badly village treat the poor little badly? Dadara asked. No, bitch. I was training to kick your ass. Natsumi said. Ready, Gara? Naruto asked. Yeah. Gara said. Dadara, you handle it. I'll take the nine tails. Keep them alive. Sasori said and then he was kicked away. Let's go, bitch. Natsumi said and ran after Sasori with the others. Looks like I'll be done before Sasori. Dadara said and created a clay bird then flew into the sky. You know, Dadara. The two of you made a fatal mistake coming here. Naruto said as he summoned a dragon to go in the sky and Gara used his sand. Oh yeah? What's the mistake? Dadara asked. You came to fight the Kazakiage in his domain. This is his playground. You came to fight a shinobi who uses sand in a desert. Naruto said. You should have waited for me to go out of the desert. Gara said and Dadara smirked. We're not worried. We came prepared for the one-tailed beast. Dadara said. You both may have come prepared for Gara, but not the rest of us. Plus, I can already tell that Sasori is the brains in your group. Naruto said. I never knew the Kazakiage couldn't fight for himself. The leader of the village was so scared that he had to call in backup. Dadara said. Gara didn't respond and just sent a huge wave of sand at Dadara, who countered with some explosive clay. Naruto sent a pulse of lighting chakra through the sand and felt some bombs get disabled. While Dadara was flying around Gara transformed his sand into one of Shukaku's hands and had it chase Dadara. While he was flying around, Dadara threw two small clay birds that grew in size towards Gara, but Naruto destroyed them with his thunderclap arrow. The dragon Naruto was on flew in so Naruto could get closer to Dadara and then Naruto used the dragon flame. 
Dadara countered with some of his explosive clay, but the explosion was too strong and it destroyed one of the wings on his clay bird he was using, so he was forced to create another one. Naruto used the lightning ball, but Dadara managed to get out of the way and fell into a trap set by Gara. Gara used his sand prison to capture Dadara, but after a few seconds, Dadara managed to cause a strong enough explosion in order to get out of the sand prison. That sand is a real pain in the ass. Add in the fact that he has the tactical advantage, I can't stop him from using it. Dadara thought. Naruto's dragon shot a fireball at Dadara who managed to dodge it, but fell right into the trap Naruto and Gara set. Gara managed to catch Dadara with a giant column of sand that was attached to his arm, but Dadara used a giant clay centipede to weaken the sand and get away. Gara managed to use his sand coffin at the last second and crush his arm. The Kazakiage is good. The sand he used to crush my arm is different. It's faster and more powerful than the ordinary sand from the desert. It's infused with a lot of chakra and that must be his go-to for quick defense. I underestimated him. I should have been better prepared. However, even if I did come more prepared for him, the Achiha is a huge problem for me. How did he enter the village without Sasori spy knowing? I can't escape because his dragon is fast. His moves are unknown, except for him being able to use fire and lightning. I need to separate them and take them out one at a time. Dadara thought. It won't work. Naruto said. What do you mean? Dadara asked. I bet you're thinking of a way to us and take us out one at a time. I'm saying it won't work. While you keep your distance, you're still losing the fight. If you try to run it won't work since I'll just catch you and if we manage to get you grounded, then your death is inescapable. Naruto said. You intended to attack my village and capture me. You and the other Akatsuki members would have extracted Shukaku from me which would have killed me. As Kazakiage it is my duty to protect the village and the price for your actions is death. Gara said. The Akatsuki have now gone from predator to prey. The hunters have now become the hunted. Naruto said. It's time we finish this. Gara said. Like hell you will. I'm tired of hearing you both talk and looking at those expressionless faces of yours. Dadara said. I only have enough clay for one last homing type. I'll have to save that for a different time. Dadara thought as he got some clay ready. Naruto, while well, I am all for him being defeated, I must make sure the village is untouched. Gara said. I know. I'll force him back to gain some distance from the village. Naruto said. How will you do that? Gara asked. My friend here can use his wings to create a strong enough wing and send him far away from the village. Naruto said and Gara nodded. I'll follow your lead. Gara said. All right, Skyrus. Give me the strongest wind you can create. Naruto said. Of course. Skyrus said. Skyrus flapped her wings creating a powerful gust of wind for Naruto and he followed it up by using the shuriken shadow clone. Gara used his sand shuriken to create hundreds of shuriken that went flying at Dadara. Dadara was looking at a countless amount of shurikens flying at him and had to retreat away from the village. He was too fast for the shurikens, but Gara used the great breakthrough to speed up their attacks. The clay bird Dadara was on was clipped a few times and he had no choice but to use some of his remaining clay to fix it. Dadara created some small size clay explosives and threw them towards Naruto and Gara. Naruto then did something nobody has ever done before and created a giant shuriken out of lighting, then threw it towards the explosives. He watched as the shuriken tore through the explosives with no difficulty and Dadara was livid that none of his plans were working. However, Dadara saw a small opening to attack Gara, while Naruto was distracted and summoned his C2 dragon that exploded at point-blank range in front of Gara, who barely had enough time to protect himself with his sand. Gara was knocked out and fell out of the sky, but his sand protected his fall. That's one Jinchuriki down. One more to go. Dadara yelled as Naruto landed on the ground. Son of a bitch. Naruto thought. This is the end for you as well. Dadara said. C3 explosion. This was Dadara's most powerful large-scale bomb, which became an enormous statue once it was activated. Dadara dropped this on his target from above, which just happened to be Naruto who was just looking at the statue. Naruto could tell that its explosive power was great enough to potentially destroy a large portion of Suna and prepared himself to prepare for it. Once the attack was close enough to Naruto and Suna, Dadara caused the clay statue to explode. Naruto went to Gara and told Skyrus to fly away from the blast as he got ready. The clay statue exploded, then Gara's eyes snapped open and they were the eyes of Shukaku. Well, the Ichiha is dead for sure, but I know he was protected by his sand. I wish I knew some wind ninjutsu right about now. Dadara said. After a while the smoke cleared and it revealed a black sphere. The sphere spread apart revealing it to be black iron wings sprouting from Gara's back. However, there was also a silver rib cage surrounding Naruto who was also unharmed by the blast. Our intelligence never mentioned anything about being able to use iron sand. 
Plus, I've never seen one like the one the Uchiha uses. Didara thought. You alright, Gara? Naruto asked. I'm fine. Gara said and Naruto noticed his eyes. Chukaku. I wonder what happened. Naruto thought. You, Ichiha. What is that you're using? Didara asked. This my ass you blonde fucker. If it wasn't for your voice I wouldn't even know you were guy. Naruto said and the ribcage went away. Before Didara could respond, he noticed a shadow behind him and saw a black iron fist behind him. Before he could react, the fist exploded as Gara used the iron sand drizzle and it destroyed the clay bird Didara was flying on. Didara started to fall to the ground with the bird and Naruto tried to hit him with a chidori but only managed to cut his arm off in the process. Naruto landed next to Gara, and Skyrus returned to the fight. This isn't good. I need to retreat. Hopefully Sasori had a better chance with his right than I did. Didara thought. We need to stop him. He's grounded and he's vulnerable. Skyra said. I know. I need the both of you to create a tornado and make sure it goes directly at him. Naruto said and started gathering fire chakra. Skyrus and Gara both used their wind manipulation to create a gigantic tornado that was sent towards Didara. Naruto finished gathering chakra and used the fire style. Blast wave wild dance which combined with the gigantic tornado that was created. The combination of the two created the fire whirlwind and caused a blazing firestorm that burned the sand around them. They died down and Didara was nowhere to be seen. Nothing was there except for a burnt Akatsuki robe and Naruto sighed. He got away. Naruto said. Naruto, do you require my assistance anymore? Skyrus asked. No. He's long gone. You can head back. Naruto said and Skyrus went up in smoke. Naruto. Natsumi said as she ran up to them. Man, what happened here? How did you manage to burn all of the sand? Tamari asked. What happened to the other Akatsuki members? Gara asked as his eyes went back to normal and his iron sand went away. He's dead. He was really easy once we got by all of his damn puppets. He carried over 1000 puppets with him and Kankuro almost got off at the side of them. Natsumi said and Naruto looked at Kankuro who was in bad shape. What happened to you? Naruto asked. He was poisoned by Sasori. He made a puppet of the third Kazakiage that was able to use the iron sand and Kankura was hit by it. I need to get him to the hospital to properly work on him. Sakura said. Tamari, show her where it is. Gara said. Of course. Come on, Sakura. Tamari said and they left. What happened? Naruto asked. What do you mean? Natsumi asked. We could both tell you're keeping something hidden. Gara said. Sasori told me that he was supposed to meet a spy at the bridge in 10 days. I don't know who he is since he didn't say a name, but apparently he has information on Arachimaru. Natsumi said. Tenchi Bridge? Naruto asked. Yeah. It's somewhere in Kusa. Natsumi said. Then we need to bring Karen with us. Naruto said. Why? Natsumi asked. She used to live in Kusa and knows the area. Also she can keep her chakra hidden while locating others with her mind's eye of the Kagura. She can alert us of any danger that may try to sneak up on us while we wait. It could be a trap. Naruto said. What about Sakura? Natsumi asked. If this is indeed a trap then we need a medic that can fight from a distance. Sakura is a close range fighter which is odd for a medic, but she learned from Tsunade. Naruto said. I get that, but Karen isn't a fighter. Natsumi said. You've never fought Karen, have you? Naruto asked. No. Natsumi said. Good. Let's just say that she's got more than one Yuzumaki ability. She's a long-range fighter and she's the best for this mission. She can heal while attacking or protecting herself from a distance at the same time. Naruto said. If you say so. Natsumi said. Natsumi, are you certain Sasori is dead? Gara asked. Yeah. Kankuro took all of the puppets Sasori was using, including his body. Natsumi said. You should brief Lady Tsunade on this. Gara said and walked away. Alright. Let's go back to the village. Natsumi said. We can't. Naruto said. Why not? Natsumi asked. Because Sakura is still working on Kankuro. We need samples of that poison he was hit with and she'll get it for us. We leave after she's done healing him. Naruto said. Let's just leave her. I don't want her screaming in my ears again. Natsumi said. Looks like you'll have to deal with it. Naruto said and they started to walk to the village. That reminds me. How the hell didn't she bother you? Natsumi asked. Easy. I basically grew up with you so I learned to tune out loud and annoying noises. Naruto said and banished. Get back here so I can kick your ass. Natsumi yelled and gave chase. Hanoha two days later. I see. Seems like the two of you handled things pretty well. Sanadi said. Well, we are the best of our generation. Natsumi said. Well I'd like to think so. 
Naruto's nearly a cage level shinobi, and you're clearly on your way to becoming one as well if you keep this up. Tsunade said. Yeah I know. I'm awesome. Mitsumi said. Too bad you still have your mother's attitude. Tsunade said. I don't think that's ever going to leave. Anyway I have something important I need to tell you. Mitsumi said. What's that? Tsunade asked. After I dealt the final blow, Sasori gave me some information about Orochimaru or how to get some information on Orochimaru. Mitsumi said. Explain. Tsunade said. He said that I need to go to the bridge in 10 days and meet his spy. Two days have already passed so that gives us about a week to get there. Mitsumi said. You don't think he's lying? Tsunade asked. No. It was his last words and sort of a reward for defeating him I guess. Mitsumi said. Very well. I'll send you two with Sakura and another. I had to send Kakashi out on a mission and he won't be back for some time. Tsunade said. Actually, I was thinking of using Karen for this mission instead of Sakura. Naruto said. Why? Tsunade asked. Well, Sakura is a copy of you. For this mission we'll need a long-range medic in defense in case of an ambush. Sakura sucks at defensive tactics sort of like you do. Karen is a long-range fighter, can heal almost any wounds in a short period of time, and she can use barriers. She also has a sensor ability that makes all of ours look like a joke. This is a stealth and recon type of mission, and who's better than somebody that can hide a chakra from anything while searching for others, no matter how hard they try to hide it. Naruto said. I'll ignore the shot you took at me, but I don't know about Karen. She's been hell-bent on not going on missions, and now you want to take her to Kusa, the very place she hates. Tsunade said. True, but this also means we can possibly take down Orochimaru, and I'm pretty sure that she wouldn't mind doing that at all. Just let me talk to her. Naruto said and Tsunade sighed. Fine. If you can convince her to do the mission then that's fine, but if she refuses you'll have to make do with Sakura. Tsunade said. Alright. Do you know where Karen is right now? Naruto asked. She should be at the hospital finishing up her shift. Shizune said. Alright. I'll let you know what happens. Naruto said and vanished. Alright. I guess I'll be going now. Mitsumi said. Not so fast, Mitsumi. We need to talk. Tsunade said. About what? Mitsumi asked and Tsunade gained an evil grin on her face. Hiroshi. Tsunade said and Mitsumi's face matched the color of her hair. Hospital. After Naruto left Tsunade's office he took a walk to the village and greeted people who didn't know he was back. He didn't see Kurenai or Anko yet, but he'd make sure to visit them soon. He just arrived at the hospital and spotted Karen at the front desk handing over some paperwork. Karen? Naruto said. Yeah? How can I woe? Well, hello handsome. Karen said. I should have seen this coming. Naruto thought. I need your help. Naruto said. At least tell me your name first. Actually, I think I'll stick to calling you handsome. Karen said. It's me, Naruto. Naruto said and her jaw dropped. No fucking way. Where the hell have you been? Karen asked as she wrapped him up in a tight hug. I was out on a mission. Naruto said. For almost three years. Karen asked. It was an SS rank mission. Naruto said. I see. So, what did you want to talk about? Karen asked. I need you to come with me and Mitsumi on a mission to the Tenchi Bridge. Naruto said. Sorry, but I don't go on missions. Let alone a mission that will take me there. Karen said. Not even if it meant we could kill Orochimaru and possibly Kabuto as well. Naruto said and she pulled him into a storage room, then sealed it. Talk. Karen said. Me, Mitsumi and Sakura were just in Suna helping defeat the two Akatsuki members that were sent after Gara. One of them was Asori, and he told Natsumi about a spy going to meet him at the Tenchi Bridge. I need a long-range fighter, medic and sensor. You fit all of those. Naruto said. Why not take Sakura? Karen asked. Sakura is a close-range medic since she was trained by Tsunade and fights just like her. Me, you and Natsumi can go undetected, something she still struggles with, but unlike me and Natsumi, you can be undetected while still sensing other people. Naruto said. I don't know. What's in it for me? Karen asked. You can help get rid of Kabuto and Orochimaru. Plus, you may get to destroy some Kusa property and maybe hurt a few of their shinobi if this is a trap. Naruto said and she sighed. When do we leave? Karen asked. Six days. One of my dragons will fly us there. Naruto said. I'll be there. Karen said. Thanks. I owe you one. Naruto said. It's fine, but I do have something for you. Karen said and pulled out a file. What is it? Naruto asked. I was working with Lady Tsunade on that disease your mother had, and I found something odd. Karen said. Odd how? Naruto asked. Whatever infected your mother was some kind of undetectable gas. 
The thing is, I did some research in Kanoha's database, and it's a gas that was created for something called the Kanoha Death Squad during the First and Second Shinobi War. Back then it wasn't as controlled so it was a quick and painful death used on the enemy, but this one is more controlled and affects you as time goes on. Parent said. So, somebody in Kanoha poisoned my mother? Naruto asked. Yeah. Lady Tsunade managed to find a cure for it, but I guess she didn't have the time to tell you yet. Karen said. Thanks. Naruto said. One more thing. It had to be administered through a mask used to help administer a sedative. Is there any time your mother needed something like that? Karen asked. She had complications after I was born. That's all she told me. Naruto said. Then you're in the clear and don't carry the disease, but somebody definitely murdered your mother. Karen said. Thanks. I'll see you later. Naruto said and vanished. Tsunade's office. Naruto. What are you doing here? Did Karen accept the mission? Tsunade asked. Yeah, but that's not why I'm here. Naruto said and sealed the room. What seems to be the problem? Tsunade asked and Naruto handed her the file Karen gave him. That's what this is about. Naruto said. Your mother's disease file. I was going to tell you, but things happened with the Akatsuki. Tsunade said. I know. Naruto said. Okay then. What about it? Tsunade asked. Karen said my mother was poisoned by a gas. Naruto said. Yes. That was my conclusion. Tsunade said. That gas was created right here in Kanoha during the Second and Third Shinobi War. Naruto said. How did you find that out? Tsunade asked. Karen did and she told me. During that time, who was in charge of the Kanoha Death Squad? Naruto asked and Tsunade sighed. Anzo was in charge of that squad until Sensei ordered it to be shut down. Why? Tsunade asked. Anzo is responsible for killing my mother. Karen told me that gas can only be administered by a mask used to give patients anesthesia. Naruto said. That's impossible. That project was shut down due to it being uncontrollable. Tsunade said. Do you really think Danzo shut it down? He kept the gas and over the years he managed to perfect it, so it kills you slowly, depending on how much you take. Naruto said. That is what happened to your mom based on the notes you gave me. Tsunade said. When I get the opportunity, he's dead. Naruto said and she pulled out a piece of paper. This way I can protect you and make it a mission. I can't have you go out and be labeled a rogue ninja. Tsunade said and handed it to him. Thanks. Naruto said. There's just one thing I don't understand. How was he able to test this gas without anyone knowing? Tsunade asked. Simple. He has an entire army of mindless drones that will do anything he asks or tells them to do. Naruto said. Of course, Rude is still being run illegally by Danzo, but we have no proof. Tsunade said. He's bound to slip up now that me and Itsumi are back in the village. He wants both of us on his side, and I wouldn't be surprised if he somehow managed to weasel himself into one of our missions. Naruto said. I'll keep an eye on him. In the meantime I have other good news for you. Tsunade said. What's that? Naruto asked. That medical seal you wanted to create was approved by the council. Although many were upset that it can't cure everything it does help out a lot. I combined the notes between you and your father which is weird because both of you had the missing pieces to the other's work. Tsunade said. When do you want me to start working on them? Naruto asked. As soon as possible. Tsunade said and he nodded. I'll have some ready before the mission. Naruto said. I'll try to spring a trap by going to the council about this. I know Danzo will have his route spying, so I'll mention the two of you on the mission. I talked to Karen a bit over the years and she said she met Danzo once when she was under Orochimaru. If I mention Orochimaru's name then I'm sure Danzo will want one of his ninja to go on the mission. I'll deny him his request but tell Karen to keep her sensing ability sharp just in case he goes behind my back. Kill whoever Danzo sends and search them for any clues on Danzo working with him. Tsunade said. No problem. Naruto said. You're dismissed. Tsunade said. See you later. Naruto said and went up in a swirl fire. Show off. Tsunade thought. Shizun. Tsunade yelled and Shizun came into the room. Yes, Lady Tsunade. Shizun asked. Summon the council for an emergency meeting. Tsunade said. Civilian or shinobi? Tsunade asked. Shinobi council only. Tell them to meet in one hour while I get everything situated. Tsunade said. Of course. Shizun said and left. Time to get rid of this pain in the ass. Tsunade thought. Tsunade sealed the folder away and made her way to the council room, but not before activating the security seal in the room that she installed. She had a feeling Root would be lurking in her office if Danzo showed up to the meeting, and she used it now just for extra precautions. Chapter 17. Tenchi Bridge. 
After the events of protecting Suna while killing Sasori and Dadara managing to escape their battle, Naruto was also thinking about the mission briefing he was about to have with Tsunade about the Tenchi Bridge mission. While he didn't doubt Sasori was lying, he couldn't shake the feeling of something going wrong on this mission. Truthfully he'd feel better if Kakashi was on the team because after him and Natsumi, Kakashi is the strongest in the village. His years of fighting in Kiri and helping the Bloodline faction for nearly three years made him think of multiple possibilities of this main one, was the possibility of Orochimaru showing up and ruining the entire thing. While he knew that he could take on Orochimaru by himself due to Orochimaru's rumored health problems, it would still be difficult due to Orochimaru's ability to get out of sticky situations with ease. Right now he was in the Hokage's office with Tsunade, Karen and Itsumi. So, when do we get started? Naruto asked. We're just waiting on one more person. Tsunade said. Who? Naruto asked and then a knock was heard on the door. Come in. Tsunade said and then walked in. A member of the? Karen thought. Well that was fast. Tsunade said. I heard it was a matter of great urgency. The said. I assume you know why you've been summoned here. Tsunade said. I have a general idea. The said. Kakashi's out and I want you to work with his team. Tsunade said. It would be an honor to work in Kakashi's stand, Mladi. The said. Good. Now, this isn't a normal Black Ops mission. You're going on a regular assignment. So you can take off the mask. I'll be giving you a code name. During the mission, you'll be known as Yamato. Tsunade said and the removed his mask. Yes. I understand. Yamato said. Good. Now, the mission is as follows. You four are to go to the bridge in four days with Sasori spy. Get any information you can from him and then leave. You were specifically chosen for this mission due to your unique abilities. Tsunade said. What does that mean? Naruto asked. Do you mind if I tell them? Tsunade asked. Not at all. Yamato said. Yamato, here is a result of Orochimaru and his experiment on trying to recreate my grandfather's infamous wood style. Yamato possesses the wood style, so he can replicate Sasori's puppet body with relative ease. Tsunade said. Hey. I know you. You helped me train during the exams. Natsumi said and Yamato nodded. It is nice to see you again, Natsumi. I've heard rumors about your growth under Master Jiraiya. Yamato said. You're damn right. Natsumi said. I'm guessing Danzo had something to do with him joining the team. Naruto said. You are correct. While me, Elders Kaharu and Hamura were on board with a different mission going on, Danzo was being stubborn against it and we needed to appease him in order to get this mission started. It was either Yamato or a shinobi of his choosing. Sanadi said. I see. Naruto said. However, I don't think his skills will be needed thanks to Natsumi being able to withstand so much of the Nine Tails Chakra. Sanadi said. I must admit that I'm impressed with your ability to withstand Four Tails of Nine Tails Chakra, Natsumi. Yamato said. It's because I'm awesome. Natsumi said. Right. It has absolutely nothing to do with your ability to use the wood. Naruto said. Bite me, fish cake. Natsumi said. Fuck off, tomato. Naruto said and Sanadi punched both of them on the head to make them stop. Anyway, you leave in four days to reach Kusa and then get to the Tenchi Bridge. Sanadi said. Why are we leaving so late? With that amount of time off we'll miss the spy at the bridge. Yamato said. Naruto has the transportation covered. Tsunade said. My personal summons, Comet will be able to take us to Kusa with no problem. Naruto said. How fast is he? Yamato said. Only two dragons are faster than him currently. The boss and the elder dragon. Naruto said. I see. Yamato said and then there was a knock on the door. Enter. Tsunade said and then Danzo walked in holding a file. Hey, look. It's the one-eyed pedophile. Natsumi said and Naruto chuckled. Good one. Naruto said and gave her a high five. Thanks. Natsumi said. Naruto and Natsumi, that's enough. What can I do for you, Danzo? Tsunade asked. It has come to my attention that you are sending a group of shinobi out on an S-rank mission. Danzo said. Don't play stupid, Danzo. You already knew about this mission. What do you want? Tsunade asked. I have a shinobi that I wish to add into the ranks and this mission would be perfect to get him started. Danzo said and gave Tsunade a folder that she looked through. Wow. I can smell your bullshit from over here. Natsumi said. It's kind of like when you forgot to throw out that fish you kept in your refrigerator when we were younger. Naruto said. Don't remind me. Took me weeks to get that smell out of my apartment. Natsumi said. Sheesh. These two are brother and sister no doubt about it. Different mothers, but it's like their mothers were the same. Only good thing is that Naruto is the calm one. I don't even want to imagine if he acted just like her. Karen thought. That's enough for you too. 
Danzo, while I appreciate the offer, this mission already has enough people. We have all areas covered. A medic, an ninjutsu specialist, ninjutsu and tajutsu specialist and an all-around cage-level shinobi. Tsunade said and gave him back the folder. I was unaware that we had a cage-level shinobi within. Danzo said. She's talking about Naruto. I'm sure you've been spying on him ever since we came back. Natsumi said. Can you stop? Tsunade asked and glared at her. Sorry, Lady Hokage. Natsumi said and bowed with a huge grin on her face. Anyway, Natsumi is right. Naruto is a cage-level shinobi. Tsunade said. The cage-level shinobi with little to no experience. Danzo said. I've fought in a war for nearly three years. I've been fighting off you since I was in the academy, and I've done more A-S rank missions than my entire graduating class combined. I have plenty of experience and you can't prove me wrong. However, if you need to see for yourself, I'd be more than happy to give you a personal demonstration. Naruto said and activated his Sharingan. That won't be necessary, Naruto. If that is all, you're dismissed, Danzo. Tsunade said. Very well. Danzo said and walked out with a furious look on his face. Lady Tsunade, who will be in charge of this mission? Yamato asked. You will. You have the most experience leading a squad thanks to your time and the... I shouldn't have to tell you this, but there's a chance Orochimaru will show up. When or if he does, Naruto will be the one who has to fight him. He can match Orochimaru in ninjutsu to jutsu and kinjutsu. Tsunade said. Plus, I need to get him back for what he did to Natsumi during the exams. Naruto said. Oh yeah. I remember that. Natsumi said. What happened during the exams? Karen asked. That son of a bitch nearly slapped a five-pronged seal on me after kicking my ass, and it almost cost me the exams if Naruto hadn't saved me. Natsumi said. Make sure you get some good hits in for me. Karen said. You got it. Naruto said. Laddie, if I may. Karen said. Go ahead. Tsunade said. Is it possible for us to infiltrate his base after we're done? Karen asked. You know where his base is located in Kusa? Tsunade asked. Yes. It was the very first base he took me to when he got a hold of me. Karen said. Very well. If you have a chance you can go to his base and find anything you can. Tsunade said. Can I blow it up? Mitsumi asked and Tsunade sighed. Yes. If you gather everything you think is important, you may blow it up. Tsunade said. Sweet. Natsumi said. All right. One more thing and this is mainly for you Karen. Tsunade said. What is it? Karen asked. I want you to keep your sensing ability on high alert when you leave the village. I'm sure Danzo will send somebody to follow your squad. He has an ulterior motive for trying to get somebody on this mission. Tsunade said. What should I do when I detect somebody following us? Karen asked. Tell Naruto and he'll deal with it. Tsunade said. What do you want me to do? Naruto asked. Kill whoever it is. If they have any files on him I want you to grab them and bring them back to me. Tsunade said. Alright, Tsunade. Naruto said. Oh and make sure Natsumi keeps her temper in check. If Arachimaru or Kabuto show up, one of them is bound to try and get her riled up. Tsunade said. I will. I've got that handled. Naruto said. I'm sure you do. Tsunade said. My temper is perfectly fine. Natsumi said. If you say so, tomato. Naruto said and Natsumi started to growl. Fucking repeat it. I fucking dare you. Natsumi said. I thought you had your temper in check. Naruto said and Natsumi sheepishly smiled. W well it's a work in progress. Natsumi said. Right. Karen said. I forgot to tell you this, Natsumi, but when you get back, Kakashi wants to talk to you about some kind of training to help you create an ultimate that only you will be able to use. Tsunade said. Awesome. Wait, I still have to show you my new one Natsumi said. Show us later. We need to pack up. Naruto said and vanished. Tenchi Bridge. Alright we're here. I just need to get into my disguise. Yamato said and used his wood style to create his disguise. Alright. That's exactly what he looked like. Now just make your voice all raspy and deep. Natsumi said. Like this. Yamato asked in a different voice. Little bit. Try again. Natsumi said. Like this. Yamato asked. That's perfect. Natsumi said. Listen up. Our opponents will be on alert. So I want us to split up. We'll have to work as a team. Naruto, if Orochimaru shows up, then he's all yours. Yamato said. He's already here, but he's hanging back. We were also followed when we left the Leaf Village, but whoever it is hasn't moved since we stopped. Karen said. What should we do? Natsumi asked. After this, we go after whoever it is. Yamato said. Actually, I have a better idea. We use Orochimaru as bait. Naruto said. How will we do that? Karen asked. 
whoever it is must be waiting for Orochimaru to show up. I'll lead Orochimaru away along with whoever is following us, and I'll trap the three of us inside of a barrier. After I deal with Orochimaru, I'll deal with the spy. Naruto said. Are you sure that will work? Natsumi asked. I have my scout dragons around already with a kunai on them. Whoever is following us will stay far away from the fight, but close enough to keep watch. All it takes is a small signal, and the dragons will activate the barrier keeping us inside. Naruto said. That's quite impressive. Yamato said. Thanks. Naruto said. Alright. I'll give you the signal when it's time to come out. Yamato said and walked to the bridge. Yamato. You weren't followed were you? Yamato asked. No. I still have that strange sensation from when I remembered who I was after you broke that. The spy said. I've got some questions for you. Yamato said. I don't have much time so please keep it short. I risked my life to get here without Orochimaru finding out. The spy said. I want information on the location of his hideout. Yamato said. We're in a hideout on a small island on a lake to the north. We'll be moving again in three days. The spy said. What are the exact coordinates? Yamato asked sounding a bit desperate. Naruto, Karen, Natsumi. Damn it, Yamato. You need to relax or you're going to blow your cover sounding desperate. Naruto whispered to himself. For he really sucks at this. I'm guessing this is his first time having to do something like this. Karen whispered. Naruto, are you sure you can handle Orochimaru? Natsumi asked. Yes. His arms should still be damaged from when the old man sealed them away, and his body should be failing him now. He's vulnerable and there's not going to be a better chance than now to take him out before he has the chance to switch bodies. Naruto said. Imato and the spy. Meanwhile on the bridge a noise was heard in a bush behind the spy, so they turned around, and it was just a rabbit. False alarm. I thought it was Orochimaru. It's just a rabbit. By the way, about what you ordered me to do Lord Sasori. Even after his reincarnation, Orochimaru uses it to protect the cellular specimens from his discarded body, and I was not able to analyze the cellular data. The spy said. I see. Yamato said. Now please hand over the item you promised me. I've been here long enough as is, if Orochimaru finds out I'm here I'll be killed. The spy said and then Yamato pulled out a kunai ready to kill the spy, but was cut off by Orochimaru showing up. Interesting conversation, I hope you two don't mind me showing up and joining in the fun. He said. So he's finally here. I wasted too much time. Yamato thought as Orochimaru stared at him. The snake started to coil around the spy, but he jumped away and landed next to Yamato. The spy revealed himself to be none other than Kabuto himself. Lord Sasori if you hadn't pulled out that kunai I wouldn't have been able to get away from him in time. Kabuto said. I'm lucky it looks like he misunderstood, I guess my cover hasn't been blown yet. However, Orochimaru is here now. Yamato thought. I remember that garb. It sure brings back memories, Sasori. Orochimaru said. So you followed him, did you? Yamato asked. I just wanted to thank you in person, Sasori. After all, you're the one who sent this kid to me and he's come in very handy. Orochimaru said. I can't call them out yet I need to wait a bit longer. Yamato thought. The Budo gathered chakra to his hand and then cut through Yamato's disguise and cut him slightly on the arm. Yamato jumped into the air leaving the disguise and then Kabuto jumped back to Orochimaru's side. Did he know who I was? No, that's impossible. What's going on here? Yamato thought. Multiple striking shadow snakes. Orochimaru sent multiple snakes from his arm at Yamato and wrapped him up, but he substituted himself with a wood dummy. That was a wood-style substitution. Interesting. You must be. Orochimaru said, but Kabuto spoke up. Lord Orochimaru, is that Sasori's real body? The spy asked. No, that's definitely not Sasori. Kabuto, don't tell me after all this time as his faithful servant you haven't seen his real body. Orochimaru said. He always hid behind those ugly puppets of his. Kabuto said. What is the meaning of this, Kabuto? You were supposed to be an Akatsuki spy. You should have been under the control of Sasori this whole time. Yamato said. Not anymore Lord Orochimaru broke that long ago. Kabuto said. So you pretended to be under Sasori's while you turned traitor. Or did Orochimaru use his power to change you? Yamato asked. Nope, I actually empathize with Orochimaru's ideals. Who are you anyway? I've never seen you around the Leaf Village. The plan was to kill Sasori, but somebody already beat us to it. Kabuto said. I can tell you about him, Kabuto. He was the only survivor it seems from when I was experimenting with the first Hokage's Dna. I assumed all of the test subjects died so I abandoned the lab. Apparently they found him in my lab alive and decided not to kill him and use his abilities later for there. Now that we have that out of the way, why don't you call out the rat hiding behind you in the bushes? Orochimaru said. Rat. 
he shouldn't be able to sense any of them. It must be whoever is following us. However, since he can't tell that it's three of them, this is a good surprise for us. Yamada thought, as he signaled for his team to come out. Well, well. Look who it is. Kabuto said. Surprised to see me, Kabuto. Karen asked. I honestly can say I didn't see this coming. Lord Rachimaru, I thought you said she was dead. You couldn't find any trace of her tracking seal. Kabuto said. That's because I had Naruto remove it during the exams. Karen said. I see. Arachimaru said. Can we just do this already? I'm tired of four eyes staring at me like I'm a gourmet meal. Mitsumi said. Karen, did you mention to them how you were there as a spy and able to help move our sound ninja into the village during the exams? You're responsible for the death of the third as well. Kabuto said. That won't work on me. I've already told them my involvement with the invasion. Perhaps you should have Arachimaru tell how he got his ass handed to him by a 15-year-old Itachi and needed you to interfere so he could live. Karen said. What? He lost to Itachi. Mitsumi asked. He sure did. You leave a lot of papers and journals laying around your base. I found that one and read it. Karen said. Wait a minute. If he lost to Itachi when he was 15, then you should be able to beat him, Naruto. Mitsumi said. I'm sure he made the mistake of making eye contact with Itachi and won't make that mistake again, but I'm confident I can beat him. Naruto said. Kabuto, kill them. I'll deal with him personally. Arachimaru said. Of course. Kabuto said. I thought you'd never ask. Naruto sat and appeared in front of Arachimaru, then punched him away before he gave chase. What should we do? Karen asked. We take out Kabuto. He's slippery so don't let your guard down for a split second or he's gone. Yamato said. What about our loose ends? Is he following them? Mitsumi asked. Yeah. He's already gone after them. Karen said. Good. You hang back and provide cover for me. I can handle this. Mitsumi said and Karen nodded. Sure. Karen said and jumped back before creating a barrier to make sure Kabuto couldn't escape. Do you really think you can beat me? I'm at the same level as Kakashi. Kabuto said and Mitsumi smirked. Funny you should say that because I surpassed Kakashi. Mitsumi said and cracked her knuckles. No doubt thanks to the Nine Tails Chakra. Kabuto said and then he was punched into the barrier which burned him. What was that? Yamato asked. It's a fire barrier. Naruto gave it to me on the way here. Karen said. She rushed at Kabuto at speeds that he couldn't even see, and to everyone's shock when Kabuto sent a punch at Natsumi who was coming right at him, it went right through her. Natsumi appeared behind him and kicked him in the back hard, sending Kabuto into the barrier that once again burned him. Kabuto, getting tired at being made to look like a joke, decided to go at her with full strength and activated his chakra scalpels before he rushed at her. Natsumi decided to make it look like he had a chance, so she avoided any shots to vital areas and allowed Kabuto to hit her a few times. She knew they would heal up by the time the fight was over and didn't worry about them that much. After a while Natsumi decided to use some ninjutsu. Wind style. Air slash. She coated her hand in wind chakra and slashed her hand upward, sending an arc of wind chakra at Kabuto who barely dodged it but still got cut up on his side. The power behind that attack was enough to split the bridge down the middle and cut into the ground a little bit. Mitsumi didn't let up as she went through some hand signs. Water style. Explosive bite of the water dragon. Mitsumi created a large pool of water that fired Kabuto into the air, shot numerous water bullets at him, and then finished the attack up by forming the water bullets into a water dragon which attacked Kabuto, sending him crashing into the ground. Karen and Yamato. Whoa. I don't think she'll need your help, Yamato. Karen said. Obviously. I knew she went to train with Master Jiraiya, but to come back and simply be able to treat Kabuto like he was a fresh out of Academy Genin is astonishing. Yamato said. Not really. I mean I know Naruto was the strongest genin before they left, but Natsumi wasn't that far off. I heard she was as strong as a before she left, and that was with her barely training with the perv. Add that in with her training seriously under the pervert for nearly three years, and this is the result. She hasn't even used her yet. Karen said. I wonder why. I basically taught her everything I know. Yamato said. Maybe she never found the need to use it. Karen said. Natsumi vs Kabuto. What's the matter, Kabuto? I thought you were better than this. Mitsumi said, as Kabuto struggled to stand up. I will admit that I underestimated you, but no more games. Kabuto said and healed himself. I could have sworn you said that you were getting serious before I kicked your ass. Mitsumi said. Enough talk. Kabuto said. Kabuto hid underground using the earth style. Hidden mole jutsu and Mitsumi already knew what he wanted to do. Kabuto appeared from the ground behind Natsumi and went to cut her with his chakra scalpel, but he was met with a kick to the stomach by Natsumi. 
Kabuto went to cut the tendons on her leg, but Natsumi quickly covered her leg in the Nine Tails Chakra, and he pulled his hand back. Kabuto grit his teeth and jumped back away from Natsumi, but he was grabbed by roots and slammed to the ground. Kabuto looked at Yamato who was just standing there and then looked at Natsumi who was controlling the underground roots with a wood style. Underground roots. Before Kabuto could speak up, he was kicked in the chin by Natsumi, and then he was sent flying into the air by Natsumi who created a wood clone, then had it turn into a wooden mount. Natsumi channeled chakra into her legs and jumped up higher than Kabuto. She used the wind style. A great breakthrough on Kabuto and sent him to the ground. Natsumi used her falling momentum and then slammed her Rasengan into Kabuto's gut, but he lessened the damage by channeling chakra into his stomach. Kabuto thought he was safe, but then he was wrapped up in a tree and saw that Natsumi was using the wood style. Tree bound burial. Kabuto desperately struggled to get out, but he was completely locked in, and Natsumi was using the to siphon off his chakra. I think somebody like you is in possession of the wood. Kabuto said. I know. I'm pretty fucking awesome. Natsumi said. Natsumi closed her fist, and the roots holding Kabuto started to sink into the ground. Kabuto knew he was dead, and he wouldn't give them the satisfaction of seeing him plead to live, and he was finally trapped underground. Five minutes later, Natsumi rose the roots from the ground revealing Kabuto's corpse, and then she sealed his body away. Well, that's over. Karen said and dropped the barrier. Yeah, but we're not done yet. Natsumi said, and then they saw a barrier rise in the distance. Let's go. Yamato said and they nodded. Natsumi, do you need me to heal you? Karen asked. No. I'm okay. He didn't do too much damage to me. Natsumi said and they took off into the trees. Naruto vs. Orochimaru. Meanwhile Naruto is fighting Orochimaru in a Tejutsu fight after having caught up to him. Orochimaru already had to shed his skin once and he was not happy. He ducked a roundhouse kick from Naruto and threw six punches at Naruto, who easily dodged them, thanks to him using his Sharingan, which anticipated each of Orochimaru's movements. Orochimaru hasn't landed a decisive hit since the fight started, but he did manage to barely connect with Naruto on some of his hits. It wasn't going as he thought it would since Naruto was actually fighting him on even ground. He jumped back from Naruto and called out. Formation of 10,000 snakes. 10,000 snakes with swords sticking out of their mouths all charged at Naruto, who gathered a lot of fire chakra into his lungs after creating about 25 shadow clones. Fire style. Great fire destruction. Naruto released a massive stream of intense flames from his mouth, along with his shadow clones that set the entire forest area ablaze, engulfing the 10,000 snakes in a sea of flames. On top of the flames going on, Naruto threw in a few explosive tags as well to help destroy all of the snakes. An explosion happened, and Naruto had to wait for the smoke to clear, revealing the entire forest surrounding them was eviscerated. He saw Orochimaru come out of the ground, and he was breathing heavily since he was nearly caught in that explosion. What's the matter, Orochimaru? Are you tired? Naruto asked. It's impossible. He should not be able to face me on even ground after only three years. I will admit that he was close to being a level shinobi last time I saw him, but he should not be able to take on an S-rank shinobi such as myself, even if I am a bit wounded like this. His growth is astounding. Perhaps it was a blessing in disguise that Sasuke was killed by the Nine Tails. Orochimaru thought and activated his slithering snake mode. Tell me, Naruto. How were you able to get this strong in only three years? Orochimaru asked. I trained and fought strong opponents. Something you clearly haven't done in years. Naruto said. Haki brat. Orochimaru thought. With his new ability to move at greater speeds, Orochimaru quickly closed the distance using his slithering snake mode and then gave Naruto a strong punch to the face, but Naruto barely managed to get out of the way. Orochimaru followed it up with a barrage of chakra and forced punches and elbow strikes. The barrage of attack sent Naruto flying away into some trees, but he quickly recovered and cut Orochimaru in half with his dragon blade. Suddenly snakes came from both halves of Orochimaru's body and pulled them back together, healing Orochimaru of any sign of damage. Nice trick. Naruto said and wiped blood from his mouth. How about you stop playing games and fight me with your actual strength? I've got many years of experience under my belt to know when somebody is holding back. Orochimaru said. You asked for it. Naruto said and released a huge amount of chakra. His power is incredible. I can see why he challenged me by himself. It's been quite some time since I've been in a good fight. I'll make sure to not damage his body too much before I take it for my new one. Orochimaru thought. Naruto took one step and then disappeared. All Orochimaru felt was a kick to the chin, and before he could react, he was on his back looking at the sky completely dazed. Naruto was running so fast that not even a fully matured Sharingan would be able to track him. Orochimaru shed his skin, but it was pointless since Naruto pummeling him into the ground again. Dragon Barrage. 
Naruto started to rapidly and relentlessly bombard his target with precision at various angles and locations. This style consists of sheer unpredictable movements that can easily catch his opponent off guard. Naruto mixed all of his fighting styles into one which made all of his movements seem unpredictable. To make things worse, Naruto started to use two kunai that he channeled lightning and fire chakra into which made the pain far worse for Orochimaru. Then hit combo. Naruto punched Orochimaru before punching him into the air with a lightning-infused uppercut. He jumped above Orochimaru with amazing speed and punched Orochimaru with a lightning-infused blow to the stomach. Orochimaru was sent crashing to the ground where he left a hole to see where his body hit. After a while, Orochimaru climbed out of the ground and shed his skin once more, but he was still breathing heavily. I think he's able to do this much damage to me. I've already shed my skin too many times, and this body is starting to reject me. I need to retreat, but I can't let him follow me. Orochimaru thought. Looks like you're about to pass out over there. What's the matter? I thought you wanted to fight. Naruto said. Hmm. I must say that I was taken by surprise. I never would have thought you'd put up this much of a fight. You truly are a fine specimen. I should have given you the curse mark instead of Sasuke. Orochimaru said. Sorry, but I'd prefer if you didn't give me a hickey on my neck. Naruto said and released a pulse of draconic chakra making a barrier appear. What is this? Orochimaru asked. It's a barrier. Oh and before you even think about escaping, it's underground as well. Fair warning, I wouldn't touch the barrier if I were you. You'd get electrocuted. Naruto said. You fool. You trapped yourself in here as well. Orochimaru said. Lay Manko for this side of me. A little bit of pain wouldn't hurt. Naruto said and grinned like Anko. Then I guess I'll have to kill you to get this barrier down. I had hoped to take your body for my own, but I can always find somebody else. Orochimaru said and pulled the kusanagi out of his mouth. It's weird how you can do that without a gag reflex. Naruto said and pulled out his dragon blade. Orochimaru lunged at Naruto aiming to cut off his head, but Naruto blocked his attack and kicked him away. Both of them disappeared, and all you could see were sparks flying from their blades colliding together along with the sounds of clothes shredding. Orochimaru quickly sped up and then used his kusanagi. Blades from eight directions. Orochimaru managed to trap Naruto with a snake that he summoned, then summoned multiple replicas of his kusanagi blade that started to attack Naruto from every direction. Orochimaru just looked at Naruto who was being held up by the snake and just started to laugh. You should have known better than to challenge the strongest of the legendary. Although you managed to push me to the point where I needed to shed my skin, you were never a match for me. Orochimaru said. Have you ever heard the saying that history repeats itself? Naruto asked and Orochimaru narrowed his eyes. What history? Orochimaru asked. You still have a habit of looking a Sharingan user in their eyes. Naruto said, and then Orochimaru found himself in place of Naruto. What? Orochimaru yelled, and then Naruto released a making Orochimaru see his body was in horrible condition. Somebody as smart as yourself should really know better than to make the same mistake twice. Naruto said. Ichiha style. Halo dance. Naruto coated his sword in fire, and with a quick gesture, unleashes a wave of flame towards Orochimaru, who yelled in pain from the fire burning his skin. Orochimaru dropped his kusanagi blade and then shed his skin one more time. Orochimaru stood up and then coughed up some blood which Naruto took note of. My body is giving out on me. Orochimaru thought and coughed up more blood. Seems like you're dying faster than you thought you would. Looks like I'm too much for your current body to handle. Naruto said. I will kill you. Orochimaru said and picked up the kusanagi blade once more. Orochimaru lunged at Naruto again, but was stabbed by a lightning current coming from Naruto's sword. Orochimaru managed to release some wind chakra from his body to free himself and shed his skin once again, because Naruto's attack numbed the left side of his upper body. Orochimaru went at Naruto with the intent to kill him, but Naruto used his chakra shaping skills and fired off some fire that only grew stronger thanks to Orochimaru's wind chakra. The pierced Orochimaru's skin then left third-degree burns on each spot that pierced him. Once again Orochimaru shed his skin, but then coughed up more blood, and fear was on his face. Naruto took this time to attack Orochimaru himself and quickly gave him a kick to the chin that made Orochimaru drop his kusanagi blade. Naruto followed it up by grabbing the back of Orochimaru's head and slamming it into his knee, effectively breaking his nose. Naruto then gathered water from the air and trapped Orochimaru in the water prison until Orochimaru was nearly out of breath. Naruto released them and Orochimaru was there breathing heavily. Why you should have killed me when you had the chance. Orochimaru said. He flicked his fingers making the kusanagi blade come towards him and Naruto barely managed to keep the blade from stabbing him through his heart. The blade stuck out of Naruto's side and he coughed up some blood. Hockiness is your downfall. Orochimaru said and Naruto made a shadow clone that removed the blade much to Orochimaru's shock. How was he able to remove the kusanagi blade? 
Not even Hiruzen was able to remove it. Orochimaru thought. It's time for you to die. Naruto said and suddenly Orochimaru couldn't move his body. What did you do? Orochimaru asked. It's a paralyzing seal. You were so focused on killing me that you never once noticed the seal I started to draw on you while we were fighting. Good luck breaking it. You don't have the specific chakra needed to break it or dense enough chakra. You're finished. Naruto said. Naruto gathered a large amount of lightning chakra to his hand before tossing it up into the air. All of a sudden storm clouds formed in the air and Orochimaru had a look of fear on his face. The sound of the Chidori was heard, but this time it was 50 times worse since the sound was coming from the sky. A little parting gift for you. Naruto said. Chidori thunder. Lightning started to rain down on the battlefield and obliterated everything in its path. The attack lasted for about 20 seconds before it stopped and a huge smoke cloud was all you could see. After a while of waiting, the smoke cleared and Naruto was staring at Orochimaru's lifeless body on the ground. Before he could make a move, Naruto pulled out his sword and blocked an attack from the person following them. Looks like the little root problem has finally come out to play. So, what's your orders from Danzo? Naruto asked. I am here to kill you. The said emotionlessly. Danzo should have warned you about me. I've been a thorn in his side since I was seven. Naruto said and channeled lightning chakra through his sword only for the person to turn into ink. I just watched you fight. We've been watching you for many years and acquiring data on your skills. I know all of your moves. The agent said. Do you? Naruto asked and the agent had a sword through his chest. How? The agent asked. Widespread. Although I was expecting you to attack me a lot sooner. Now, say hello to your other members in hell for me. Naruto said, as he removed the agent's bag plus his ninja pouch, before basically frying him from the inside out with his lightning chakra and then lowering the barrier. Naruto. Natsumi yelled as he fell to his knees with his wound bleeding. What happened? Yamato asked. Build Orochimaru and the spy. He got me good with his Kusanagi blade. Naruto said. Just because he's old doesn't mean he's weak. He is one of the legends for a reason. Here bite me so I can heal you up. We still have to raid his base. Karen said and held her arm out to Naruto. That Kusanagi blade isn't poisoned, is it? Natsumi asked. No. I don't know why, but Orochimaru didn't lace it with poison. He must have wanted to conserve as much chakra as he could. Naruto said, as he bit Karen and she stitched his wound to heal him faster. What happened at the end? All I saw was dark clouds and then lightning hitting the earth. Yamato said. It's one of my powers. Trust me, the area could have looked a lot worse than you see. Naruto said. I have a hard time not believing that. Yamato said. Where's Kabuto? Naruto asked. He's dead. That idiot really thought he could take me on. I didn't even need Woody here for backup. Natsumi said. Woody? Yamato asked. Don't worry about it. Naruto said. That should do it. You'll be okay to move at your normal speed in a few moments. Karen said. Thanks. Naruto said. No problem. Karen said. What's the bag right there? Natsumi asked. I don't know. The person following us had it and I haven't had the chance to look at it yet. Naruto said and Natsumi opened a folder she found. No fucking way. Natsumi said. What is it? Naruto asked. It's a folder filled with personnel and their code names. It has their actual faces, skills and weaknesses. Natsumi said. I thought Lady Tsunade had these sealed away. Yamato said. She does. The only time they're only accessible is when the council needs a folder on the members to get a squad ready for a mission. Natsumi said. Then how the hell did Danzo manage to get his hands on this? Karen asked and Natsumi noticed Naruto sigh. You know how, don't you? Natsumi asked. Yeah. Danzo has a Sharingan in his left eye socket. A Sharingan that has a which makes all of my looks pathetic. Naruto said. Is that powerful? Natsumi asked. Yeah. We need to get back to the village as soon as possible. Karen, how far is that base you told us about? Naruto asked. About 10 miles north of here. Karen said. Is it on an island like Kabuto said? Naruto asked. Yeah, but you can get to it by land. There's multiple entrances to the base from the land. Karen said. Woody, what's the call? Natsumi asked and Yamato sighed. Let's hit the base and gather everything we can quickly. Yamato said. Don't forget we have permission to blow it up. Natsumi said. You're going to need this. Naruto said and gave her a seal. What is this? Natsumi asked. That is an explosive tag powered by my draconic chakra. One seal is powerful enough to destroy half of a small village. Naruto said. Awesome. Natsumi said and carefully put it in her pouch. All right. Let's move out. Yamato said. One second. Naruto said. What is it? Yamato asked. 
I have to seal away Orochimaru's body and his sword for proof of his death. Naruto said and sealed them away. Let's go. Yamato said and they took off running. Hidden base entrance. So this is the base. Natsumi asked as they looked at the entrance. Yeah. I've been here before. Karen said. We need to split up. Karen and Naruto, you two look around for anything important we can use. Natsumi, you're with me on finding anything else. The seeds I had you all eat on our way here is a way for us to communicate. Just hold your hand to your left ear while using a small amount of chakra and I can hear what you're saying. Yamato said. What about the prisoners here? Natsumi asked. They're all unstable experiments. Each of them are dangerous and they're locked up due to them being unstable. Karen said. So they need to blow up with the entire base. Got it. Natsumi said. Let's move. Yamato said and they split up. Naruto and Karen. So, where exactly are you taking us? Naruto asked as he was following Karen. To a room that should give us enough help with our problems. This is it. Karen said and then broke the door down because it was locked. That's one way of opening the door. Naruto said as they entered the room. Look at this. Karen said and gave Naruto a folder. It's filled with information on Danzo. Naruto said. What kind of information? Karen asked. Blackmail. Let's just say that if Danzo tried to betray Orochimaru back out of a deal they had, Orochimaru could have leaked this information to the world and have Danzo on the run for the rest of his life. Naruto said. Well, he's about to be on the run now. Even Sanadi will be after him. Karen said as she picked up a folder and read the contents of it. What do you mean? Naruto asked. He has an artificial arm made of Hashirama Senju's DNA. Orochimaru gave it to Danzo. He didn't go into detail as to what he needed it for, but from the way it was carefully created, it must be for something big. Karen said and Naruto picked up another folder. You were lucky I ran into you during the exams. Naruto said. How? Karen asked. You were next on the chopping block for his experimentation list. He was going to use your heel bite as a way to look for his next breakthrough in immortality. Naruto said and gave her the folder. Yeah and it seems like he left a few choice words in here since I was never with them when they returned to the sound village. Karen said. I wonder what else is in here. Naruto said. I've got a folder on all of his past, present and future experiments. Looks like he was kidnapping people from Kiri during the civil war and all of them failed to be experimented on due to them dying on the table. Karen said and they heard Natsumi screaming followed by footsteps. Everybody out. Natsumi yelled and they ran after her. What happened? Karen asked. She accidentally triggered the seal and it started to glow. Yamato said as they made it to the entrance. Damn it, Natsumi. The one time I trusted you with something dangerous. Naruto said. Not now, fish cake. Natsumi yelled. This my ass, tomato. Naruto yelled as they made it out of the base and he quickly summoned Comet. Yo, Naruto. What's up? Comet asked and they all hopped on his back. No time to talk. Hurry and fly away. Naruto said and Comet just took off into the sky, but 10 seconds later there was a huge explosion. So, mind filling me in? Comet asked. I gave Natsumi the exploding tag I made. Naruto said. Never mind. Comet said and flew towards Konoha. Leaf Village Hokage office. I see them. Tsunade said as they just told her about the mission and she was looking at Kabuto's body. Will that be all, Lady Tsunade? Karen asked. Yes. Naruto, stay behind. The rest of you may leave. Tsunade said. Yes ma'am. Karen said as she left with Yamato and Natsumi then Tsunade dismissed her so she could seal the room. What happened to the spy? Tsunade asked and Naruto pulled out a scroll. He's dead, but you won't believe what else in that scroll. Naruto said. Why? Tsunade asked. Just unseal it. Naruto said and when she did, Orochimaru's body fell out along with his sword, plus the documents they found. Is this really him? Tsunade asked. Yup. That's his blade next to him. Naruto said. I see. There are a lot of folders and journals. Tsunade said. We found more than what we thought we would. Naruto said. Will I be grossed out by this? Tsunade asked. There's some freaky shit in there. You're going to be pissed from what you see. Naruto said and Tsunade skimmed through the folders. Is this real? Tsunade asked. Yeah. I figured Orochimaru kept all of this to blackmail Danzo just in case he tried to back out of a deal or something. Naruto said. Danzo is a dead man. Tsunade said. Just give me the word on when and I'll attack him. Naruto said. Not yet. We have the Akatsuki to deal with right now, but if he slips up the slightest then I'll give you the order. Tsunade said and he nodded. I'd like to make a request. Naruto said. What is it? Tsunade asked. When Itachi shows up, I'd like to take him on by myself. Naruto said and she looked at him. 
Why? Sanadi asked. We both know I'm the only one who can actually match up perfectly with him. You should know as well as I do that I stand in his way of them getting to Natsumi. He's going to challenge me anyway. Naruto said and she sighed. I'll grant your request, but you will take back up just in case Kisum is there as well. Sanadi said. Tamari is coming with me. She already cleared it with Gara. Naruto said. All right, but we still have unknown members of the Akatsuki to deal with. Sanadi said. One of those journals should have something on the Akatsuki members. Naruto said and she looked at the pile. It's over a hundred journals here. Possibly close to three hundred journals. Sanadi said. That's why you have an assistant. Naruto said. Oh yeah. That is right. Sanadi said. Also, Dadara is mine. Next time he's in the land of fire I'm going after him. Naruto said. Very well. I know you can handle yourself against him so you'll be fine. I'll write up the mission details for you to make it official. Sanadi said and unsealed the room. Before I leave, did you know that Natsumi completed her version of the Naruto asked. She told me she completed it but didn't tell me what it was. Sanadi said. I guess I'll go find her. Naruto said. She should be at the training ground with Kakashi right now. Sanadi said and Shizun entered the room. Lady Tsunade, a council meeting has been called. Shizun said. I who? Tsunade asked. Elders Kaharu and Hamura. Shizun said. I see. I'll be there. You're dismissed, Naruto. Tsunade said. See ya. Naruto said and went up in a swirl of water. That's pretty cool. Shizun said and Tsunade sighed. It is, but me and you will be working overtime for possibly the next month or so. Tsunade said and pointed to all of the journals and folders they brought back. What are these? Shizun asked. Ifs from my old friend Orochimaru, and that's his body courtesy of Naruto. Tsunade said and pointed to his body. Oh my. What are we going to do with it? Shizun asked. We're going to present this to the council before I pay Naruto the bounty he earned for killing him as well as his sword. Then we're going to research his body before burning it. Tsunade said. Uh. Okay. Shizun said. Training ground. So, the training I'm talking about is to help you create the ultimate that only you can use. Kakashi said. Ultimate Jutsu? Natsumi asked. That's right. You're going to complete it. The fourth intended to add his chakra nature to the, but he was never able to do it due to certain events. I tried it, but I was unable to add my lighting chakra nature to it, and that's why I created the Chidori. Kakashi said. I sort of already completed it. I added my chakra nature to it. Natsumi said. Is that so? Naruto asked, as he appeared. Damn right it is. Check it out. Natsumi said. Wind style. Rasengan. Natsumi gathered chakra into the palm of her hand and easily created a normal. Soon after the was created, she started to channel wind chakra into the, and then you could hear a slight screeching noise, coming from the as four blades formed around the. Not bad. Kakashi thought. Pretty awesome, right? Natsumi asked and cancelled the. I must say I'm impressed. Did you make another one? Naruto asked. No. I only had time to work on one. Natsumi said. Why didn't you just use shadow clones? Naruto asked and she looked at him. Damn it I forgot. Natsumi yelled. Same old Natsumi. Kakashi thought. Well, did you make yours? Natsumi asked. Yup. Watch and learn. Naruto said. Naruto created it in his hand and threw it towards a tree, but it seemingly vanished into thin air. Uh, I think yours is incomplete. Natsumi said. Just watch. Naruto said and then the tree exploded. What the fuck was that? Natsumi yelled. I call it the vanishing. It's with my lightning chakra nature mixed into it. After I throw it, it vanishes in the air, making the opponent lower their guard, only to get attacked by an invisible blow. It doesn't cause a mortal wound, but it's extremely painful if it hits a vital point. Naruto said. The lightning chakra nature not even I could do that. Kakashi thought. That is so cool. I wish I had that chakra nature. Natsumi said. Try making a water variant of the. I haven't done it yet, but I'm sure it's possible. I have another one as well, but I'll save it for later. Naruto said. Uh, okay. Since you have that part down, Natsumi. It's time we take it to the next level. Kakashi said. Alright, fish cake. It's time for you to leave. Natsumi said. See ya, tomato. Naruto said and vanished. I'm going to kick his ass later. Natsumi said. Right. Kakashi said. Alright, Cyclops Sensei. How long will this ultimately take? Natsumi asked. It takes you as usually, but we both know a way to shorten the time you'd need to actually complete it. Kakashi said. Shadow clones. Natsumi said. Exactly. Now, Yamato will be here as well just in case. 
I know you can control some of the Nine Tails Chakra, but it's better to be safe than sorry, since this training won't be easy. Kakashi said. When do we start? Mitsumi asked. Meet me here tomorrow at noon. This will be where we meet every day unless one of us has a mission. Kakashi said. I'll see you tomorrow. Mitsumi said. Later. Kakashi said and went up in smoke. I wonder if Hiroshi is home. Mitsumi said and vanished. Orochimaru and Kabuto were dead which gave Konoha a bit of breathing room now. However, that didn't matter much because the Akatsuki were still lurking around hunting. Meanwhile a courier just arrived from Sanadi to read and it was stamped by Mei herself. Chapter 18. History Discovered. It's been a few weeks since Naruto killed Orochimaru and Mitsumi killed Kabuto. The Akatsuki went back into hiding when word got out that Naruto killed Orochimaru and now they would have to move even more carefully. He was questioned by the council on how he managed to kill Orochimaru when Jiraiya himself couldn't kill him and he explained that if Jiraiya really wanted to kill Orochimaru, then he would have killed him already. The council was finally relieved that Kanoha's number one enemy and his sidekick were finally dead. Itsumi during the past few weeks kept on training with Kakashi on her new and despite her already knowing how to combine her chakra natures plus adding the wind chakra nature to the, she still couldn't complete her as she struggled to increase the size. Naruto gave her a bit of advice, which was she should try increasing the size of the first before working on the and that way things would be easier. While Natsumi would work on her, she still found time to live her normal life since she was off of missions for a bit. Naruto was currently walking around the village greeting people as they waved at him to say hi and helped a few people out during his stroll. He was walking towards Ichirikas for a bit to eat when all of a sudden he stopped in his tracks and turned into the Dango restaurant. He's been back for almost two months, but he never went to see Kurunai and Anko, who must be pissed at him right about now. He entered the Dango shop and ordered their favorites before heading towards Kurunai's apartment. He was going to knock, but remembered he had a key and decided to use it. He instantly regretted not knocking on the door because Anko was sleeping naked on the couch with one leg hanging off the couch. He immediately grabbed a kunai out of the air that came flying at him with tremendous speed and just looked at Anko who was glaring at him. Take a fucking picture. It'll last longer. Anko said. I should have knocked. Naruto said. You never knock. Anko said. What the hell is going on out here? Kurunai asked and saw Anko naked on her couch. Sup. Anko said. Why are you here? Kurunai asked. Naruka yelled at me, I cut him, got drunk and here I am. Naked on your couch. Anko said. Just put your clothes on. I'll clean the couch later. Kurunai said. Yeah yeah. It's not like this is the first time I've done this. Anko said, as she put her clothes on. How'd you even get in here? I had my security seals activated. Kurunai said. Oh please. Like that would keep me out. Anyway, look who finally decided to fucking show up after basically a month. Anko said and pointed at Naruto. Naruto. Come here and give me a hug. I haven't seen you in years. Kurunai said and gave him a smile. I think I'll stay right here. Naruto said. Come on. You wouldn't want to leave your big sister without a hug would you? Kurunai asked. Yes. Yes I would. Naruto said. Fuck that hug. I've got a bone to pick with you motherfucker. Anko said. What did I do? Naruto asked. You took the one thing left in life I had to do away from me. You know how important that was for me. Anko said. Care to clarify what you're talking about? Naruto asked. You killed Orochimaru. Anko yelled and threw 20 kunai at him that appeared out of nowhere. Where the hell does she keep those things? I know she doesn't have pockets or anything. Kurunai thought. So it is true. I thought it was just a rumor. Kurunai said. No. It's true. Naruto said, as he dodged every kunai Anko threw at him. How could you? You know that was my dream. Anko said. What were you going to do, Anko? Try to commit suicide in order to take him down like you did in the forest of death. Naruto asked. She did what? Kurunai asked. Yeah. Airhead over here tried to kill herself when she fought Orochimaru three years ago. She's lucky Orochimaru took pity on her or else she would be dead by now. Naruto said. You went to fight Orochimaru without backup and didn't even tell me. Kurunai asked and Anko sheepishly grinned. It must have slipped my mind. Anyway, I was supposed to kill him and you know that. How could you do that to me? Anko asked. I'm simply stronger than you and I have been for quite some time. Besides, I made him do that nasty as shedding skin thing he does if he takes damage and each time he slowly but surely started to die. Naruto said. I'll accept that on one condition. You buy me dango and red bean soup. Anko said and Naruto threw the bag at her. Enjoy. Anyway, what have you two been doing since I've been gone? Naruto asked. Mm. Me and Aruka have been fucking like rabbits in heat. Anko said as she stuffed her face with dango. 
in a much more civilized manner, me and Asuma have stayed together. We are expecting a baby soon. Kurin I said. What? Anko yelled. I'm pregnant. I wanted the three of us to be together before I said anything. Only me and Asuma knew before I told you too. Kurin I said and Anko gave her a hug. Congratulations. How far are you? Anko asked. Four weeks. Kurin I said. How did he react? Anko asked. He nearly passed out, but overall he was just as happy as I am. Kurin I said. Well, congratulations. I guess I'll be an uncle earlier than I expected. Naruto said. Maybe I should have some kids that way your kid can have somebody to play with growing up. Anko said. I don't think the village is ready for a mini Anko. Kurin I said. It would be half me and half Iruka. Everything will be fine. Anko said. Aren't you mad at him for yelling at you? Plus you cut him and now you're talking about having his kids. Naruto said. Our love is complicated to you, but normal for us. All this means is the makeup sex will be out of this world. Anko said. We didn't need to know that. Kurin I said and Anko just shrugged her shoulders before stuffing her mouth with food. Anyway, does Asuma still smoke? Naruto asked. That's like asking if you're a virgin still. Anko said and laughed at him. So he doesn't smoke anymore. Naruto said and Anko choked on her food. No. He still smokes. Kurin I said. You're not a virgin anymore. Anko yelled. You act like it's such a surprise. Naruto said. It is. You barely even touched Tamari while the two of you were here before you left. Wait a minute. Tamari's been here and you've been wherever the hell you've been for all this time. You slept with that sexy one, didn't you? Anko asked. No. Naruto said. Please tell me you didn't cheat on Tamari. She's a really nice girl once you get past the tough exterior. She's a girl I would not mind you marrying in the future. Speaking of which I thought I said to wait for marriage. Kurin I said and Naruto looked at her. I've walked in on you and Asuma having sex at least 20 times. I don't remember you getting married at all. Naruto said. Do as I say and not as I do. Kurin I said. Whatever. Naruto said and her eye twitched. The older you've gotten the more of your mother's smart mouth started to appear. Kurin I said. I'll take that as a compliment. Besides, Natsumi is partially to blame for this. She brought this side of me to the surface. Naruto said. Whatever. What happened to Kabuto? Anko asked. How is it that you heard about Orochimaru's death and not Kabuto's? Naruto asked. He's dead who killed him? Anko asked. Natsumi killed him on the same mission. Naruto said. So what do we do now since Kano has most notorious criminal is dead? Anko asked. We focus on the Akatsuki. I already have two of them on my radar to fight, but I'll take on any of them. Naruto said. I can already guess that Itachi is one of them since you can cancel out a Sharingan with your own, but who's the other Akatsuki member? Kurinai asked. Adara the Mad Bomber. He escaped my fight when he attacked Suna with Sasori. Oh and Tamari will be coming with me when I fight Itachi. Naruto said. So my Anko said. Think about this, Anko. Kurinai said. I did and I'm still going. The Akatsuki travel in pairs of two, right? Anko asked. Yeah. Kurinai said. Then Kissam will no doubt be there with Itachi, and we both know Tamari doesn't stand a chance against him by herself. I'll be her backup and we'll deal with Kissam while Naruto fights Itachi. Anko said. If you're going to fight Itachi then we need to do the transplant now. Kurinai said. She's right. You're going to need every advantage you can possibly have once you fight him. Anko said. No. I want to fight Itachi with my Manjikyu and see where I stand. I'll do the eye transplant after we fight. Naruto said. There's no guarantee that you'll come back alive. I've heard stories about how dangerous a fight is between two Sharingan users and the fact that both of you are crazy strong. It makes much more sense to do the transplant now. So let's do it. Kurinai said. Besides, Tamari would be devastated if you were killed. Anko said. That's how you know I won't get killed. If I die, she'd bring me back to life and kill me herself. Same goes for the two of you. Naruto said, and then Katsai appeared. Naruto, Lady Tsunade wishes to see you. She says it's urgent. Katsai said and Naruto nodded. I'll be there. Naruto said and then Katsai went up and smoke. This discussion isn't over, Naruto. We're talking about this later. Kurinai said. Who said it was a discussion? It's my choice to not do the transplant and you're not going to change my mind. I'm not a kid anymore and I'd appreciate it if you understood that. I get that I'll always be your little brother no matter what, but I need you to be the understanding sister at the moment and not an overbearing mother. Naruto said and vanished. I don't act like an overbearing mother, do I? Kurinai asked. Well, would you look at that? It seems Aruka is done with his classes for the day. Anko said and Kurinai looked at the clock. He still has two hours left. Kurinai said. 
He has an early day. Anko said and banished. Tsunade's office. You wanted to see me? Naruto asked. Yes. We received an urgent message from Kiri signed and stamped by Mei herself. Tsunade said. Okay. Naruto said. There have been reports of two men walking around wearing the Akatsuki robes, and one of them was Dadara. He has somebody else with him who's wearing an orange mask and acts like a complete child. Mei said her sensors have picked up a huge chakra signature in the waters of Kiri. She asked for you to go help fight off the Akatsuki with her and possibly see if the Three Tails would help Kiri. Tsunade said. Just me? Naruto asked. Yeah. I was going to send Asuma with you, but two more Akatsuki members have been spotted in the Land of Fire and I need Team 10 along with some more ninja to look into it. Natsumi is sidelined due to her training and I know you weren't doing anything. Tsunade said. You better not let Kuren I know you're sending him to fight the Akatsuki. Naruto said. It's an S rank mission. I can't disclose the details to her. Tsunade said. Right. Anyway, when do I leave? Naruto asked. Right now. Tsunade said and Naruto vanished. Naruto. Alright. One stop to Kiri and then hopefully I can take out Dadara and his partner. Naruto said and summoned Comet. You really find the worst times to summon me. I was just about to pick my mate. Comet said. Right. I forgot you were still going through puberty. Naruto said. It's not puberty. It's called evolution. Comet said. If you say so. Anyway, I need a lift to Kiri. Naruto said. Why? The civil war is over. Comet said. Mei thinks the three tails finally came back and she requested me for backup. Naruto said. Sure. Hop on. I've always wanted to fight a tailed beast. Comet said. You die. At most you'll be able to defeat the one tailed beast, Shukaku and maybe the two tails. Other than that, every other tailed beast would kick your ass. Naruto said as he jumped onto Comet. It's worth a try though. It's not my fault they stopped my training. Comet said. The kind of is your fault. Drago saw that you were getting a bit too cocky and decided to halt your training. I mean because of you I had to postpone my training. Naruto said. You're still on that. I said I was sorry. Comet said. I would have accepted it had you done it once, no. You fired five of your plasma blasts at me and each one had enough power to blow up a village. Naruto said. You said you wanted to unlock your Susanoo and that's what I was helping you with. Did you or did you not unlock the Susanoo? Comet asked. I hate you. Naruto said. That's the kind of response of somebody who lost the argument. Comet 1, Naruto 0. Comet said. Actually I didn't unlock the Susanoo until I had to protect Mei during the final battle in the Civil War. Plus, I remember kicking your ass during our training to the point where you gave up a few times. Naruto 1, Comet 0. Naruto said. If you weren't going on an important mission right now I'd throw you off of my back. Comet said. Sure you would. Throw me off your back and you'll have to explain to Ra why I'm injured while you were with me. Naruto said and Comet growled. Fuck you. Comet said and Naruto just chuckled. Relax. You know I'm just messing with you. Seriously though. I need to head back to the dragon's den soon and finish up my training. Naruto said. Well, that's a bit difficult now since the Akatsuki are on the move again. Tsunade's going to need you a lot and it's going to interfere with your training. Comet said. Maybe if we dealt a big enough blow to them we'd be able to get some breathing room. We already took out Sasori so that set them back. Plus just recently we killed Orochimaru and Kabuto so they can't get recruited. We need to take out more members though. Naruto said. That should send them underground, but there's just one thing. Comet said. What's that? Naruto asked. Even if we do manage to send them underground, how do we know they won't rebuild their forces quickly? Comet asked. Because the Akatsuki is made up of nothing but S-ranked criminals. The only two people they could possibly recruit are now dead, and the only S-rank criminals left are useless mercenaries who stole something from a village and joined up with a group to stay safe. Naruto said. Now you have a chance to take out two more criminals then. Comet said. No. I'm not going to take them out. I want to see what this other guy can do. Naruto said. What other guy? Comet asked. It's a new partner with Dadara. He wears the Akatsuki robe and an orange mask, but they say he acts like a child. Naruto said. Then he shouldn't be a threat. Comet said. It could always be an act. Jirei acts like a child himself, but he's an s rank shinobi, and there's possibly only a handful of people who can beat him. Naruto said. So, you just test this new person to get a feeling of his skills. Comet asked. That and his chakra levels. I can pretty much tell how much chakra a person is hiding if I'm close enough. Naruto said. Summon me when you need to return to the leaf village. Comet said as he landed in front of the Mizukage building and just went up in smoke. 
he could have at least waited for me to get off. Naruto said, as he landed on the ground. Naruto, it's good to see you again. Mei said. Nice to see you as well, Mei. Naruto said and he had a kunai at his neck. Show some respect or else. And member said and Naruto just chuckled. I can tell that you're new so I let it slide, but the next time you do that I'll show you why I'm not somebody to mess with. Naruto said. I'd let him go. Naruto is a huge reason why this place is even standing. He is Konoha's dragon rider after all. Mei said and the shakingly removed the kunai from Naruto's throat. Who am I going to locate the three tails with? Naruto asked. Tajiro will be going with you. I'll have some tails behind and set up a perimeter. I want you to try and get the three tails to become an ally of Kiri. Mei said. Not that I don't agree with you, lady. However, are you sure we can trust him? What if he has an ulterior motive to secure the three tails and wage war against Kiri? And member asked. If I wanted to wage war against this village, nobody would have left the civil war alive, except for maybe Mei, and that's the truth. Kanoha has the strongest tailed beast, so we don't need the three tails. Besides, where the hell would I hide it? Don't ask questions if you haven't fully thought them through, Dumbus. Naruto said and banished. I'd catch up to him if I were you. Oh and please don't piss him off. You won't survive. Mei said and Chijuro left with a. Lady Mizukage, shouldn't I go along with them just in case? My Byakugan will be valuable to this mission. Ao said. No. I need my strongest men in the village still as we are not fully functional yet. I trust the team I sent with Naruto to get the job done. Mei said. Naruto. Tajiro and the team managed to catch up to Naruto who actually slowed down a bit for them. They traveled in silence while Naruto was keeping his sensing ability stretched out as far as he could, and he did detect Adara a couple miles away from them, but he wasn't moving at the time. Naruto also detected somebody else with him, but he was having trouble doing so because whoever Dadara was with kept on constantly disappearing and reappearing. Naruto, Chijuro and they arrived at the area, Mei believed the three tails are located, so he signaled them to stop. Is this it? Chijuro asked. Yeah. The three tails are definitely here. Naruto said. I don't see it though. Chijuro said and Naruto just looked at him. That's because it's hiding underwater. The Akatsuki members sent after the three tails are a few miles away from us to the east. Go with the and set up the perimeter about two miles out. I'll send some shadow clones to have us surrounded for extra protection. Naruto said as he created some shadow clones. How are you going to speak to get in contact with the three tails if it's underwater? Chijuro asked. Time for me to go for a swim. Naruto said and jumped into the water. All right. Let's spread out. We need to keep the Akatsuki members from reaching this area. Chijuro said. Underwater. Naruto was using his water manipulation skills to create an air bubble around his head to help his breath as he was swimming down to the three tails. It wasn't often that he did this trick, but he was glad he learned how to do it and it proved to be quite useful. He swam down to the bottom where he eventually saw the three tails, which looked as if it had been waiting for Naruto to arrive since it was staring at Naruto the entire time. Naruto casted a barrier underwater that was able to block out some water but leave just enough for him to stand on. The three tails just looked at Naruto, and they had a stare off as if the three tails was trying to get a read on Naruto's true feelings. Soon enough the three tails held his fist out towards Naruto who bumped his fist only to be pulled into his mindscape. Three tails mindscape. I've been waiting, Naruto Uchiha. The three tails said. How'd you know I was coming? Naruto asked. The Mei spoke to some of us tailed beasts about you, and we all know what the two of you talked about. The three tails said. Then I don't have to waste your time with a boring backstory then. First, what's your name? Naruto asked. My name is Isobu. Now, what would you like to know? Isobu asked. Picking up from where I left off with Jimei I suppose. Can you tell me about Hogoromo and Himura's parents? Naruto asked. As I'm sure Jimei has already told you, Kagaya Atsutsuki is their mother. However, from what we've been told by the Sage of Six Paths, she was not from this planet and could be considered an alien I suppose as you humans call it. She is also the progenitor of Chakra since Chakra didn't exist until she came to this planet. She ate the Chakra fruit of the Shinju tree and gained the use of Chakra. Their father is unknown since they were never told who he was. Isobu said. So, was this Kagaya Atsutsuki evil? Naruto asked. Many people will have their own opinions of how she was and to her children she was evil. She desired peace, but her way was only temporary and caused a lot of death. It also inspired the people of Hagoromo's era to weaponize Chakra for wars, instead of using it for peace like he wanted, which would include us tailed beasts, being seen as nothing more than masses of powerful Chakra to exploit and control. We don't know much about Kagaya or how or why she came to this planet, but all we know is that the infinite Tsukiyomi cannot be activated, which is what we tailed beasts fear the Akatsuki may be after. 
If all of us tailed beasts or at least our chakra is sealed into the statue which is really the ten tails husk, then it opens the door for her return to Earth. Isobu said. Do you know if there is any way to find anything that would help us receive more information on Kagayal Tsusuki? Naruto asked. Why would you want to know more about her? Isobu asked. I was taught to never judge a book by its cover. Maybe there's something we're missing as to why she came here and why she merged with the god tree to become the ten tails. I don't know, it just seems like what you and Chimei told me has a lot of holes in the story as to what her ultimate goal was. I mean clearly she must have fallen in love if she gave birth to two sons and stayed here on earth to raise them, instead of going back to wherever she came from. Either she couldn't return or she didn't want to, and something besides her getting pregnant kept her here. Naruto said and Asobu just looked at him. The Sage of Six Paths would have liked you if you were around during his time. Well you may be Indra's reincarnate, you have the qualities of Ashura as well. You desire peace, but you also understand there will always be conflict no matter what happens. You have the qualities to become the next Sage of Six Paths. Isobu said and Naruto chuckled. I don't want to become the next Sage of Six Paths. I want to be the first Naruto Uchiha Namikas. Naruto said. You are quite different from the rest of the Uchiha clan. I can see why the dragons chose you. Isobu said. How do you know I have the dragon contract? Naruto asked. The dragons have been around long before tailed beasts were created and we would sometimes fight the dragons to test our strength. It was a friendly competition as you could say, and I can also sense their chakra radiating off of you. There has only been one dragon that has been able to successfully defeat all of us tailed beasts single-handedly. Isobu said. Ah. Naruto said. Exactly. Now, I can't give you much information, but the land of ancestors may still be around, so you may find some information there on Kagaya, since that is where she lived when she came to this planet. Isobu said. The land of ancestors. Got it. Naruto said. However, I must warn you to be careful. That is where the original god tree was located, and I do not know if anything is still happening over there. Isobu said and Naruto nodded. I got it. Now, I'm really here because Mei, the, wants to know if you'll be an ally of Kiri. She won't seal you away and just wants to have your support. Naruto said. That is my original job. We tailed beasts were created to maintain peace and balance which we did until Madara Ichiha and Hashirama Senju came around. Isobu said. What does that mean? Naruto asked. When you return to your village, you should look into the fight between Hashirama and Madara Ichiha, which is the cause for every single shinobi war that has happened. I sense a fight going on above the surface. I'll protect myself from the waters and remain hidden from the Akatsuki. Isobu said and Naruto nodded. I let her know. Thanks for the talk. Naruto said and turned around as if he felt somebody behind him. What are you doing? Isobu asked. I thought somebody was behind me. Naruto said and banished from Isobu's mindscape. Real world. Naruto returned to the real world and Isobu gave him a boost to the surface of the water by tossing him up through the water. Naruto safely landed on the water and saw multiple winded members being tended to by his shadow clones, while Chijuro was standing in front of Dadara and his partner. Naruto vanished and appeared next to Chijuro, then activated his Sharingan, only to notice Dadara's partner had one as well. Chijuro, go help the wounded. Naruto said. Are you sure? These two are no joke and I can barely keep up with them. Chijuro said. I've already fought Dadara and he barely survived. I'll be fine. Get going. Naruto said. All right. Chijuro said and vanished. Look at what we have here. The lonely Naruto Uchiha. Dadara said. It's Naruto Uchiha Namikas. If you're going to say my name, make sure you say it right. Naruto said and noticed the man in the mask tense up a bit. I can care less about your last name. I'll kill you and then grab the three tails myself. Dadara said. Aha. Uh -huh. Who's your new partner? Naruto said. I'm Toby and I'm a good boy. Toby said in a childish voice. You can stop using chakra to change your voice. It's annoying. Tell me Toby. Are you an Achiha? Naruto asked. Me? What? No. I'm Toby. This eye was a gift from a friend. Toby said. I have a hard time believing that because your chakra reserves aren't being strained like Akahi Haddix or when he has the Sharingan active. Naruto sighed and Naruto noticed the man flinch again. Another nervous twitch. I wonder why he flinched when I mentioned Dad and Kakashi. Naruto thought. Toby has lots and lots of chakra, so the chakra drain won't bother Toby. Toby said and Naruto looked at Dadara. Is he always like this? Naruto asked. You have no idea. Dadara said. All right. Let's test him out. Naruto said. Naruto ran at Toby and prepared to attack him, but he just went right through him. Toby threw a punch at Naruto which connected and sent Naruto into a tree. Naruto stood up unharmed and used the fireball on Toby, but he saw Toby absorb it into his eye before sending it back at him. 
Naruto dodged and Toby appeared in front of him preparing to strike him with a punch, but Naruto caught his fist at the last moment and channeled Chakra into his hand before breaking Toby's hand with a simple squeeze. Ah. You broke Toby's hand. I thought we were just playing around. You big meanie. Toby said. Shut up. Naruto said. Naruto created the Chidori in his hand and Toby froze as he saw that. Naruto ran at him with impressive speeds that nobody could see and went to stab Toby in the chest. His hand went right through Toby who quickly jumped back and sort of absorbed himself into his own eye. Naruto looked at Dadara and he was also gone. Dadori, Dad and Kakashi's names all made him flinch or freeze. I need to figure out how they all connect to him before I tell anybody. Naruto thought and Chijuro landed next to him. Where did the enemy go? Chijuro asked. They retreated. Naruto said. Wow. You don't even have a scratch on you. Chijuro said. Let's get back to Mei. Naruto said and vanished. Piri. So how'd it go? Mei asked as Naruto arrived in her office with Chijuro. The three tails are still underwater and he agreed to help you out. Naruto said. What of the Akatsuki members? Mei asked. They retreated. The one in a mask is possibly the most dangerous Akatsuki member they have. Naruto said. What were his abilities? Mei asked. He didn't show much, but he's able to turn himself intangible to avoid any physical hits. Also, the whole acting childish thing is just that, an act. He's using chakra to change his voice, but one punch from him was able to send me into a tree, and although we weren't being serious, I can tell he's extremely powerful. Naruto said. Is there anything else I should know about? Mei asked. No. I'm going to look into his ability and find out what it is. Naruto said. Did the three tails say anything to you? One of them sent an early report that you were down there for almost 30 minutes. Mei said. You try negotiating with a tailed beast that's been used as a weapon for the past 100 years or so. Naruto said. Fair point. How are we going to make sure the three tails are safe from the Akatsuki? Chijuro asked. I set up a barrier down there, but with this guy having the ability to turn intangible it might not work. Naruto said. I'll keep a constant watch on the three tails to keep it safe. Mei said and Naruto nodded. That's probably the best option at this point, but make sure your guards are actually on alert. This guy can possibly appear anywhere, and I don't know if he can absorb the tailed beast into his vortex. Naruto said. I don't understand how he can do that though. I've never heard of something like that before. Mei said. I would call him a liar, but I witnessed it myself. Chijuro said. You've never heard of this before because it's a secret of the Achiha clan Sharingan. Once the Sharingan reaches a certain level, unique abilities are unlocked and this is one of them. Naruto said. So he's in Ichiha. I thought you and Itachi were the only ones alive. Mei said. We are. Well, at least I think we are. I need to look more into this guy and any reports of a missing Ichiha. This guy said he wasn't in Ichiha, but I didn't sense any strain on his chakra reserves from him using the Sharingan like Kakashi when he uses the Sharingan. Oh and he goes by Toby, but I highly doubt that is his real name. Naruto said. Let me know if you find anything. Mei said. Sure. I'll stay for a few more days just to make sure they're gone though. Naruto said and walked out. Kajuro, add this Toby guy into the bingo book for me as an S rank criminal and add everything you can about him into the book. I want him listed as a proceed with extreme caution and a 2 million bounty on his head. Mei said and Chijuro nodded. Yes ma'am. Chijuro said and left. Kano had Sanadi's office week later. So, how'd the mission go? Sanadi asked. It went well. The three tails have agreed to ally themselves with, but we have a problem. Naruto said. What problem? Sanadi asked. We might have a rogue Ichiha other than Itachi in the Akatsuki. Naruto said. That's impossible. Only you and Itachi are the only Ichiha alive after the massacre. Sanadi said. That's what I thought until I fought that guy in the mask. He was able to use the Sharingan without any strain that should happen to anybody who isn't an Ichiha. Kakashi is a prime example of what happens to somebody who isn't an Ichiha and uses the Sharingan. What makes things worse is that this guy is able to use techniques only a Manjekyo Sharingan can, and this makes him intangible, so it's really difficult to hit him, since he can evade all physical attacks. I got lucky and timed the hit right and broke his hand. He needs to turn tangible again to attack or nothing will work. Naruto said. Is that all you found out about him? Sanadi asked. The axe childish, but you can tell he's strong. Maybe stronger than Itachi, but I'm not sure. He goes by the name Toby and packs a hell of a right hand. One punch was enough to send me to a tree. Not as strong as your hits, but it's not something to scoff at. Naruto said and she nodded. What about Dadara? Sanadi asked. He didn't do anything. He seemed annoyed at this guy's antics, but he left after I almost hit the guy with a Chidori. Both of them fled and didn't get near the three tails. Naruto said. 
Alright. I'll put it down as a mission success in your file. Anything else? Sanadi asked. I need time off. Naruto said. For what? Sanadi asked. I need to go finish training with the dragons and something else I need to check out that's off the record. Naruto said. I can't let you do that. The times were and I need to document everything. Sanadi said. Remember when you said you'd owe me one for covering for you when the daimyo came and you were drunk out of your mind. I'm cashing in on that favor. Naruto said and her eye twitched. You do realize you're blackmailing which is a punishable offense with jail time, right? Sanadi asked. You do realize I can break out of any jail across the nations, right? Naruto asked and she sighed. Okay. Let's say hypothetically you were given this off the record time. Where would you hypothetically be going? Sanadi asked and took a sip of her tea. Hypothetically, I'd go to the land of ancestors. Naruto said and Sanadi spit out her tea. What? Sanadi yelled and Shizun came bursting into the room. Lady Sanadi. Is everything alright? Shizun asked. Yes. Everything is fine. Sanadi said. Are you sure? That yell was pretty loud. Shizun said. I'm fine. Naruto was just telling me the details of his mission. Sanadi said and Shizun nodded. Very well. Shizun said and left the room. The land of ancestors. Haven't you heard the myth about that place? Sanadi asked. The myth about people going missing thousands of years ago and making everyone scare to go back. Naruto asked. That's right. Over the years, there have been reports of it still happening. My uncle prohibited anyone from going there when he was in charge after four squads never returned. Sanadi said. Then how about I take somebody with me? Naruto asked. Who? Sanadi asked. Damari. Haven't really seen her since I got back. Naruto said. This isn't some kind of paid vacation for a date is it? Sanadi asked. No. I can't take Anko because she's probably stuck in Aruka, Kurin I can't go, and Itsumi is too busy training right now. Naruto said. What about the others? Sanadi asked. Rock Lee would be dead before we make it there because of his constant flames of youth talk, Sakura is a medic which I don't need, Niji and Hinata have Hayuga business, Tenten is an option, Ino talks too much for me, Choji would complain about food, and Shikamaru is just lazy. Naruto said. How long do you need off? Sanadi asked. Maybe until January. Naruto said. That's almost five months. Why so long? Sanadi asked. Training with Ra and Drago is hard. That's even with shadow clones. We had a few incidents the last time I was there that made my training stop. If I'm going to fight Itachi, I need to be ready and the dragons can get me there. Naruto said. Five months, but after that I'll need you back in the field. I know Natsumi is strong, but she can't do everything on her own. Sanadi said. Don't you think you need to tell the others to start training harder? I get that me and Natsumi are special cases, but we were gone for nearly three years, and only two of them managed to become one. None of them have even tried to become a since we got back, except for maybe Sakura, since she's training under you. Naruto said. I'll make sure word gets around. Sanadi said and Shizun entered the room again. Sorry for interrupting Mladi, but elders Kaharu and Hamaru are waiting for you. Shizun said. Send them in. Sanadi said. Of course. Shizun said and left. Five months and I won't start them until you send me a message saying you're with the dragons. Now, you may leave. I have an important meeting with the elders. Sanadi said. I don't know why you say it like that. You're an elder yourself. Naruto said and vanished when a vein appeared on her forehead. I am not old. Sanadi yelled and threw her desk out of the window. Elders Kaharu and Hamura are here, Lady Tsunadi. Shizun said. Thank you. Oh and please tell some to bring me to my desk. Sanadi said and Shizun sighed. Of course. Shizun said and left. Training ground. After leaving Tsunadi's office, Naruto followed Natsumi's chakra signature and found her at the training ground working on her. There was obviously going to be something powerful given all of the repaired craters in the ground. Naruto decided to walk over to her and catch up a bit before he leaves. Not bad. Naruto said as he appeared behind her and caught a punch. Oh. It's you. Where the hell have you been? I've been looking for you? Natsumi asked. I was on a mission. Naruto said. But you're already back. Natsumi said. I had Comet and it was a pretty simple mission. Naruto said. About what? Natsumi asked. One of those. Naruto said and pointed at her stomach. Oh. I see. Natsumi said. What have you been doing these past few days? Naruto asked. I was just training really. I mean Hiroshi stopped by a few times to help out if he could, Ino and Sakura dragged me away for a group dinner which you missed by the way. Oh and we had some little shit here from the fire temple a few days ago. Listen to this though. That little fucker was a pseudo Jinchuriki. Natsumi said and Naruto raised an eyebrow. 
How is that even possible? Naruto asked. His father collected some of the Nine Tails chakra after the Nine Tails attack that was dispersed and sealed it inside of him. The fuckface was holding up to four tails of Nine Tails chakra that he couldn't control and nearly killed everyone, but I had to step in to save everyone. We removed the Nine Tails chakra from him, and now he's normal, I guess. Oh and Asuma almost died. Itsumi said nonchalantly. How? Naruto asked. Because he was fighting an Akatsuki member named Hayden who worships somebody named Jashin and is supposedly immortal. Well, he is immortal. Asuma cut his head off, but Kakuzu just stitched it back on like nothing happened. Anyway, he was using some ritual that inflicted damage to his opponent if he was standing inside of the ritual circle and had some of his opponent's job. We found out that once he gets out of the circle the fight is cancelled and Asuma's Dumbus kept getting caught because he wanted to fight at close range like an idiot. Natsumi said. How the hell did I miss all of that within a couple of days? Naruto asked. It's been basically over a week. Anyway, what are you up to? Natsumi asked. I'm about to leave. Figured I'd come see my little sister before I left. Naruto said and ruffled her hair. You just got back and you already have to leave. Man mom must be working you to the bone. Natsumi said. I'm taking a vacation to finish my training with the dragons. You should think about training with the toads again and learning sage mode. Naruto said. Sage mode? What's that? Natsumi asked. You should ask Jurei or summon one of the toads to explain it to you. I only know of it because Ra told me. Anyway, I'll be gone for five months so I need you to hold things down for me. Naruto said. I wish I had five months off. Anyway, I need to finish my training and then get ready for my date later. Natsumi said. Make sure you keep the date at a kissing only level. Naruto said. From what Tamari told me you and her are way past a kissing only level, so you're one to talk. Natsumi said and he sighed. When did you talk to her? Naruto asked. Yesterday. She left earlier this morning. Natsumi said. Really? I'll see in five months. Naruto said and vanished. Mention his girlfriend and he just blows me off. Such an asshole. Natsumi said and started training again. Naruto. As he was running through the forest, Naruto found Tamari's chakra signature and she apparently wasn't alone. She was surrounded by a few low-level chakra signatures, but as fast as they appeared, they all just vanished. He picked up his speed only to see part of the forest destroyed and Tamari's chakra moving a few minutes ahead of him. He took off and eventually landed behind her making her freeze. Well, hello. Naruto said and she quickly spun around. Oh. You're back. Nice to let me know. Seeing as how I'm your girlfriend that doesn't get to see you often, it would be nice if you responded to my letter I sent you like a week ago. Tamari said and Naruto gave her kiss that made her smile a little bit. I didn't get a message from Tatsu or anything. Naruto said. Really? I gave it to her and she was supposed to give it to you. Tamari said. She's probably busy getting things done. They did just have some new hatchlings not too long ago. Naruto said. I guess. So, what are you doing following me? Tamari asked. I wanted to see you and invite you to come on a little trip with me. Naruto said and she blushed. The trip where? Tamari asked. The land of ancestors. Naruto said and she just looked at him. Why? Tamari asked. I need to look into something and I was told I may find some answers there. I figured you should come with me since we don't spend much time together and it could be like a getaway for us. Naruto said. You just want me alone, don't you? Tamari asked and wrapped her arms around his neck. I could easily take you back to my apartment if you want to do that before I leave. Naruto said and her face matched the color of Natsumi's hair. And no. I'll go with you. I just need to let Gara know. Tamari said and Naruto summoned a small red messenger dragon. Do you remember who Gara is, Farbos? Naruto asked. The gloomy emo repeat in sauna. Yeah I remember him. Farbo said. Right. I need you to tell Gara that Tamari is coming with me to the land of ancestors. After that, I want you to tell Ra and Drago that I'll be there for my training in about two weeks. Naruto said. You got it. Farbo said and went up in smoke. The gloomy emo repeat in sauna. Tamari asked. He may have met Gara a few times during the whole Protect Suna mission. Naruto said and summoned Comet. Yo. Comet said. I need you to take me and Tamari to the land of ancestors. Naruto said. Well, Tamari, it's nice to see you again. Comet said as they jumped on his back. Same goes for you. Tamari said. So, not many people would go to the land of ancestors for a date, Naruto. What gives? Comet asked. It's not a date. I wouldn't take Tamari somewhere like this for a date. I'll fill you in when I come for my training. Naruto said. Sure. Comet said and took off flying. I did miss you. Tamari said as she held on to Naruto. Yeah. I missed you too. Naruto said. 
Where were you? Tamari asked. I was doing an S-ranked mission. Naruto said. Oh. How was it? Tamari asked. It plays a part in why I'm going to the land of ancestors. I talked to the three tails while I was there and I wanted to find out something so he told me to go there. Naruto said and she nodded. Can you tell me what you're looking for? Tamari asked. I can't because I don't really know what I'm looking for. I just know the land of ancestors is possibly where everything started and I want to find out if it's true. Naruto said. I understand that you want peace and all, but just don't become one of those people who become so obsessed with peace that you lose your way. Maybe whatever you're looking for isn't meant to be found. Tamari said. I won't lose my way. That's what I have you, Natsumi, Anko and Kurinai for. To make sure I don't lose my way. Naruto said. Why did making a peaceful world become your dream anyway? Tamari asked. Because if I'm going to have a family one day, I'd like to raise children in a world where they won't have to become a ninja. Naruto said. In order to have a family you need a wife. Tamari said. I know, but that's why I have you. Give it a few years and we'll get married. Naruto said. Really? Tamari asked. Yeah. I have no problems marrying you unless you have a problem with it. Naruto said. No. I would love to marry you, it's just you sprung that on me. It caught me off guard. Tamari said. You brought up having a wife. I just figured I'd let you know I plan on marrying you. Naruto said. That's good to know. Tamari said and kissed his cheek. Anyway, I've been meaning to tell you something. Naruto said. What's that? Tamari asked. You can start coming to the dragon's den now if you want. Naruto said. How? I'm not a dragon summoner. Tamari said. Technically you are. You've been summoning Tatsu for like three years now and Drago had a conversation with Ra about that. Ra agreed to let you come to the dragon's den for a test of sorts. You won't be able to learn any techniques because your body can't handle draconic chakra, but they have other things they can teach you. Oh and you get your own familiarity which has already been decided. Naruto said. When are you going? Tamari asked. After I'm finished with this. I'm finishing up my training so I'll be there for five months. Naruto said. Do you know what my test is going to be? Tamari asked. No. I'm sure you'll be fine though. Naruto said. We're here. Comet said, as he landed on the ground. Naruto and Tamari looked around at the land of ancestors and it wasn't as bad as they thought it would be. Broken houses, dead land, clothes from bodies that were once there and a few weapons were on the ground. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Naruto said. This place gives me the creeps. I'm going home. Comet said and went up in smoke. So, what should we do first? Tamari asked. See if one of these houses is stable enough. It's getting late so we can rest and then start our search in the morning. Naruto said. Are you cooking? Tamari asked and had a hopeful look on her face. Yes, I'm cooking. Naruto said and they started walking around looking for a house. Cool. I wonder why everybody said this place is haunted. Other than the looks, nothing seems odd. Tamari said. I don't think it's down here that's the problem. This is just like a warzone. I feel something coming from the mountain, but also underground. Whatever is down there feels like it's alive, but dead at the same time. Naruto said. Now you're creeping me out. Tamari said. Sorry. I'll set up a barrier around the house we stay in before we go to bed. Naruto said. That would be nice. Tamari said and Naruto smirked. I never would have thought the big bad Tamari was scared of something. Naruto said and she stopped walking. Did you just make a joke? Tamari asked. Yeah. Why? Naruto asked. You never make jokes. Who are you and what did you do to Naruto? Tamari asked and opened her fan. The hell is your problem? It is me. Naruto said. Prove it. Tamari said. When you turned 15 you started wearing thongs on days you wore pants because it didn't bother you as much as panties. Naruto said and she blushed. Okay. Tamari said and Naruto stopped in front of a house. This one seems sturdy enough. Naruto said. There's one problem. Tamari said. What? Naruto asked. There isn't a bed and I didn't bring a sleeping bag. Tamari said. Why are you worried about that? You'll be sleeping with me. Naruto said. Oh right. All of this boyfriend stuff is still kind of new to me. Tamari said and walked in the house. There's candles on the walls. We can use those for light. Naruto said and skillfully lit the candles with his fire manipulation. Hey, look at this. This house belonged to a girl and she's beautiful. She couldn't have been no older than maybe 18. Tamari said. She showed him a picture of a girl who had long black hair tied in a bun and brown eyes with a pink bandana. Is there a name on it? Naruto asked. No, but that's not all. Look at this. She apparently knew a Hyuga clan member. Tamari said. 
This time showed him a picture of Aino with a pale-skinned woman who had delicate facial features. She had extremely long gray hair, possessed white clear eyes, her eyebrows were cut very short, and she wore a red shade of lipstick on her lips. Naruto mostly paid attention to her eyes which were definitely Byakugan eyes. I wonder. Naruto thought. Let me see that. Naruto said and took the picture, then read the back of it. The my dearest friend and assistant, may the world weep in pain for the loss of such a pure soul as yourself Kagayal Tsusuki. I know this lady is dead, but checking out another woman doesn't sit too well with me. Tamari said. That's not why I took the picture. I'm definitely in the right spot and this is one of the people I'm looking into. Naruto said. Who is she? Tamari asked. Kagayal Tsutsuki. Naruto said. Uh. You might want to get your eyes checked. That's clearly a Hyuga clan member. Tamari said. No. She's who the Byakugan came from. Her name is Kagayal Tsusuki, but she has another name that's really important for what I'm looking for. Naruto said. What's her other name? Tamari asked. She's Hagoromo Tsutsuki's mother, and he's known as the Sage of Six Paths to us. Naruto said and her jaw dropped. How do you know that? Tamari asked. I talked to two-tailed beasts so far, Asobu and Chimei. Otherwise known as the Three Tails and the Seven Tails. Chimei told me about Hagoromo and his brother Hamura, but Asobu filled me in on Kagayal Tsusuki. Tamari said. That's impossible. The Sage of Six Paths is a myth. Tamari said. No. He's real. The tailed beasts would know because he created them. Naruto said and she sat down. So you mean to tell me that the man everyone worships like a god is actually real? Tamari asked. Was real, but yes. Naruto said. What happened to his brother? Tamari asked and Naruto spent the next two hours filling her in on everything he was told. That's why I'm here. Naruto said. So, let me get this straight. The Sage of Six Paths is real, he created the moon, there's ten tails, he has a brother, his mother was evil, and you're the reincarnation of his son Indra. Am I missing anything? Tamari asked. Not really, but this has to stay between us. Naruto said. I think we should tell Gara and Lady Tsunade. Tamari said. We can't. This is an off-the-record mission for me, and now you because of how secret this information is. Tsunade doesn't even know what I'm actually doing here, and I want it to stay that way until I have all the facts. Naruto said and she sighed. Alright. I won't tell, but you owe me. Now, if you already know who Kagayal Tsusuki is, why did you come out here? Tamari asked. It takes two people to have children, Tamari. Naruto said. Do you think she has a lover? Tamari asked. Yes. In the discussion I picked up the vibe that she clearly must have fallen in love with somebody if she gave birth to Hagoromo and Hamura. This is where she was living before she gave birth, and I want to see if I can find anything on who she fell for. Naruto said. Maybe she didn't fall in love. Maybe she just wanted children and used the best guy she could get. Tamari said. Well, we're going to find out. I plan on searching every building in the land of ancestors, and then I'm going up to that mountain. Naruto said. What are you hoping to find if everything is true? Tamari asked. Something to help prevent whatever the Akatsuki is trying to do. They obviously have the ten tails husk already, since that's the only thing that can contain all nine tailed beasts. I have a general idea about what they're trying to do, and if it's true then the world is doomed. Naruto said. So we're basically screwed at the moment. Tamari said. Not really. As far as I know none of the tailed beasts have been captured. Naruto said. Naruto. It's Asobu. Don't speak, just listen to me. I just fought two Akatsuki members, and some of the tailed beasts have been captured. Apparently the Akatsuki managed to get some of Shukaku's chakra and sealed the two tails away a few weeks ago. They just captured me and I'm currently in some pocket dimension by a masked guy. They have sons Goku the four tails, Kakuo the five tails, Seiken the six tails and Jimei all at their base already. After they seal me away, only the eight and nine tails remain. You need to keep them safe. Good luck my friend. Isobu's boy said in Naruto's head. Naruto. Is everything alright? Your hand is bleeding. Tamari said and Naruto looked at her. Change of plans. I'm starting the search tonight. Naruto said. What happened? You spaced out for almost a minute. Tamari said and Naruto created over a hundred shadow clones. Spread out and search every nook and cranny of this village. I want you to find anything on Kagayal Tsusuki and bring it back to me. All of you have enough chakra to make another shadow clone yourself. Move out. Naruto said and the shadow clones vanished from sight. What the hell is going on? Tamari asked. The Akatsuki are way ahead in their plans than I originally thought. Naruto said. What do you mean? Tamari asked. They already have chakra from Shukaku in the statue, and they sealed the two tails a few weeks ago. 
they just captured Isobu, plus they have Son Goku the Four Tails, Kakuo the Five Tails, Seiken the Six Tails and Shimei all at their base, waiting to get sealed. It should take them a while to seal all of them away, which gives us time I guess, and can help us prepare more. I have a feeling that with so many getting captured, they'll go into hiding for a bit. Naruto said. How did they manage to do all of that without alerting anyone? It doesn't make sense. Tamari said. I don't know. Well, Kakuzu did know about the secret entrance to Taki, so he could have just walked right in with his partner and took FK by surprise. I don't know about everyone else. Naruto said. Will Gara be safe? Tamari asked. Yes. In order for them to seal Shukaku they'd have to release all the other tailed beasts, and that is the last thing they want to do. Naruto said. How do you know they were captured though? Tamari asked. Isobu somehow talked to me in my head, and that's probably why I spaced out. Naruto said and sighed. Let's clear our heads a bit. Cook some food and just talk. Since your shadow clones will be searching all night, we can eat, talk, wash up and get some sleep. We search the mountain tomorrow and if the clones find anything important, we go through it. Tamari said. You're right. Naruto said and one of his shadow clones returned. Boss. We found something. The shadow clone said. Why didn't you just disperse so I could get the information? Naruto asked and the clone just looked at him before going up in smoke. What did they find? Tamari asked. They searched the house of the leader and his name was Tenji. He had journals and pictures with Kagaya in them. They're bringing the stuff now. Naruto said and Tamari nodded. So I guess we're not having your cooking then. Tamari said and pouted. I have some bento boxes with me. Naruto said and pulled out two scrolls. Nice. I'm starving. Tamari said and one shadow clone returned carrying everything they found. This is everything we managed to find. It was like everything on Kagaya was stored in one house. The shadow clone said and went up in smoke. This is a lot of journals. At least they have everything in two piles, from Tenji having his own pile, and the others are just from random sheets that people wrote. Tamari said. We look into the journals from Tenji to start. He's the leader so he clearly would have had the most contact with her. Naruto said. Naruto and Tamari spent the next few hours going through each journal from Tenji which were surprisingly in order. The journals didn't say much, but the girl I know was mentioned quite a few times in them, and how close she was with Kagaya as time went on. They read the journals all night with no sleep until Tamari finally found something important. Hey, check it out. You were right about her falling in love. Look at this. Tamari said and gave him a journal that he read. The land of that is increasing their threats to us for more land, and I am trying to find a peaceful resolution for this problem. The stress does get to me, but whenever I return home, I can always count on Kagaya to cheer me up. Ever since she came here she has warmed up a bit and I know has really bonded with her. She has the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen and she's the bright spot to my day. We've grown extremely close and have spent several nights together. Our bond was so strong that I just passed a decree should anyone try to harm her they will be harmed. I believe we fell in love over our desire for peace in the world. Tenji. So the leader of this place was her lover apparently and the father of Hagoromo and Himura. The question now is what happened that caused her to change her ways. Naruto said. I think I found it. This is the next thing he wrote about her. Tamari said. The day was another tough day for us and quite possibly the worst day of my life. Kagaya has killed many soldiers belonging to that land and I had to betray her in order to keep the peace. I told her a few days ago that I would like to start a family and I remember the look of pure joy on her face. I truly do love her, but my love for peace outweighed my love for Kagaya. In our pursuit of apprehending Kagaya, she tried to flee with Aino which resulted in the death of Aino as we found her body filled with arrows and Kagaya was nowhere to be found. Tenji. So he betrayed her for peace and in his attempt to kill her, that Aino girl was killed. Tamari said. Yes, but I think we can safely assume that she was also pregnant at this time. So we have her lover's betrayal, Aino dying and her being pregnant all in one day. Something like that could possibly break her mentally and that possibly caused her to eat the chakra fruit. After that I'm guessing her chakra was passed down to her children who then began teaching others after some time how to use chakra. Naruto said. There's one last important piece here and it just might be the one that could have changed everything. Tamari said. The day feels different as if death is looming over my home. If this should be my last day I do not know if this will ever reach you, but Kagaya I am deeply sorry for my betrayal and being responsible for the death of Aino. I was so headstrong on wanting peace that I betrayed you without hesitation and if I could take it all back I would do so. I foolishly chose my love for peace in the world over you and after you left I realized that you became my world during your time here. If this is my last day and the last time I am to ever write, I am truly sorry for my betrayal of your trust and love that you have given me. 
I wish I could see you one last time to tell you all of this and my biggest regret is not getting your side of the story. I wish none of this would have happened and we could have had the family I told you about. Once again I am sorry Kagaya and I love you more than you can ever know. Tenji. So he just betrayed her without thinking and it ate him up for the rest of his life. He at least realized his mistake after it happened but Kagaya was already long gone and it sucks that he never got to know the two amazing sons Kagaya would have. Tamari said. Yeah. Naruto said and sealed away the letters on his arm. Would you ever give up your love for me if it meant having world peace? Tamari asked. If I have to give up my love for you then it's not really world peace. At the end of the day I'm choosing you over world peace. Besides, what Tenji said in his letter about Kagaya being his world applies to you as well. Sure I may not show it as much, but to me you are everything. Naruto said and she started to cry. You really mean that? Tamari asked. Yes. Naruto said and poked her forehead like his mom did to him as a kid plenty of times making her smile. Come on. Let's get washed up and check out that mountain. Tamari said and grabbed his hand. Do you even know where we're going? Naruto asked. Towards the stream we passed on the way here and don't worry about taking too long. It'll be worth it. Tamari said and gave him a kiss. Three hours later. After a long and heated moment with Tamari in the stream, both of them were finally dressed and currently exploring the mountain. They both had weird feelings about the mountain, so Naruto was walking with his sword in his hand while Tamari was walking with her fan on her shoulders. Eventually they made it to the top and saw a giant hole, but what they saw down there was even worse. Are these cocoons? Tamari asked as they looked around. Yeah and that feeling I told you about yesterday is coming from inside of them. Naruto said. Naruto used his sword to cut one open, only to jump back when something jumped out and attacked him. He quickly cut the head off of it and then looked at what attacked him. It was something white with human-like features and yellow eyes. Naruto looked up and saw every cocoon had opened up, then nodded at Tamari. They spent the next 10 minutes taking out each of these things while watching each other's back and teaming up with their ninjutsu until all of them were dead. Well that was something. Tamari said and Naruto was looking at the cocoons. I wonder what made these things. Naruto said. Me too, but I think they were actual humans at first. Tamari said. What makes you say that? Naruto asked. Because I highly doubt these things know how to put on pants. Tamari said and pulled out some pants that were inside of a cocoon, so Naruto started looking around. All of them have clothes inside, but this place has been abandoned for a millennium, and these clothes should have been decomposed by now. Naruto said. Not necessarily. Think about it. These things have been down here for a while, and were technically preserved all this time so the clothes were as well. Something natural didn't cause this hole to open up because nothing in the world is big enough to cause this, except for maybe an explosion, but they fraught with arrows back then. Tamari said and Naruto looked at the cocoons again. The tree did it. The ends on these cocoons are like branches. Naruto said. That's a good guess, but no ordinary tree would be able to cause something like this. Tamari said. That's because it wasn't an ordinary tree. The Shinju tree must have been here and caused this. In Tenji's journey he talked about people disappearing when they came to see this tree, since it was used as a place of worship, and I'm an idiot. Naruto said. Why? Tamari asked. Because I just remembered why the Shinju tree isn't here anymore. Naruto said. Oh no. Tamari said, as she realized what he means. Exactly. Kagai emerged with the Shinju tree and became the Ten Tails long ago. The Akatsuki have no idea what they're doing and what could possibly go wrong if their plan succeed. Naruto said. You mean Kagai returning to Earth? Tamari asked. Yeah. Naruto said. That's unlikely. I mean she's dead, remember? Hagoromo and Hamura defeated her. Tamari said. No. They sealed her away and created the moon in the process. Kagai is technically still alive because of the Ten Tails husk, which is also known as the statue. Hagoromo stripped the Ten Tails of its chakra creating the Tailed Beasts, and now the Akatsuki want to seal the Tailed Beasts back into the statue. Naruto said. So, Kagaya is likely to be reborn if they were to succeed. Tamari said. Exactly, but I feel as if we're missing something. It can't be that simple. There's another variable to this, and Kagaya apparently didn't leave anything behind. Naruto said. Let me guess, you're not going to stop until you find out what it is. Tamari said. I am for now. I need to start my training and you're coming with me, remember? Naruto asked. Oh yeah. Tamari said and Naruto summoned Farbos. Yo. Farbo said. I need you to take us back to the den. Naruto said. Sure thing. Farbo said and all three of them went up in smoke. Dragon's den. Wow. This place is beautiful. I thought it would be like a cave or something surrounded by lava. Tamari said as she looked around. We do have that here if you would like to see it. Catalina said as she landed in front of them. 
Nice to see you again, Catalina. Naruto said. Likewise, I'm assuming young Tamari's here for her test. Catalina said. Yes. Is Ra able to train me? Naruto asked. Yes. He's been talking about resuming your training and was about to send a dragon to come grab you. Go to him while I take Tamari to Drago for her test. Catalina said. Good luck. Naruto said and vanished. How bad will I hurt after this test? Tamari asked. You'll be fine. You can't use Draconic Chakra so your test will be a lot easier than Naruto's. Hop on. Catalina said and then flew off when Tamari was on her head. While all of this was going on, the Akatsuki were nearly finished sealing Isobu away and were completely oblivious to the ramifications of what they were going to cause. Naruto was training hard now with Ra, Tamari was about to take her test to begin her training, and Natsumi was putting the finishing touches on her ultimate. Things were about to get tough for Naruto and Natsumi, as they were both about to get fully tested by two of the strongest shinobi known to man. Chapter 19. Preparations and Sage Training. Time went by after Naruto and Tamari visited the Land of Ancestors, where they discovered a bit about Kagaya, and they both trained really hard so far. It's only been three months, but each of them grew a lot so far, and Ra predicted Naruto would be done with his training in two more months. Tamari was being trained by Catalina who was teaching her how to use water and fire ninjutsu to give her a more diverse arsenal. While Tamari was focusing on learning her water and fire ninjutsu, Naruto taught her the shadow clone to help her speed up her training a bit. Tamari also signed the dragon contract, but she was unable to use the draconic chakra as her body rejected the chakra. She was able to learn some moves, but not the ones Naruto knew that required the draconic chakra. Tamari's familiar was none other than Skyrus who personally chose to become her familiar when it was discussed about her signing the contract. Itsumi over the last three months has been on missions non-stop since Naruto was off doing his training, and she's been learning more from Jiraiya. While she was doing missions, she managed to kill Kakuzu of the Akatsuki with her new ninjutsu that she called Wind Style. Rasen Shuriken and his partner Haiden was killed by Shikamaru. After using the Wind Style. Rasen Shuriken, Natsumi immediately got to work on making a water version of the, and she had some success creating it, but she couldn't keep it stable enough just yet. Naruto so far over the past three months did grow, but he had a lot on his mind, and most of it was due to him finding out Kagaya a bit. While he didn't agree with how she wanted to enslave the world for peace, he couldn't help but think that there was a lot more to her story than her being some evil tyrant. Although he didn't hope it would happen, Naruto decided if Kagaya was reborn, then he would somehow talk to her about her actions and why she came here. He brought this up to Tamari once, and she said he was crazy for even thinking about attempting something so reckless, but she would support him. His training with Ra has paid off quite a bit as he was now faster and had more power behind his punches. He was also learning how to finally do the Horation since he had time, and thanks to his understanding of it, he was picking it up very easily. While Naruto was training with Ra, he gained even better control over his draconic chakra, to the point that it was almost second nature to him, and his body didn't strain as much as before. While training, Naruto managed to combine this with his draconic chakra and created the Rasengan Flash, which had enough power to destroy anything in its path up to two miles. He was mainly focused on learning the dragon techniques while he was there, except for the Horatian and different types of the Rasengan, because he had a pretty good or great portion of ninjutsu at his disposal. He was currently sitting under a waterfall meditating while Tamari and Comet watched him. How long has he been like this? Tamari asked. Like 10 hours. It's funny because he should have ran out of draconic chakra by now. Comet said. Maybe his reserves grew. He's always had large chakra reserves and only Natsumi had more chakra than him in his village. Tamari said. I understand that, but from what I was told, every time somebody does the ritual their draconic chakra reserves don't grow or at least they shouldn't grow. Comet said. Naruto didn't go through any ritual. Tamari said. That's impossible. He has the draconic chakra. Comet said. Actually, it's not impossible. Catalina said as she landed next to them. What do you mean? Comet asked. The reason why Naruto was born with the draconic chakra is because his mother went through the ritual when she was at least four weeks pregnant. The draconic chakra must have been absorbed into him as well before he was born. It's the only logical explanation that myself, Drago and Ra could come up with. Catalina said. So if he were to have kids, would they be born with the draconic chakra as well? Comet asked. No. Catalina said. He's a rare case then. Tamari said and Catalina nodded. Correct. Catalina said and they heard the water explode. Where'd he go? Comet asked. He's quite fast on his own if I can't even see him move. I don't even want to think about how fast he's going to be when he completes the Horation. Catalina thought. What are you all doing here? Naruto asked as he appeared next to Tamari. We were watching you. Tamari said. Right. 
Anyway, do any of you mind explaining something to me? Naruto asked. What is it? Catalina asked. During my meditation I kept seeing me versus Awaji, and I pictured combining the Chidori with the Rasengan. Did that really happen? Naruto asked and they were all silent until Catalina spoke up. Yes, but it was Doomer when he took over your body. It nearly destroyed the entire exam stadium. Catalina said. I see. Naruto said. You're thinking about combining them now, aren't you? Tamari asked. It wouldn't hurt to try. Naruto said and Tamari rolled her eyes. What is it with you and Itsumi about destructiveness? Tamari asked, and he shrugged. I got it from my mother and she must get it from hers. Naruto said and Drago landed next to Naruto. Ah. Yes. Sayori was quite destructive indeed. In fact the volcano that we have was caused by her. Drago said. How? Tamari asked. Yeah. As far as I know my mother didn't have an earth chakra nature to even create lava. Naruto said. There are many things your mother could do and creating lava was one of them. Now, she didn't have the lava like you think, but she did have a very powerful earth chakra nature, and one day she was going through her hormonal stages due to pregnancy. She requested a fight with me, and she's the reason I have this scar over my eye. I nearly hit her stomach on accident and she went full rage mode on me. The result of her rage was the creation of that volcano. Drago said. Okay. I understand she had a strong earth chakra nature, but that doesn't explain making lava without any fire. Comet said. Lava is basically melted rock beneath the earth's surface. That's why people with the lava need fire and earth because the fire essentially melts the earth's chakra nature. Naruto said. I knew that. I was just making sure you knew. Comet said. No, you didn't. Naruto said. Anyway, is the volcano still active? Tamari asked. Only on Sayori's birthday. That's the one time a year it is active, and we all gather to celebrate or pay our respects to her on her birthday. You may have heard rumors of her being so strong that she was almost as strong as the fourth. Catalina said. I did. Naruto said. Those rumors are true. I know for a fact she could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tsunade and survive. She might have even won. Your mother was actually the first Ichiha candidate for the position of Hokage, but she declined the offer, and Fugaku was selected as a candidate, but ultimately lost to your father. Catalina said. So if Naruto was to face his mother right now, who do you think would win? Tamari asked. Naruto would easily win. Heck, he could take on Lady Tsunade right now and win if wanted to, but that's only if he fights seriously. Drago said. Have you ever fought seriously? Comet asked. Only against Drago and Ra. Naruto said. You mean to tell me that you've been kicking my ass and you weren't even serious? Comet asked. Pretty much. Naruto said. I hate you. Comet said. Sure you do. Naruto said. If you can do that, I wonder how strong Itsumi is. It's like the two of you are always neck and neck. When one of you grows stronger, so does the other. Tamari said. Itsumi should be stronger than Sanadi as well, but weaker than me. If she knew sage mode then she'd be on equal terms or stronger than me. Naruto said. So can you defeat the pervert? Tamari asked. Possibly. He knows how to use sage mode, so I don't know. It might come down to a tie between us. Naruto said. If this sage mode is so powerful, why is it that so few people know it? Tamari asked. Because sage mode requires very large chakra reserves, and your body still needs to be able to handle the increase in power. There's also the risk of turning into a stone statue of the animal you're learning from if you absorb too much natural energy. Sage mode is all about balance between your own chakra and natural energy. There's only been a handful of sage users in shinobi history, starting with the sage of six paths. Drago said. Wow. Who are the other users of Sage Mode? Tamari asked. Ureya of the Sanin, Minato Namikas and Hashirama Senju. There's only been four users of Sage Mode with Natsumi potentially being the fifth person. Catalina said. So, is there a Dragon Sage Mode? Tamari asked. No. We dragons do not use Sage Mode as it is not necessary. Our Draconic Chakra can easily match a Sage Mode user, since it basically gives us the same advantages of Sage Mode. Drago said and then a spy dragon appeared in front of them. Did you find anything, Kaze? Naruto asked. I have discovered something, yes. I was able to keep myself attached to Dadara as he returned to the base, and their leader is going after Natsumi soon. Kaze said. How soon? Naruto asked. Most likely whenever they get word that you're not in the village. As far as they're concerned, you're still around and you're a threat to them. However, there's something off about the leader's eyes. Kaze said. What do you mean? Naruto asked. I can feel a lot of power radiating from them, but they're different. His eyes were purple with a ripple pattern inside of them. Kay said. Are you absolutely sure that's what you saw? Drago asked. Yes. 
I don't know what it is, but I can tell Natsumi will have her work cut out for her. Kei said. Goes to the Hidden Leaf Village and tells Tsunade that Natsumi needs to begin her sage training immediately. Drago said. Of course. Oh and Itachi will be looking for you soon, Naruto. Kei said and went up in smoke. What was that about? Tamari asked. Adelina, take Tamari and start the last portion of her training. Naruto, come with me. Drago said and Naruto jumped on his head. Are these eyes really that powerful? Naruto asked as Dragon flew away. Powerful is an understatement. These eyes are the most powerful to ever exist and if they're back, then things just got even more complicated. Drago said. Complicated how? Naruto asked. Ra will be able to explain it better than I will. Drago said and landed at the temple where Naruto trains. Drago, Naruto. I was not expecting you for a few more days. Ra said. Change of plans. Those eyes have returned. Drago said. Which eyes? Ra asked. Purple eyes with a ripple pattern. Drago said. I see. Ra said. What eyes are you talking about? Naruto asked. The. Ra said. What is that? I've never heard of that. Naruto said. That's because like the Sage of Six Paths, it was also a myth. The Sage of Six Paths was the first person to ever have this on Earth. It is said that in times of disorder, the one who wields will become a god of creation to calm the world or a god of destruction, who will reduce everything to nothing. Ra said. So, this person who supposedly has this is basically like a god or something. Naruto asked. Yes. I'll explain more throughout your training, but for now it's time for me to teach you the final two techniques from us dragons. Ra said. Are you sure he's ready for those? Drago asked. Yes. He's more than ready. Ra said. Ready for what? Naruto asked. The final two techniques I will be teaching you are called Dragon Thunder and Dragon Fist. There's two months left on your vacation, but I'm sure you can get the two of them down in less time, even without your shadow clones. Your control over the Draconic Chakra is now on par with that of an actual dragon. Now, let us begin. Ra said. Anoha. The Leaf Village was on high alert with the threat of the Akatsuki around and then learned that the Akatsuki had nearly captured all of the tailed beasts. Tsunade sent out a team to search for any Akatsuki members in the Land of Fire. After detailing the events of the mission Tsunade gave the team a few days off. Itsumi opted not to spend as much time with Hiroshi because she was feeling strange. Not strange in a way that something was wrong with her or anything like that, but she just had a feeling something wasn't right. She hasn't seen Jiraiya since he came back and as far as she knew, Jiraiya didn't have anything planned. She was just laying in her bed with her face buried in her pillow, and then there was a knock on her window. She looked to the right and it was none other than Kakashi. Oh. It's you. Hey, Kakashi-sensei. Natsumi said. Lady Tsunade has summoned you. Kakashi said. Hokage Tower. Chief Toad and Gamakichi. What gives? Natsumi asked. Yo. What's up Natsumi? Gamakichi asked. What are you guys doing here? What did something happen? Natsumi asked. Well actually uh. Gamakichi keep your trap shut. Let the boss and Sanadi handle it. They know what they're doing. Gamabunta said. That's weird. What's going on here? Natsumi asked. Don't worry. Let's go. Kakashi said. Tsunade's office. Natsumi and Kakashi arrived at the office and after knocking, they heard Tsunade tell them to come in. Natsumi entered and closed the door, then saw Sakura, Shizune and four other toads in the office. So this is Jiraiya boy's student, is it? A green toad asked. This is Natsumi Uzumaki Namikas. The child of prophecy you spoke of. Tsunade said. What's with the geezer frog? Who is he? Natsumi asked. Pipe down. Watch your mouth, Natsumi. He is one of the two great sages of Mount Mayaboku, Lord Fukasaku. He traveled all the way here just so he could speak with you. Tsunade said. Well to be more accurate, I'm a great sage toad, but never mind that. It doesn't matter. Answer me this. Are you really a Jiraiya boy student or aren't you? Fukasaku asked. Boy. Boy don't treat the pervy sage like a kid. Who does this geezer frog think he is anyway? Natsumi asked. I told you already. Watch your mouth. Tsunade said. Natsumi. He's the one who taught the sage to Lord Jiraiya. He's Jiraiya's master. Shizune said and Fukasaku started to laugh. So you call him the pervy sage. I've never heard a more fitting name for Jiraiya boy. Fukasaku said. What does this geezer sage want? What did he come so far to talk to me about? Natsumi asked. I'm not exactly sure where to begin. Let me see. I suppose the most important thing is. I'm afraid Jiraiya boy has died in battle. Fukasaku said and Natsumi's heart sank. What? Natsumi asked. I know that this is very sudden. So I understand if you don't believe me. 
for some time now rumors have been circulating that the leader of the Akatsuki was operating out of the village hidden in the rain, so Jiraiya Boy went there in person to verify whether these rumors were true. Jiraiya Boy encountered Pain, the leader of the Akatsuki. However, Pain was a former student of Jiraiya Boy's from many many years ago. Fukasaku said. He was his student. What do you mean by that? Sakura asked. I don't know the particulars, but Jiraiya Boy called him Nagato. Fukasaku said. That goes way back to a time during the chaos of the Third Great Ninja War. The Hidden Rain Village became a battlefield. Jiraiya took some war orphans under his wing. Who would have imagined those kids? Sanadi said. But to defeat a shinobi as powerful as Jiraiya. How did this pain accomplish such a feat? Kakashi asked. It was because pain possesses them. Fukasaku said. What did you say? Kakashi asked. Rinnegan? Sakura asked. It's an ocular said to have been possessed by the father of all shinobi, the sage of six paths, but I believe that it was nothing more than a legend. Shizun said. The fabled ocular, the. Its power is supposedly beyond anything you could imagine, but there's more. There were six of them that possessed that ocular. Fukasaku said. There were six of them. How can that even be possible? Kakashi asked. I don't know. Perhaps there's some trick behind it. I believe that Jiraiya boy discovered the secret behind the six of them in that final terrible battle. Even after he had been finished by pain and he knew the end was near, Jiraiya boy left a message before collapsing. This is his message. Fukasaku said and removed his robe revealing a code on his back. It's a code. Shizun said. I'm sure he did this to prevent pain from catching on. That's everything I know about Jiraiya boy's efforts. Fukasaku said. I wonder what he was trying to tell us. Maybe we could decode this. Then hopefully we'll understand. Sanadi said. You let him go. Is that right, mom? Mitsumi asked. That's right. Sanadi said. Why would you ever let him do something so risky? You knew Pervy Sage better than anybody, mom. How could you send him somewhere so dangerous alone? Mitsumi asked. Stop it, Mitsumi. You of all people ought to know Lady Tsunadi's feelings. Kakashi said and Tsunadi thought about her last time seeing Jiraiya. Flashback. It's too dangerous. Tsunadi said. I'm one of the legendary Sanin. You know what that means just as much as I do. You were so beautiful back then and now you're a 50-something granny, but it does pain me to see how you hold all the memories of your lost friends and loved ones inside that ample bus son of yours. As you know, the number will only continue to rise. Well then, we'll simply have to keep our emotions in check. The job we must give to ourselves now is to set examples and aid the next generation, Tsunadi. To achieve that I'd gladly risk my life. Wisdom is the one thing that makes growing old worth it. Jiraiya said. And flashback. Damn it. Mitsumi said and started to leave. Mitsumi, wait. Where are you going? Sakura asked. If the pervy sage had been the, he wouldn't have let you take a risk like that. Never. If you really loved him as much as you claim you do, then you would have tried harder to keep him from going. I hate you. Mitsumi said and slammed the door. Mitsumi. Sakura said. Enough, Sakura. Don't. Just let her be for now. Tsunadi said. But, Mladi. Sakura said. My apologies, Lord Fukasaku. I'll arrange for Natsumi too. No need. That's quite alright, but about that child of prophecy vision I mentioned earlier. I can see that this child truly loved and admired Jiraiya boy. It makes me hope more than anything that she is the child of prophecy. Fukasaku said. Natsumi. As Natsumi was walking aimlessly through the village she started to think back on her times with Jiraiya. She stopped walking when he heard the noise of a popsicle breaking in half. She looked up and leaves blew past her face and into the sky. She sighed and just went to the training grounds. She sat down and then started to cry. She felt like everything was just ripped from her since Jiraiya was gone. She didn't know how much time passed as he sat there, but it was now dark outside and she showed no signs of moving. She sat on the ground staring at nothing as her eyes were a dull violet instead of her vibrant violet as they usually were. Eventually she stood up and started to go through her frog kumite stances that Jiraiya showed her unaware that Tsunadi had arrived to talk to her. The further into her stances she got, the more tears fell down from her face, as well as Tsunadi's who saw a ghost of Jiraiya appear next to Natsumi and start going through the stances with her. Natsumi did this until she passed out from exhaustion and Tsunadi watched her the entire time. Few days later. I have to admit, Natsumi girl, I wasn't expecting to hear from you for a few more days. Fukasaku said. I know. Let's just say I've had some clarity about recent events. Natsumi said. I see. So, what is it that you need? Fukasaku asked, but already knew what she needed. I think you already know why I summoned you. It's time I trained with the toads like Pervy Sage. 
If I'm going to beat whoever it is that the Akatsuki send after me, then I'll need to be as strong as him or stronger. So I'm asking you. Please, will you train me like you did Pervy Sage? Mitsumi asked. No. I will train you better than I did Jiraiya boy. My training was not good enough for him to win his battle, so I must train you even harder. I can tell you are close to his level and strength already and that you're stronger than Sanadi. With my training, you will surpass Jiraiya boy and defeat the one known as Pain. Fukasaku said. I can't believe she's already surpassed me. It wasn't that long ago when she surpassed Kakashi. Tsunade thought and Mitsumi summoned a small red toad. Msuk, you'll be staying here with Granny Tsunade to relay any message only if I need to come back. Mitsumi said. No problem, Mitsumi. Kasuk said. Well, young tadpoles. Are you ready to begin your training? Fukasaku said. I wouldn't have asked if I wasn't ready. Mitsumi said and Fukasaku laughed. That's exactly what Jiraiya boy said to me when he first started to train under me. Fukasaku said. Mitsumi, I know I don't need to tell you this, but listen to everything Fukasaku says and don't let your Yuzumaki temper get the best of you. Tsunade said. You've got nothing to worry about. This is me we're talking about. Mitsumi said. Yeah and that's what worries me. You may have matured a lot, but you still do have your moments when your temper gets the best of you. Tsunade said. Gee. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Mitsumi mumbled and Tsunade laughed. Don't you want to say goodbye to Hiroshi? Tsunade asked. We said goodbye to each other for six hours last night. Mitsumi said and Tsunade's jaw dropped. Mitsumi girl, it's time to train. Fukasaku said and Mitsumi nodded. I'll see you when I get back mom. Make sure the village stays in one piece while I'm gone. Mitsumi said and then went up in smoke. Good luck, Mitsumi. Tsunade said. Mount Momboku. Whoa. What is this place? Mitsumi asked. This is Mount Momboku. The home of the toads and where you will be training. Fukasaku told him. So, what exactly are we training in? Mitsumi asked. I will train you to become the next toad sage. You will learn how to properly use nature chakra and cooperate it into your attacks. First, has Jureya boy taught you anything that belongs to the toads? Fukasaku asked. Over the last few months of training he had me meditate a lot. He taught me the tojutsu form he uses. Mitsumi said and did the forms Jureya showed her. The frog kumite. That's good. You're already ahead of training, so the sparing part should be a bit easier. Now, in order to achieve sage mode, you must remain absolutely still in order to be one with nature and balance the natural energy with your own physical and spiritual energies. This training will be the hardest you have ever done. I'll apply some oil to your body so your body can passively start gathering natural energy so you can get a taste of how it feels. After that we will begin training and gathering nature chakra on your own. If you gather too much natural energy, then you will turn into a toad statue. Fukasaku said and pointed to toad statues around them. I suddenly don't want to do this. Mitsumi said. Don't worry. I have a special staff that I'll hit you with to knock the nature chakra out of you if you're gathering too much. It will reverse any transformations before they become permanent and you turn to stone. Fukasaku said. Alright. Let's get started. Mitsumi said. First, you see that waterfall over there? Fukasaku asked. Yeah. What about it? Mitsumi asked. I want you to go over there and meditate in front of it. You still have anger and hatred in your heart. I do not want anything holding you back, so you must release that anger, and once you do, we will begin training. Fukasaku said. Mitsumi didn't say anything and just nodded. She walked over to the waterfall and just sat down to begin his meditation. She knew she would have to deal with the anger and hatred in her heart one day since she can't become one if she hates the village. Fukasaku watched on as Natsumi easily relaxed and started to meditate. This brought a smile onto his face since no one has ever been able to get meditation down so easily. You've groomed a fine pupil, Jiraiya boy. I'll do everything I can to make sure she continues down the right path. Fukasaku thought. Hey, geezer toad sage. How long is this sage mode training going to take? Natsumi asked. It shouldn't take long. We're going to speed up your progress a lot faster with the oil, and then once you're able to absorb natural energy for sage mode, I'll teach you how to properly use the frog kumite and how to incorporate sage chakra into your ninjutsu. Are you in a rush to get back? Fukasaku asked. Sort of. I mean Naruto is basically MI and we're the strongest in the village. Not that I'm doubting anybody else, but I just feel a lot better if one of us were in the village. I don't want the Akatsuki to show up while we're not there. Natsumi said. If the Akatsuki show up, Kasuk will return to deliver the message for your return. Fukasaku said. I guess, but still. Mom is always stuck behind the desk, Bushy Brow Sensei is gone on a mission, Kakashi is there, and those are the next three after me and Naruto. Mitsumi said. Everything will be fine. 
Just finish your meditation and then we will begin. Fukasaku said. If you say so. Natsumi said and started meditating again. Two months later. The sage training for Natsumi began and it wasn't hard for her to be able to see the natural energy. She was close to mastering sage mode after two weeks, but she couldn't properly balance the natural energy, so Fukasaku had to constantly hit her with his special staff that she quickly learned hurt a lot. The hardest part other than the balancing of natural energy was when Natsumi had to meditate on a board while it was on top of a pointy rock. It took her three days to finally get it down. Currently she is still balancing while gathering natural energy. Fukasaku could see and feel the natural energy going into Natsumi and knew she was going to master it now. After a few seconds a large amount of natural energy went into Natsumi and she managed to keep it well balanced. Her appearance changed around his eye. She has yellow eye rides and toad-like pupils with orange pigmentation around her eyes. A bird landed on her shoulder and caused her to lose her balance on the board, sending her crashing to the ground, but she realized it didn't hurt that much. That actually didn't really hurt. Natsumi said and Fukasaku landed in front of her. Exactly. That's because of sage mode. Your body has become activated in a whole new way. Now that you've mastered sage mode and natural energy, we have come to one final step. Fukasaku said. We're not done yet. I've been here for like two months already. Natsumi said. No. It's a type of sparring that sages perform using sage chakra. Now, I will pick up where Jiraiya boy left off and teach you how to properly use frog kumite. When using frog kumite, the natural energy you've gathered to create chakra will surround you in an aura of that same natural energy. This aura will act as an extension of your body and cannot be seen by anyone other than those who have trained in. By utilizing the aura, you will be able to extend the range and force of your physical attacks. Strikes that seemingly or would normally miss will actually make contact with the target. Only users of sage mode can't see or sense this aura's extension. Nothing else, not even the Rinnegan can't see it. It's how Jiraiya boy was able to fend himself off against pain. Fukasaku said. So this is a spar using only what pervy sage started to teach me? Naruto asked. Precisely and since you already know quite a bit about frog kumite, it shouldn't take us that long. By the end of the day you'll be completely finished with your sage training. Fukasaku said. Mitsumi and Fukasaku both got into the same stance and after a brief stare off, they jumped into action. It was clear from the start that Natsumi was still relatively new at the Tajutsu style, but she slowly got the hang of it and managed to knock Fukasaku down a few times. They spared like this for the rest of the day from sunrise to sunset. Natsumi also trained on her own and made great progress. Her Rasen Shuriken was finally complete and she could now throw it. She worked on incorporating Sage Chakra into her and she made them more destructive than what they originally were. She also found out that while she was in sage mode, her wood was a thousand times more powerful than it usually is. Currently she was in the middle of eating dinner with Fukasaku after a long day of training. Natsumi girl. You're able to manipulate chakra and have mastered the basics of frog kumite in the sage arts. Now, I have one final thing I must tell you. Fukasaku said. What would that be? Natsumi asked. This is about the risks of using sage mode. Once you grasp the risks that are involved with it, then you can exploit sage mode to its fullest extent. As you've already figured out, you can't use sage mode for long periods of time. Five minutes is the most you can use it for. Also, to gather the amount of natural energy needed for sage mode, you must stay completely still, and that makes it useless when you're already in the heat of battle. Fukasaku said. I'm sure you have a solution to this already. I mean you wouldn't teach something like this if you didn't have a way to eliminate the risks. Natsumi said. Right again my girl. All that you and I would have to do is merge our bodies together, then it'll be fine. Fukasaku said and jumped on her shoulder, but he was sent flying off of her. What the hell was that? Natsumi asked. It seems as if the Nine Tails is keeping me from merging with your body. If we cannot merge our bodies together, then you will not be able to use sage mode to its fullest extent. Fukasaku said and Natsumi sighed before she perked up. I have an idea. Natsumi said. What would that be? Fukasaku asked. My shadow clones. I can leave some around during a fight and have them gather nature energy. Once my sage mode ends, I can release a shadow clone and instantly enter sage mode from the nature chakra they gathered. Natsumi said. That can work. However, we need to know the exact amount of shadow clones you can maintain while fighting as they gather natural energy. Fukasaku said. Then let's have a spar. I'll create some shadow clones to start collecting natural energy as we fight and I'll increase the number of shadow clones after every spar. I'll increase them until I've reached my limit," Natsumi said. Fukasaku nodded and after Natsumi created a shadow clone, they began the spar. Natsumi kept on surprising Fukasaku each time they fought because she would just get better each time. 
they spared for over an hour and discovered Natsumi had a limit of six shadow clones she could use to gather nature energy while she's fighting. As they were sparring, two Akatsuki members were preparing to face their opponents very soon. Dragon's Den. Two months went by and Naruto managed to learn both that Ra wanted to teach Got the down quickly, but he realized at his current level in there for him to use the Dragon Fist, he would have to use up every ounce of Draconic Chakra that he had in his body, so if he was in a fight and he knew he would need the Dragon Fist, he'd have to use his regular Chakra until he's ready to use the Dragon Fist. The Dragon Thunder mainly worked if somebody appeared behind him as it allowed him to grow spikes made of Chakra from his back and electrocute them with his Lightning Chakra. His Horatian training was complete, but it was not ready to be used in battle like Minato and Taburama Senju were able to. Naruto's training with Ra caused him to put on a bit more muscle, and due to him not keeping up with it, his hair grew so long that it stopped just under his shoulder blades. Tamari wasn't a fan of his long hair and constantly asked him to cut it short, but he always said he'd do it once his training was over. Tamari's training with Catalina also made her skills grow tremendously, especially her close-range skills, since Catalina always fought up close when she switched to her human form. In terms of skill, Tamari could possibly take on an entire squad of and still have some more fight left in her, which is a huge step considering where she was before Catalina started to train her. Naruto, come here. Tamari said and twirled a kunai on her finger. What is it? Naruto asked. Sit down. Tamari said and forced him to the ground. Not that I'm against it, but shouldn't we do this somewhere more private? Naruto asked and her face turned red. That's not what this is. Tamari yelled. Then what's the problem? Naruto asked and she grabbed his hair. I'm tired of seeing your hair like this. I'm cutting it back to how you usually have it. Tamari said and started cutting his hair. I don't get why you hate my long hair. It hasn't done anything to you. Naruto said. Because it doesn't fit you. Tamari said. Doesn't stop you from playing it in. Naruto mumbled. What was that? Tamari asked. You heard me. Naruto said and her eye twitched. Can you at least pretend to be scared of me just once? Tamari asked. Why would I do that? Naruto asked and she sighed. Never mind. How do you think Natsumi is doing right now? Tamari asked. Depends on where she's at. If she's on a mission she's probably in her Hokage mode as she calls it, and if she's in the village, then she's either shopping with Tsunade and Shizun, or she has Hiroshi over spending some quality time together. Naruto said. I just noticed something. Natsumi tends to call Tsunade her mother, but you don't. Why is that? Tamari asked. Because Natsumi never had a mother figure in her life and Tsunade is our godmother. It's only fitting that Natsumi calls her that. As for me, I already know who my mother is and I can't see myself calling somebody else mom. Naruto said. Then why don't you ever hang out with them? I'm sure they do little family gatherings. Tamari said. I do, but it's very rare. I've never been one for get-togethers or anything like that. Naruto said. I know that, but I still think you should spend more time with them and get to know them. Tamari said. I'd rather not. Most of the time it's them going to the hot springs getting massages and talking about the latest gossip. I'll pass on that one. Besides, I was close with Jiraiya, so that should mean something, right? Naruto asked. I have never once seen you interact with Jiraiya. Tamari said. Because he's always out doing spy missions. It's usually through a messenger toter dragon when we speak, and it's just about life or stuff around the shinobi world. Naruto said. When was the last time you spoke to him? Tamari asked. Like four months ago, but that's usually how it goes. I should get a message from him within a few days or so. Naruto said. I guess. There. All done. Tamari said. How do I look? Naruto asked. Like your father with darker eyes and black hair. Tamari said. I guess it can't be helped. What about your hair? It's gotten pretty long as well. Naruto said, as her hair was nearly at her waist and she tossed him the kunai. Cut it for me. Tamari said and sat down. I don't understand why you don't like long hair. Naruto said. Because I don't want people to pull it. I keep it long enough to do my four pigtails, and that's it. Tamari said. I pull your hair all the time. Naruto said and she blushed. That's different and you know it. Tamari said. It's still pulling your hair. Naruto said. Whatever. Are you nervous about fighting Itachi? Tamari said. Not really. I knew this was coming the moment Sasuke died. Naruto said. How will you even know when and where to find him? Tamari asked. I'm sure he already has a way to contact me when it's time. Naruto said. I hope you didn't forget that I'm coming with you. Tamari said. I'm done and I didn't forget. You and Anko constantly remind me that you're both coming with me. Naruto said. Just in case Kisum tries to interfere or if another Akatsuki member shows up. Tamari said. 
You do realize that you and Anko might now be enough to handle Kisum, right? Naruto asked and she narrowed her eyes. Are you calling me weak? Tamari asked. No. Kisum is known as the tailless tailed beast for a reason. That sword he has absorbs chakra and constantly gives it to Kisum. As long as he has that sword it's difficult to get to him. Naruto said. Then all we have to do is get the sword away from him. Tamari said. Easier said than done. Naruto said. We can do it. Anyway, let's go to sleep. We have to head back in the morning. Tamari said and he helped her up. Let's go. Naruto said and vanished. I hate that stupid. Tamari said and went up in a swirl of water. Hinoha. Lady Tsunade, it's been months since both Naruto and Natsumi have been in the village. Where are they exactly? Shizune asked and Tsunade sighed. You know where Natsumi is already and Naruto should be training with the dragons. He took some leave for about five months to finish his training and actually they should both be back soon. Tsunade said. Do you think Natsumi is ready to face the one who took down Master Jiraiya? Shizune asked. I believe in her. Believe it or not, when she comes back she'll possibly be even closer to Naruto. Sage mode is no joke and I highly doubt that's the only thing she's worked on in two months. Tsunade said. What about Naruto? Shizune asked. I know for a fact that he's stronger than me. Tsunade said. How can you tell? Shizune asked. He's a lot stronger than his mother was at his age and she wasn't that good until she reached 20. I dare say he might be close to stepping into the same territory as my grandfather. Actually, from stories my grandfather told me, Naruto is stronger than Madara when he was his age and Natsumi isn't too far behind. Tsunade said. I wonder why the two of them never actually fought outside of her test when they returned. Shizune said. I don't know. I really don't want to see them fight. Tsunade said. Why not? Shizune asked. Because I'd prefer if my village was left in one piece. Tsunade said and there was a knock on the door. Were you expecting someone? Shizune asked. No. Come in. Tsunade said and the door opened revealing Karen. Karen? What are you doing here? Shizune asked. Um. We have a problem. Karen said. What problem? Tsunade asked. The body that you wanted me to check out that Jurea's toads brought to us is really bad news. Karen said. How? Tsunade asked. Those black rods in its body aren't just some fancy accessories. They're like transmitters and I detected some small amounts of chakra coming from them. Karen said. Wait. This is a fake body? Shizune asked. Yes and I'm nearly certain that. Karen was interrupted by a puff of smoke going off in the room. Natsumi is back bitches. Natsumi yelled and everyone just looked at her. Continue, Karen. Tsunade said and Natsumi's eye twitched. Right. Anyway whoever was controlling that body can definitely detect where it is and they could possibly be on their way here. Karen said. Hello, does anybody want to hear what I have to say, it's really important. Natsumi said. What is it? Tsunade asked. I figured out the coded message Kirby Sage left behind. Natsumi said. What did it say? Tsunade asked. I said the real one isn't among them. Which goes in coalition with Karen's point that the body is being controlled. If that's one of the bodies of pain, then Pervy Sage never fought the real pain. Whenever he or she comes to fight me, he'll probably have those same bodies he used to fight Pervy Sage, but he or she would have to be close enough to control them. The only problem is that I'll have to take out the main bodies first before I find the original. Natsumi said. How do you plan on doing that? Shizune asked. Leave that to me, but I will say that I'm going to leave the village soon to fight whoever is coming after me. Natsumi said. Why? Karen asked. Do you want the village to get destroyed? I plan on going all out. Natsumi said and another puff of smoke went off. Yo. Naruto said, as he appeared with Tamari. Where the hell have you been? Natsumi yelled. Training. Naruto said. Would you like a test? Tsunade asked. No offense, but you're not on my level. Naruto said. Care to put your money where your mouth is? Tsunade asked. Sure. When I win, you have to give the title to Natsumi. Naruto said. I like that deal. Take it. Natsumi said and Tsunade just looked at them. W well, Natsumi still has a lot of maturing to do before she can take the seat. I'll have to decline. Tsunade said. He called my bluff. Tsunade thought and looked at Tamari. Tamari, you seem to be doing well. Shizune said. I am. It's good to see you again. Tamari said. Naruto, did you find anything on your little trip? Tsunade asked. No. I didn't find anything. Naruto said and a crow with a Sharingan landed by the window. Is that a crow with a Sharingan? Karen asked. Yeah. Naruto said and his Sharingan activated making the crow fly away. What was that? Tsunade asked. It's time. Naruto said and summoned Tatsu. Yo. Tatsu said. 
I need you to get Anko. Bring her here and tell her it's time. Naruto said and Tatsu left. What do you mean? Shizun asked. We have a problem. Karen said. What? Nitsumi asked. Six identical chakra signatures are on their way here and they're moving fast. It's the same chakra I detected from the body. Karen said. How far out are they? Nitsumi asked and closed her eyes. Ten miles. Karen said and Nitsumi entered sage mode. Sage mode. Naruto thought. Good. I'm going. They're going to pay for what they did to pervy sage. Nitsumi said. What did they do to him? Naruto asked. He's dead. He tried to fight the leader, but he was overwhelmed and the person has something called the uses multiple bodies to fight and now it's time for some revenge. Nitsumi said. Don't fight for revenge. Keep a clear mind through the fight and you'll be perfectly fine. Naruto said and she nodded. Don't lose to Itachi. Nitsumi said and gave him a hug before vanishing. Maybe she should have some backup. Shizun said. She'll be fine. Naruto said. How can you be so sure? Karen asked. Because she wouldn't die before she became one. Naruto said and Anko appeared in the room. I'm here. Anko said and Naruto looked at her. Are you alright? Naruto asked. What do you mean? Anko asked. You're wearing a black t-shirt and some shinobi pants rather than your usual revealing outfit. Naruto said. Iruka asked me to change my outfit. It's actually comfortable. So, ready to go? Anko asked. Yeah. Naruto said. When we come back, Kur and I will be waiting to do the transplant. Anko said. All right. Let's go. Naruto said and they vanished. Naruto, Anko and Tamari. So, remind me again where we're going. Anko said. Did the Ichiha hide out? Naruto said. Where's that? Tamari asked. It's up in the terrace mountain area of the Land of Fire. It's literally built into the mountain and has forestry growing on each level. Naruto said. Why have the fight here? Anko asked. Where else would you have two Ichiha clan members fight? Either way it goes, this will be either my or Itachi's last fight. Naruto said. So, what's the game plan? Tamari asked. There isn't one. You two will just keep an eye on Kissam while the fight happens. After that we leave. Naruto said and they nodded. Naruto, after this fight with Itachi and Natsumi's fight with the guy with the, what's next? Tamari asked. Somehow find a way to free the captured tailed beasts and finish off the Akatsuki members. Naruto said. What about that thing? Tamari asked. What thing? Anko asked. It's not important. Naruto said and then stopped running. Would you stop? Anko asked. Because we're here. Naruto said and pointed up. We have to climb up all of that Anko asked and Tamari summoned Skyrus. Skyrus, can you take us to the top of this mountain? Tamari asked. Of course. Skyrus said and they jumped on her back. Still think we were going to climb? Tamari asked. Shut up before I kick you off the dragon. Anko said. Kissam is up there. Naruto said, as his Sharingan was active. How can you tell? Anko asked. I can zoom in and out with my Sharingan. Plus I can sense him up there. Naruto said. What's he doing? Tamari asked. Absolutely nothing. He's just sitting there waiting for us. Naruto said, as they reached the top. Thank you Skyrus. Tamari said and Skyrus went up in smoke. Only Naruto alone may go beyond this point. Itachi's order so that's how it's going to be. The rest of you can wait right here with me. Kissam said. Even if you weren't here they still wouldn't come in with me. Naruto said and walked past Kissam. Kissam Hashigaki. Never thought I'd see you in person. Anko said. Anko Mitarashi. Arachimaru's first apprentice and now one of Konoha's most sadistic interrogators. You've also brought along Princess Tamari of the Hidden Sand Village. Quite the company I'm left with. Kissam said. We won't make a move unless you do. Anko said and he chuckled. You don't have to worry about that. The Akatsuki as well as everybody else knows all about a battle between two Ichiha clansmen and how destructive it can be. The three of us will just sit here until the fight is over. Kissam said. While the three of them sat down waiting for the battle to begin, Natsumi was sitting down in Kanoha's forest waiting for pain to arrive. These two battles would determine the outcome of the very world and only Naruto knew that. Chapter 20. Namaka's siblings versus the Akatsuki. Itsumi was sitting down in the middle of the forest, constantly gathering natural energy, while she sent shadow clones to Kanoha in order to gather natural energy for when her sage mode runs out. She could detect pain just a few miles out and to make sure Kanoha was safe, Natsumi used the wood dome to surround Kanoha from any potential damage that may occur. She was brought out of her thoughts when suddenly Ma and Pa appeared in front of her. What are you two doing here? Natsumi asked. We're here to give you a hand with pain. Ma said. We've fraught them with Jureya boy and know a bit about their skills. 
Well you have undoubtedly surpassed your Aya boy in the sage arts and in skill in general, the five bodies of pain will still be a hassle for you. Pa said. So in other words, pain is going to be a pain in the ass to defeat. Natsumi asked. In layman's terms yes. Pa said. So, give me the rundown of the skills I'm going up against. Natsumi said. For starters, be very careful of this. The first thing you should know is that each one of these bodies possesses. Pa said. What? How is that even possible? Natsumi asked. We have come to the conclusion these are fake bodies, and whoever the real pain is must have somehow given each of them powers of the sixth paths. Ma said. First things first is that you can forget about attacking from a blind spot. Each of their eyes are linked, and if they are even within the same vicinity as each other, they can block any attack. Pa said. Like I said, a giant pain in the ass. Natsumi said. Also if you wish to make things a bit easier on yourself during the fight, you must take out the Nakara path first. It has the ability to repair any damage. This path is most notably at the back of their attack formation. Pa said. Take out the one way in the back first. Easier said than done apparently. Natsumi said. Correct. The next one you should worry about is the pre-top path that has the ability to absorb chakra through physical contact and chakra-based ninjutsu attacks. Ma said. So, I'll have to eat them all at once first and then take out those two. I can probably come up with something for that. Natsumi said. The most dangerous one to me is known as the diva path. This path has the control over gravity to repel or attract anything it wants. Pa said. Oh man. How come I get the hard guy and Naruto gets Itachi? It's not fair. Natsumi said and Ma smacked her upside the head. Focus. Ma said. Right. Sorry. Natsumi said and then pain landed in front of her. The Nine Tails. Diva Path said. These are the ones that took out Pervy Sage. Natsumi asked. Yes. Pa said. Have you come to surrender? Diva Path asked. Surrender isn't in my vocabulary. I'm going to make you pay for killing Pervy Sage. After that I'm going to find the real body and the fuck you up again. It's fitting that I get to kick your ass six times in one fucking day. Natsumi said. The five of the remaining six paths of pain got in formation, and just like Pa said, Nakara path was in the back of the group. The animal path summoned a rhino that charged towards Natsumi, only to be stopped when Natsumi grabbed it by its horn and threw it away like it was nothing. Animal path summoned two more summoning creatures, but Ma and Pa stopped them with A. Natsumi created two shadow clones and had them defeat the summoning creatures with a giant. As Natsumi charged in to attack the actual bodies of pain, Gamma Bunta, Gamma Hero and Gamma Kin sprang into action to take out the summoning creatures. As Natsumi was rushing in to fight, one of the paths came towards her, and Pa informed him that it absorbs ninjutsu, so Natsumi used her tojutsu to defeat him. Natsumi threw a fake, and when she went for her actual attack, she was surprised the pre-top path dodged her attack. Ma reminded her that all of the eyes of the paths were connected, so a blind spot attack wouldn't work. She switched to her frog kumite to jutsu and easily won. Natsumi, even though you have defeated the pre-top path, he can come back to life. The one all the way in the back is able to summon something that can fix the body. If you want to make things easier for you, then you should take out the pain keeping its distance. Ma said. I know. I'm on it. Naruto said. Natsumi created a giant rasen shuriken and threw it at the remaining paths. Like she predicted, each of them jumped away, but his true target was the Nakara path. Once the Rasen Shuriken was close enough, but just out of striking distance, Natsumi made it expand, and it destroyed the Nakara path by ripping it to pieces. I see. So you've become a sage and mastered the same as Jureya Sensei. Diva Path said. You have no right to call him Sensei. You killed him and claimed it was for peace, and he was one of the most peaceful people around. This crusade that you're on won't lead to peace. It'll just lead to another war. Natsumi said. Peace cannot be achieved without pain. War causes pain, and I shall create a new world from the ashes of war. Diva Path said. Then it's time for you to die. Once I defeat the fake bodies of yours, I'm coming for the real body, Nagato. Natsumi said. I am pain. Nagato no longer exists. Diva Path said and Natsumi clapped her hands together. Wood style. Wood dragon. Natsumi created a large dragon made of wood that sped towards the Diva Path, but the Diva Path held his hand out and completely destroyed the Natsumi quickly used the water dragon and caused serious damage to the animal path, temporarily removing it from the fight, and then she was blasted away by an invisible force. Natsumi stood up and quickly jumped out of the way from a rocket that was headed straight towards her. Natsumi dodged the rocket at the last second and then used the ripping torrent on the Asura path, but like last time this was also destroyed by an invisible force. Natsumi's sage mode ran out, so she quickly released a shadow clone back in the village, and she was down to five shadow clones. What's going on? 
Why aren't any of my attacks hitting? Mitsumi asked. That's the diva path's ability to repel any attacks thanks to gravity. However, now that I've seen it up close and in use multiple times, there seems to be a certain amount of time in between his ability usage. Ma said. Mitsumi nodded and decided to test out the recovery time for diva path's ability. Mitsumi used a kunai shadow clone on the diva path, and like she expected, all of the kunai were blown away. She instantly started to count in his head how long they had before it could be used again, and then attacked the diva path with tajutsu. Mitsumi had the clear advantage and nearly finished the diva path, but she was blown away by an invisible force. Five seconds. Mitsumi thought and smirked. Mitsumi ran straight at the diva path who prepared to blow her away, but as soon as he activated his ability, Mitsumi vanished, and the animal path was completely destroyed by a giant. Three down and two to go. Mitsumi took out Nakara path, Pritop path and animal path in 15 minutes. Diva path was so frustrated that he used his almighty push to destroy everything around them, reducing the forest to one gigantic crater. It was so powerful that it knocked Mitsumi out of sage mode while sending Ma and Pa back to Mount Mayaboku. Hinoha. Hinata, can you see what's going on out there? Sakura asked. Not really. Mitsumi's chakra is so dense that it's making it hard for me to see through the dome. Hinata said. Ino, what about you? Can you sense anything? Sakura asked. Yeah. Whoever she's fighting just lets off a huge amount of chakra. Ino said, and then they felt the ground shake from Diva Pass. What the hell was that? Kiba asked. That was from whoever Natsumi is fighting. Ino said. I think we should go help her. Sakura said. No. Natsumi put this dome around the village for a specific reason. Tsunade said, as she arrived next to them. To keep whoever she's fighting from getting to the village. Shikamaru said. No. It's to keep us in the village. She doesn't want any of us getting involved in the fight, and she's keeping us trapped until it's over. It shouldn't take long seeing how she only needs to fight five bodies, since we still have one. Tsunade said. I don't believe it. Hinata said. What happened? Tsunade asked. The forest. It's gone. Hinata said. How? Tsunade asked. I don't know. After that huge release of chakra, there was a small gap in the chakra keeping the dome together, and I saw the forest was gone. Nothing is there except for a crater. Hinata said. What happened to Natsumi? Karen asked. She's in pretty bad shape, but she's standing. It's only two more left before she wins. Hinata said. Easier said than done. Three of her shadow clones just went up in smoke that she sent here. Kiba said. What were they even doing? They were just sitting there. Shikamaru said. They were collecting natural energy for sage mode. Natsumi has officially become the next toad sage, and I believe she surpassed Jureya in the sage arts. Tsunade said. This dome is going to make me go crazy. Can't somebody just destroy this damn thing? Sakura asked. There is one person, but he's not here right now. Tsunade said. Naruto. Karen said. I don't understand it. How come you can't break through this dome, Lady Tsunade? Sakura asked. If it was just normal chakra flowing through this I'd be able to, but there are three different types of chakra flowing through it. I'm not the best sensor, but I can detect Natsumi's regular chakra, her tailed beast chakra and natural energy flowing through the dome. The tailed beast chakra alone is dangerous to anybody that isn't who comes in contact with it. Tsunade said. Then how come Naruto can break it? He's not a Jinchuriki. Ino said. True, but the draconic chakra which he has is so powerful that it can counteract the tailed beast and nature chakra flowing through the dome. Tsunade said. Natsumi vs. Bane. Damn. That was one hell of an attack. He managed to knock me out of sage mode, and somehow a few of my shadow clones disappeared. I need to get rid of all this smoke to see where he is now. Natsumi thought. Almighty push. Before Natsumi could blow away the smoke, she heard Diva Path trying to get rid of the smoke, since he couldn't see her either. Natsumi smirked again as she was able to keep the smoke going for a little bit longer by using her wind and earth chakra natures. She located the Asura Path who was firing missiles everywhere into the smoke, and Natsumi just stood there and watched. She decided to use her sword for this one and then unsealed the Kubakirabacho. She coated her sword in wind chakra and silently crept up behind the Asura path and split it in half vertically using the wind style. Vacuum blade. And then there was one. Mitsumi said as she blew away the smoke with a great breakthrough and entered sage mode again. You're an annoying little pest, nine tails. Diva path said. I tend to get that a lot. You made a fatal mistake coming here to face me. Mitsumi said. Oh? What would that be? Diva path asked. You waited to come and capture me after you killed Jureya sensei you should have come for me right after, but you didn't. I was already close to his level, and he managed to take out three of your paths. I've surpassed him in the amount of time you foolishly decided to sit and wait. 
On top of that, you came to my domain to fight me instead of ambushing me while I was out on a mission. You let the power of your go to your head and you've become arrogant thinking you're a god. Natsumi said. You may have taken out some of the paths, but they can be replaced. I am a god and this world shall know pain. Diva Path said. This world has already known pain long before either of us existed. Your twisted ways of peace will only lead to this world's destruction, and this is kind of cliche, but I can't let that happen. Natsumi said. I am the world savior. I was put on earth to usher in a new era peace and peace is only achieved through chaos. Diva Path said. What about all of the innocent lives you've taken? Does any of that matter to you? Natsumi asked. A small price to pay for salvation. Their sacrifices will not be for nothing. Diva Path said. You're basically on your way to committing a mass genocide. Natsumi said. What you call a genocide I call a cleansing of the world. Diva Path said. Universal pull. Before Natsumi could react, she was going towards the Diva Path with no way of stopping. Diva Path stabbed Natsumi with some black rods before pinning her down to the ground. Tell me, has this tamed you a little, Nine Tails? Diva Path said. You know, if I were the actual Nine Tails you'd be dead now, right? I bet you expect me to lay here and listen to your evil tirade about why you're doing this and how your childhood was growing up. I'll be honest, if you were fighting the old me from three years ago, I'd probably let you sit here and talk to me, but this is the new and approved Natsumi. To be blunt, I simply don't give a fuck about why you're doing this. I stopped giving a fuck about your reasons the moment you took my only father figure away from me. Natsumi said. That's good. It makes capturing you much easier. Diva Path said. This is the thing. You honestly think I don't feel you trying to drain my chakra? I'm an Uzumaki that has the nine tails sealed inside of me and knows sage mode. It would take forever to drain me of my chakra. Now, I'd love to stay and chat, but it's time for me to break out of this. Natsumi said. Before the Diva Path could do anything, Natsumi released all of her natural chakra, causing a huge explosion, and forced the Diva Path to jump away from her. The Diva Path used the universal pull on Natsumi and stabbed her in the gut with one of his black chakra rods, but she went up in smoke. Natsumi quickly appeared in front of him and kicked him away before firing off the mud dragon that connected. Natsumi ran at him to connect with a giant, but five seconds went by and she was blasted away by his almighty push. That is really annoying. Natsumi thought as she stood up. Are you ready to give up, Nine Tails? You cannot defeat a god. Diva Path said. I know I can't defeat a god, but I can whoop a bitch's ass like I'm about to. Natsumi said and released a shadow clone to enter sage mode. Natsumi just vanished, and all the Diva Path could do was look around before Natsumi had her fist buried into his gut. Naruto created a that exploded point blank range, and Diva Path was sent flying away skidding on the ground. Natsumi rushed at the Diva Path, but she was blasted away from an almighty push and then saw the Diva Path running away from her. Natsumi gave chase and slammed her fist into the back of the Diva Path, who underestimated Natsumi's newfound speed. The Diva Path then used his gravity manipulation to hit Natsumi with a giant slab of earth that sent her flying away. Natsumi gave chase once again after she recovered from her dazed state, but when she caught up to Diva Path, Natsumi saw him toss a small black orb into the sky. What the hell is that? Natsumi asked. Planetary devastation. All of a sudden, Natsumi was lifted off of the ground and sucked into a giant sphere made of nothing except the earth around him. She was trapped, but the Diva Path kept adding more and more chakra to make the attack stronger in order to hold Natsumi long enough to transport her. Son of a bitch. First he can blast me away then he can pull me close against my will and now he can strap me in a giant whatever the fuck this is. Natsumi thought and started to leak her chakra to the ground. After concentrating long enough, Natsumi went through multiple hand signs before using the wood style. Deep forest emergence, causing large trees to sprout from the ground before reaching the giant earth ball she was trapped in. Soon enough the trees started to dig into the earth ball until it eventually broke apart and Natsumi fell to the ground. You son of a bitch. Natsumi said. Natsumi created the wind style. Rasen shuriken and just threw it at the diva path who blocked it with the almighty push and destroyed it with ease. Before he could react, the diva path was knocked into the air by a kick from Natsumi, and just before the five seconds was up for his almighty push, Natsumi slammed a massive into his stomach. Diva's path fell to the ground, unable to move, and Natsumi finished it off with a wind style. To his face. Well, that's over with. Natsumi said and started to remove the chakra rods from. I hope this works. Natsumi thought and entered sage mode, then stabbed herself in the hand. Found him. Should I call for backup? No. I need to go alone. Natsumi said and dropped the dome around Konoha before running off. Forest. Natsumi was jumping through the trees on her way to the real pain, and despite being fueled by anger to kill whoever this person was, deep down, she just couldn't go through with it for some reason. 
Itsumi. A voice yelled as Inoichi, Shikaku and Kohayuga landed in front of him. What's up? Mitsumi asked. The fact that you're here by yourself, does that mean you finally defeated the sixth pain? Inoichi asked. It doesn't really matter who won or who lost. Mitsumi said. What happened? Shikaku asked. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Mitsumi said. I don't understand. What do you mean by that? Inoichi asked. I don't think it's really important. I'm on my way to see the real pain right now. Please, don't try to follow me. I need to do this alone. Mitsumi said. Have you figured out where the real pain can be found? Ko asked. Yeah. When I was still in sage mode, I reverse tracked him through one of the black rods from one of the path's bodies. Mitsumi said. Why is it so important to go alone? What's going on, Mitsumi? Inoichi asked. There's something I need to check out. I need to talk to him. The real pain. I was so blinded by emotion during our fight that I didn't try to understand why he's doing what he's doing. Just let me go alone. Mitsumi said. You know once Lady Tsunade finds out she's going to kill you, right? Inoichi asked. Yeah. I guess we'll have to see what she does when I return to the village. Mitsumi said. Go on ahead. I think you've earned the right since you were the one who defeated Pain. Shikaku said. Thanks. Mitsumi said and ran off. Mind telling me why you just let her go? Inoichi asked. I secretly had her in my shadow possession and she was still moving around. It had zero effect on her movements and she didn't even feel it. Besides, Master Jiraiya would trust her on this so I think should as well. Shikaku said. It should have hide out. After leaving Tamari and Anko behind with Kissam, Naruto made his way into the Achiha hideout and kept his Sharingan activated. He knew enough about Itachi to suspect any kind of, and he knew his Sharingan was the best at detecting. Eventually he made it to the room where Itachi was waiting for him and stopped about 10 feet from Itachi. I see you made it. Itachi said. Hard to ignore an invitation from the Itachi Achiha. Naruto said. Tell me, Naruto. How much can you see with those Sharingan eyes of yours? Itachi asked. A lot more than you can and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Naruto said. So, you have the Manjikyu as well? Itachi asked. I do. Naruto said. So, you managed to kill your best friend. A shame. I never took you for the kind of person that would kill a comrade. Itachi said. You mean how you led everyone else to believe you did? Sorry, but I didn't kill anybody to get my Manjikyu. Let me guess, you read the Ichiha Stone Tablet, didn't you? Naruto asked. I did. The secrets of the Sharingan and its visual prowess has been right under our noses the entire time, but only a select few have been able to read past a certain point. Does the name Madara Ichiha sound familiar to you? Itachi asked. Of course it does. He is family after all. Naruto said and Itachi looked at him. I see. Let me tell you a story about our mothers. Did you know they were referred to as the Sharingan sisters during the Third Shinobi War? Itachi asked. I did. Naruto said. Did you know that wasn't just a name for the battlefield, but a name due to them being actual sisters? Itachi asked. I had a feeling they were. They did look alike. Naruto said. Then you must have figured out that you and I are related by blood. Itachi said. I did and it also meant Sasuke is my cousin as well. Naruto said. He's not. Itachi said. Isn't he your brother? Naruto asked. Yes, but he was not conceived by my mother. My father had an affair with a woman while my mother was out on the battlefield and had the woman killed after Sasuke was born. He took Sasuke in, and my mother didn't find out until Sasuke was six years old that my father had an affair. It's what played a part in the downfall of the Ichiha clan as well. Itachi said. How? Naruto asked. On top of the obvious problems going on between the village and the Ichiha clan after the Nine Tails attack, my mother secretly divorced my father and moved in with your mother. She was only around to keep up the appearance of the clan. The divorce caused my father to snap and quicken the plan for the coup, but he knew my mother would stand against him, and he himself was afraid to fight her, because then your mother would get involved. Despite your mother's sickness, she was still a force to be reckoned with, and you've witnessed that firsthand when a group of my father's most trusted men tried to attack you when you were six, and she easily wiped them out. Itachi said. Well, she was put in the same category as the legendary, so it's not really a shocker. So, why did you or whoever helped you that night kill Makoto if she was against the coup? Naruto asked. What makes you think I had help? Itachi asked. Despite how strong you were back then, I know for a fact that you weren't strong enough to take out a clan of Sharingan users on your own. Well, you probably could have, but it would have taken you longer than a few hours to do it. Naruto said. I was helped by the ghost of the Ichiha clan, Madara Ichiha. Itachi said. Madara is dead. 
Well there are certain ways he could have prolonged his life like using Izanagi, he would only be able to use it twice. Naruto said. What you say has some truths to it, but that's the name I was given. Itachi said. Come on, Itachi. You're smarter than that. You mean to tell me you actually believed Madara Ichiha was still alive and helped you kill the Ichiha clan? You know what, I don't care. I want answers and I know you can give them to me. Naruto said. Answers to what? Itachi asked. Who is the man in the orange mask? Naruto asked. That is Madara Ichiha. Itachi said. Bullshit. Madara wouldn't go around acting like a dumbass, and I've had a small little scuffle with this guy, and I know for a fact if he was the real Madara, then I wouldn't be alive right now. I do know for a fact that he's an Ichiha. Naruto said and Itachi smirked a little bit. Seems I'm not the only genius in the Ichiha clan. Itachi said. I'm more of a researcher actually and trust me when I say I know a lot more than you as well as the Akatsuki when it comes to the plans your so-called leader wants to fulfill. Like the entire Ichiha stone tablet other than the Manjekyo Sharingan abilities is one big lie and somebody has been tampering with it to this very day. Naruto said. What do you mean? Itachi asked. The entire killing of your best friend to unlock Manjikyu is a lie. I didn't kill my best friend for the Manjekyo, and I know you didn't kill Shisui. Naruto said and now Itachi was stunned. How do you know that? Itachi asked. I found the autopsy report on Shisui. The way he was killed was the way a root member killed somebody. That and the fact that I know where one of his eyes is makes things even more clear that you didn't kill him. You took the fall because you knew you were going to massacre the clan which now brings up my next question. Why fill Sasuke up with so much anger if he was already being groomed by your father? You should have known that he would become even more unstable. Naruto said. I foolishly believed he would change his ways with you and Natsumi around. Itachi said. Well, he did have a brief change for a bit according to Natsumi, but he simply refused to believe that he could become strong unless it was fueled by anger and hatred. Him getting the curse mark didn't help and neither did him killing his guards. Naruto said. Was Natsumi remorseful over his death? Itachi asked. You have no idea. I don't think she ever got over it until she was gone training. She really looked at Sasuke as a friend and did not want to kill him, but she thought it was the best way to save him from himself. Say he joins Orochimaru's side and gets power like he wants. Do you think he'd stop if he somehow managed to kill you like he wanted? He'd just keep going until he quenched his thirst for power and revenge. I had a conversation with a third about our group and he said it reminded him of the time when Jiraiya, Tsunade and Orochimaru were just starting off. He said that Kakashi was like Tabarama who was the veteran that overlooked things. I was somewhat like him when I became the co-leader due to the way I handled myself, and I'm sure you can figure out who everyone else was. Except for my dad's team, I guess Team 7 is just destined to have a rogue shinobi or someone who loses their way. Naruto said and Itachi stood up. The time has come for us to have our fight. Our mothers were sisters and now that my father is dead you are the last remaining relative I have alive. Your eyes are just like mine, and you will help me gain the ultimate power. Your eyes will give me eternal light. Itachi said. Naruto immediately caught a kunai thrown by Itachi out of the air and blocked a punch aimed at his face. Naruto swiped at Itachi with the kunai who turned into a flock of crows, then Naruto quickly turned around and gave Itachi a knee to the gut. Before Itachi could counter, Naruto broke apart in dragon scales before Itachi saw him sitting where he once was. Injutsu won't work on me. Naruto said. He appeared in front of Itachi who caught his fist, but the impact managed to send Itachi sliding back a bit. Itachi kicked Naruto away and used a fireball immediately after. Naruto pulled out his sword and cut the fireball in half before countering with a dragon flame. Itachi jumped out of the way and both men started a tojutsu fight. While the fighting was going on, Itachi quickly activated his Manjekyo Sharingan and trapped Naruto in the Tsukiyomi. Naruto was pinned to a cross and stabbed multiple times before Itachi ripped out one of his eyes. Before Itachi could take the next one, the Tsukiyomi broke apart and both men fell to the ground, but Itachi was holding his left eye. You broke the Tsukiyomi. Itachi said. You really shouldn't be surprised, but I can understand why. The Tsukiyomi is a power that is supposed to be unbreakable, but it can be broken by somebody who has the Manjikyu as well. Naruto said. Itachi started to quickly go through hand signs, and Naruto threw a giant shuriken at him. Just before the shuriken hit, Naruto held up one hand sign, and the shuriken broke into hundreds of smaller shuriken that Itachi had a hard time evading. Naruto then channeled lightning chakra through the shuriken, and Itachi had to use the Amaterasu to burn the shuriken in order to escape Naruto's trap. Itachi grabbed his eye as his vision was getting worse by the second, thanks to him having to use the Tsukiyomi and Amaterasu in a quick fashion. Naruto gathered fire chakra and then used the fire style. Crimson Earth Spider. The made its way towards Itachi quicker than he thought it would, and Itachi had no choice other than to jump in the air. 
once he did however, a kunai appeared in front of him, but Naruto used the Amenitejikara to switch places with the kunai and gave Itachi a chakra enhanced uppercut, causing him to break through the ceiling of the Ichiha hideout. While Itachi was still in the air, he quickly used the fire style. Blaze Ball. Enacted and once the smoke cleared, Naruto was standing there surrounded by his Susanoo rib cage unharmed. A Susanoo? His man Jekyo has progressed to the point of mine, and he clearly has his own unique ability. Itachi thought. Naruto dropped the Susanoo, and both men then used the fireball, and Naruto was clearly winning the battle, as he had a lot more chakra than Itachi. Since he was struggling to win the battle with the fireball, Itachi closed his right eye for a moment before using the flames of Amaterasu to take out Naruto's and cancel everything out. Itachi once again used the Amaterasu to try and capture Naruto in the flames, but Naruto just started to run around them. Itachi was lucky his man Jekyo was active because at Naruto's speed, his basic Sharingan would not be able to keep up with his speed. While Naruto was running, the flames Amaterasu were catching up to him, so at the last split second before they could reach him, Naruto used the Amenitejikara once again to switch places with Itachi, who was not harmed by his own flames. Naruto closed his eyes thanks to the burning sensation and blood coming from it before shaking off the feeling. Your ability is quite rare and unique. The fact that you can use it on someone like myself is quite the feat. Itachi said. Thanks. I guess. Naruto said. He went through hand signs and used the thunderclap arrow on Itachi, followed by his moon fang heaven piercer. The result of both attacks split the roof down the middle, and Itachi was forced to use his own Susanoo to block the attack. Once the smoke cleared, Itachi dropped his Susanoo, but he couldn't find Naruto who seemingly disappeared and completely hid his chakra signature. Itachi didn't have to wait long for Naruto to show himself, because Itachi had to jump out of the way from multiple lightning balls, courtesy of Naruto's lightning ball. After Itachi was finished dodging those attacks, Naruto was underneath the roof and used the fire style. Dragon Flame Caterwall to destroy the roof a bit, sending them into the air. I can tell that you're getting low on chakra. The Sharingan can assess your chakra level. Your Manjaku ability to switch places with something uses more chakra depending on the object you switch with. It must have taken up a lot of chakra for you to constantly switch places when evading the flames of Maya Madarasu, but it really took a toll on you when you decided to switch with me. So stop bluffing. That last attack of yours was nothing but a tactic to try and create a small opening for your final attack. Itachi said, and then it started to thunder. You're right. That does take up a lot of chakra, but trust me when I say that I have a lot more chakra than you think I do. However, that last attack was a tactic, but it wasn't something to create an opening. My next attack lasts only an instant, but it is so fast that only my dad might be able to evade it. Similar to the flames of Amaterasu, this cannot be blocked, dodged or evaded. Naruto set and it started to rain. So you intend to kill yourself even if it means taking me out as well. Itachi said and Naruto just smirked. Not exactly, but since you wanted to die so badly at the hands of an Ichiha, I'll make your death a reality. It'll be quick and painless. This is my ultimate and it guides the lightning straight from the heavens themselves. All I have to do is direct its power right at you. Naruto said. Does he have the ability to control natural lighting? Not even the best lightning user was able to do that. Itachi thought. I hope you said your final prayers, Itachi. Now, vanish with the roar of thunder. Naruto said and transformed the lightning into a gigantic dragon. Kirin. Naruto swung his hand in a downward motion, and the dragon went up into the clouds before crashing down on top of the Ichiha hideout. The attack was so powerful that the shockwave could be felt for miles and miles. Anko and Tamari. What the fuck was that? Anko asked, as her, Tamari and Kisum were sticking themselves to the ground with their chakra to avoid getting blown away. I think that was one of Naruto's he has a knack for creating destruction, Tamari said. He just blew up a mountain with one attack. Kisum said in awe. I'd like to see Itachi walk away from that one. Anko said. He did. Something like that is powerful, but I know Itachi, so he has a trick up his sleeve. Kisum said. He survived. Tamari said. How do you know? Anko asked. Because Naruto also survived that when he finally completed it. Both of them have something known as the ultimate defense, and if Itachi's is at the level of Naruto's or better than I know he survived. Tamari said. Uh. What the hell is that? Anko asked and pointed to a giant red humanoid figure in the distance. Naruto vs Itachi. The smoke from Naruto cleared and Itachi was face down on the ground without his Akatsuki robe which was destroyed in the blast. Naruto knew Itachi wasn't down for the count, and he wasn't the least bit surprised when Itachi stood up surrounded by his own Susanoo, and this time it was the armored version of his Susanoo. I should have known you'd use the Susanoo to save yourself, but you clearly didn't get out of that unscathed. Naruto said, as he noticed the burn marks on Itachi's arms and his destroyed clothes. 
the Ichiha clan's ultimate defense. Itachi said. It lives up to its name, and I see you have the Tatsuka blade and the Yadamir. Naruto said, and his own Susanoo started to form. No matter what you do, Naruto with these two weapons in my possession I am undefeatable. Itachi said. That's what you think. Naruto said, as his Susanoo finished forming, and he also had a legendary weapon for his Susanoo. The Cloud Gathering Sword. Itachi said. That's right. In mythology this sword was used to control the winds and redirect wildfires. However, since the sword is now in my possession, I use it to control lightning. Naruto said. Three legendary weapons in one spot at the same time. Two of the Ichiha clan's most powerful shinobi and users of the Manjekyo Sharingan. A battle that has never happened until now. Itachi said. Enough talk. Naruto said. Naruto and Itachi ran at each other, causing both of their Susanus to collide and create a shockwave. Naruto's Susanoo would throw a fist, but Itachi blocked it with a Yadamir and swung his Tatsuka blade as Naruto who blocked it with his cloud gathering sword. This continued to happen until Naruto picked up the speed and managed to knock the Yadamir out of the hand of Itachi's Susanoo. In turn Itachi knocked Naruto's sword out of the hands of his Susanoo, and when he went to slash Naruto's Susanoo with a Tatsuka blade, Naruto created a giant sword made from lightning to block the attack. The battle continued with both Ichiha clansmen wearing down the other's Susanoo to the point that they both lost the armor version, and they were practically blind now. Itachi managed to finally break Naruto's Susanoo completely and punched him away with his Susanoo, which was just a rib cage and an arm now. Your Susanoo is gone and your Manjekyo is no longer useful to you. Like I said before, your eyes will be coming with me. This fight is over. Itachi said as he started to walk towards Naruto who chuckled. You're right. This fight is over, but you're the one who lost. Naruto said and started to release all of his draconic chakra, making Itachi stop walking. I can't move. What did you do? Itachi asked as his Susanoo started to crack under the pressure. My ace in the hole which at the moment can only be used once during a fight. It's been fun fighting you, Itachi, but this is the end. Naruto said as he channeled draconic chakra into his legs and jumped high into the air. Dragon fist. While he was falling out of the air, Naruto reeled his fist back as he was surrounded by a golden streak which turned into a golden dragon with red eyes and quickly made his way towards Itachi. As soon as he made contact, he effortlessly broke through Itachi's Susanoo and then an explosion of chakra happened causing whatever was left of the Ichiha hideout to be destroyed. The smoke cleared after a while and Naruto was standing over the body of Itachi which had a gaping hole in his chest. Rain started to pour as Naruto's dull eyes just looked at the ground, although he couldn't see anything, and he just stood there. He collapsed right next to Itachi on the ground and struggled to catch his breath as his body was covered in cuts and bruises from their fight. After 10 minutes, Tamari and Anko came flying to the Monskyrus, who was careful enough to not touch the flames of Itachi's Amaterasu, which were still burning. Naruto. Tamari yelled as she jumped off of Skyrus and ran to him. Whoa. He actually did it. Look at this place. It's nothing more than a wasteland. Anko said as she jumped off of Skyrus. This is the result of a fight between two Sharingan users. I'm surprised more isn't damaged. Skyrus said. That must be because of these weird flames. Anko said. These are the flames of Amaterasu. Naruto doesn't have this ability, so my guess is they belong to Itachi. They burn anything that comes into contact with them, and since Itachi is dead, they will burn for seven days and seven nights before extinguishing themselves. Skyrus said. Naruto, wake up. I know you can hear me. I can hear your heart beating. Tamari said and shook him. Not so rough. Naruto said and she gave him a big hug that made him grunt. You made me so worried. I thought I would have to bring you back to life and then kill you for dying on me. Tamari said and Anko walked up them. How are you feeling? Anko asked as she healed him a bit. I feel like shit. Naruto said and she chuckled. You look like shit. Anko said. Come on. Let's get you back to Konoha. Tamari said. Wait. Seal his body for me. Naruto said and gave her a scroll. Why can't you do it? Tamari asked and he stayed silent. He can't see. Anko said as she noticed the dried up blood around his eyes. Really? Naruto, open your eyes. Tamari said and he did showing them that his eyes were dull. Gurren I will not be happy about this. Anko said as Tamari sealed Itachi's body. She'll get over it. Naruto said. Come on you two. Let's get out of here. Anko said. Wait. Do me a favor. Throw a kunai 15 feet to your left at the ground. Naruto said and Anko did as told, but nothing happened. What was that about? Tamari asked as they helped him get on Skyrus. Something just appeared underground and it left as soon as the kunai hit. Naruto said and leaned his head on Tamari's lap. Everyone ready? Skyrus asked. Yes. We're going back to Konoha. 
Tamari said and Skyrus took off. I wonder if the village is standing. Anko said. I'm sure Natsumi did her job and protected the village from getting destroyed. Right, Naruto. Tamari asked and when they looked at him he was passed out. Must be tired from his fight with Itachi. I'd let him sleep, he earned it. Anko said. Yeah. Tamari said and smiled at Naruto as she messed with his hair. I think this is the same little boy I used to chase around the house to take his mask off. He's come a long way since then and I know you'd be proud of him, Sayori. Anko thought and gave a small smile at Tamari's interactions with Naruto. Konoha. After talking to the real pain whose name was actually Nagato and convincing him to believe in her ways of achieving peace, Natsumi was traveling through the forest and made a memorial for Jiraiya. She returned to the village and was welcomed back to cheers from everyone in the village. Out of the crowd came Sakura who wanted to punch her but just gave her a hug and called her an idiot. Soon enough she was in a group hug by the entire Kanoha graduation class and they ended the hug when Sanadi walked up to her. Hey, mom. I just wanted to say sorry for telling you I hated you a few months ago. I was just so angry that the pervy sage died and I didn't know what to do. Natsumi said and Sanadi just gave her a hug. It's okay. I'm proud of you, knucklehead, and I'm sure Jurea is watching over you smiling right now. Sanadi said. Since I protected the village from somebody you wouldn't even be able to defeat, does that mean I can become one now? Natsumi asked and Sanadi chuckled. You're still a few years off from becoming one. Give it some time. Sanadi said. Yes. Oh, wait. Where's Naruto? Did he come back yet? Natsumi asked. No. We haven't heard anything from him, Tamari or Anko yet. Sanadi said and then a roar was heard in the distance. He's back. Natsumi said and Skyrus landed in front of them. How'd it go? Sanadi asked as Anko jumped off of Skyrus. Mission complete. Anko said and tossed her the scroll with Itachi's body in it. Where's Naruto? Sanadi asked. He's right here. Tamari said as she slowly got off of Skyrus helping Naruto. Man Naruto. You look like shit. Natsumi said. Uh. Natsumi. Tamari said. I mean sheesh. Have you seen all the cuts on your body? It's like you didn't even try to defend yourself. Natsumi said. He can't see. Anko said. Oh. Ignore all of that. You look great. Natsumi said. He can't hear you. He's out cold. Tamari said. I'm awake. Naruto said. Can you see anything? Sanadi asked. No. My eyesight is completely gone. Naruto said. Let's get him to the ER. I know he wants you or Kurinai to do the procedure, but he'll be there to overlook things. Sanadi said and then appeared behind her. Lady Tsunadi. The fire daimyo is on his way here for the emergency meeting you sent for. The said. I never sent an emergency meeting. How long until he gets here? Sanadi asked. According to the message. He'll be here in a few hours. The said. I want you to grab Shikaku and set up the tightest security around the village. We're on lockdown. If we have any visitors take them to a holding cell and keep them there until my meeting is over. Nobody gets in and nobody gets out without proper clearance. If it's a ninja returning from a mission or the Hyuga clan returning, make sure Izomu and Kitetsu give them the proper screening before entering the village. Do you understand me? Sanadi asked. Yes ma'am. The said and vanished. Shizun. Sanadi said. Yes mladi. Shizun asked. You will oversee Naruto's surgery. Natsumi, Sakura, you're with me. Sanadi said. Shouldn't you switch me with Shizun? Sakura asked. No. The surgery Naruto is getting is one you've never done before or learned about yet. Let's go. Sanadi said as she left with Sakura and Natsumi. Come on, Naruto. Let's get you fixed up. Anko said and vanished with Tamari. Man. To think the two of them just took out two s rank criminals on their own. Choji said. It feels like it was just yesterday we were all in the academy. Natsumi was always caught doing pranks and Naruto was always late. Ino said and they laughed. They sure have gotten strong. Hinata said. I remember the first time I pissed Naruto off during our Tajutsu training day. Not even my mother has kicked my ass so badly and the worst part is that I think he took it easy on me. Kiba said. What about the time Natsumi kicked my ass because I called her tomato? That was the day I started to take things seriously. Ino said. Let's not forget about the time Natsumi convinced Naruto to prank the entire school with her on her 10th birthday. Talk about thinking we were under attack. Choji said. One more thing is the fact that Naruto even fought a couple teachers who decided to pick on Natsumi for being a Kiba said. Well, they are brother and sister. They have each other's backs and I'd hate to be somebody who decides to fight them at the same time. Ino said. Alright everybody. Let's clear it out. Haruka said. Wow. Even after all these years you're still a downer. Kiba said. I'm still your superior, Kiba. 
Now get moving. Haruka yelled and did his infamous big head. Hospital. So, how is he? Anko asked, as Shizun was checking over Naruto. He'll probably be out for a few more hours, but everything is working properly. Just make sure he keeps the bandages on for a few days. You must have been studying hard on this since you didn't actually need any help. Shizun said. I was forced to pick up on it more once Kur and I got pregnant. Anko said. Any idea why he wanted to keep his old eyes? Shizun asked. I know why, but I'll keep it a secret for now. Anko said. Fair enough. I have to get ready for later so I'll see you around. Shizun said and started to walk away. Tell Genma I said I'm going to cut him. Anko said and Shizun stopped walking. H how do you know? Shizun asked. Please. The two of you aren't exactly secretive. That in Sakura told Ino which is basically telling the entire village. Anko said. Great. The one thing in my personal life that's fun and I can't even enjoy that anymore. Shizun said and Anko gasped. Shizun. Were you getting off on sneaking around? You naughty girl. Anko said and Shizun turned red before running out of the room. That was disgusting. Naruto said and Anko turned around. Well, look who's finally up. Anko said. How long was I out? Naruto asked. About four hours. How long have you been up? Anko asked. Since you mentioned Ino's name. Naruto said and sat up. Right. We weren't expecting you to be up for a few more hours. Anko said. Arconic chakra has a healing property to it. How'd the meeting with the fire daimyo go? Naruto asked. I honestly don't even think it started yet. Anko said. You know who called for that meeting, right? Naruto asked. Maybe she did while she was drunk. Anko said. It was Danzo. It's one of his ploys to claim the title as. Naruto said. I knew that. Anko said and Naruto just turned his head to her direction. Did you really? Naruto asked. Fuck you. How are your eyes feeling? Anko asked. Normal. Naruto said. No pain. No headaches. Anko asked. Nope. Naruto said and started to unwrap his bandages. Shizun said to keep those on for a few more days. Anko said. Shizun isn't here. Naruto said. True. Anko said and helped him take his bandages off. I will never take being able to see for granted. Naruto said. There are those beautiful dark blue eyes again. No dullness in sight. Test those bad boys out. I want to see. Anko said. All right. Naruto said and activated his EMS revealing the new pattern. Whoa. Cool. So what happens now that you have your mother's eyes? Anko asked. For one, I won't go blind anymore. Secondly all of her Manjikyu abilities become mine on top of the ones I already had. Naruto said. So what abilities do you get from your mother? Anko asked and Naruto summoned three can eyes before throwing them at the walls, killing three root. One more. Naruto said and threw a kunai at a plant that turned into a dead member. Uh. Okay. I wonder how they got in here. I made sure the room was secure before I put you in here. Anko said. Their chakra was hidden, but it spiked once I was going to reveal my abilities. Naruto said and wrote them down before showing her. These are pretty impressive. Remind me to never get on your bad side. Anko said and there was a knock on the door. Who is it? Naruto asked. It's me, Kurinai. Kurinai said. Come in. Anko said and Kurinai came into the room. How are you doing? Kurinai asked as she checked on him. I'm fine. You've gotten big. How far along are you? Naruto asked. Seven months and I'm having a girl. Kurinai said. Congratulations. How does Suma take it? Naruto asked and Anko burst out laughing. He had a panic attack and couldn't find his cigarettes. Anko said. Right. Where's Tamari? Naruto asked. She had to go back to Suna. She has been out of the village for like six months now. Anko said. Oh yeah. Naruto said. So, where exactly did you go besides to train with the dragons? Kurinai asked. Right now it's best that you know as little as possible. Not even Sanadi knows where I went or what I discovered. If I tell you then the two of you will have no choice other than to report to her. You tell her and that means she has to tell everyone which includes Eno. Trust me Eno is like my best friend, but telling her is like telling the entire world. Naruto said. How bad is it? Anko asked. Something even worse than the Akatsuki and they don't even know how close they are to actually making it happen. Naruto said. Should we be worried? Kurinai asked. Not at the moment, but if what I hope doesn't happen does happen, I have a plan and I need to do it alone. Naruto said. If you say so. It's not like we could stop you if we tried anyway. Anko said and he stood up. Glad we're on the same page. Naruto said. Where are you going? Kurinai asked. To the meeting between Tsunade and the fire daimyo. Naruto said. You weren't invited. Anko said. 
Who's going to fucking stop me? Naruto asked and she wiped away a fake tear. He's growing up so fast, Kurenai. He even talks like me now. Anko said. Will you stop being so dramatic? Naruto, are you sure it's wise to barge in on a meeting of that caliber? Kurenai asked. Yup. Naruto said and vanished. Meeting. Are meetings normally delayed this long? Sakura asked. Well, Pinky. The fire daimyo is an old slow-talking and easily impressed fartbag. He probably saw an interesting tree or something on his way here. Natsumi said. Please don't talk like that during the meeting. You can cost me the title. Tsunade said. Lady Tsunade, are you sure it's okay to have them here? Kaharu asked. They'll be fine. Tsunade said. Sakura won't. She doesn't even want to be here. Natsumi said. Well, when you put it that way it makes me sound like I have something more important to do. Sakura said. She does. She knows Shikamaru is waiting for her at her house. She wants to go and ride him. Shut up. Sakura yelled as she covered Natsumi's mouth and screamed when Natsumi licked her hand. Don't you ever put your hand in front of my mouth, Pinky. Natsumi said. Don't lick me. Sakura said. Bite me. Natsumi said and they glared at each other. It was a bad idea inviting both of them. Tsunade thought. Hey, what's that smell? Natsumi asked as she saw Danzo walk in. What smell? Sakura asked. It's the smell of desperation mixed with old fart. Oh, never mind. It's just the one-eyed old fart. Natsumi said and Sakura couldn't keep it together. Natsumi, why? Tsunade asked. What? Natsumi asked and had an innocent look on her face. I apologize for being late. I stumbled across this fascinating tree that must have been at least 2,000 feet tall. The fire daimyo said and Tsunade looked at Natsumi. I forgot about that tree. Natsumi mumbled. It's quite alright. Tsunade said. Yes. Now, may we get on to the reason you called this meeting? The fire daimyo asked. I would love to, but I didn't call this meeting. Tsunade said. I sent the message to bring up a problem. Tsunade willingly led a rogue shinobi into the village. Danzo said. That is a serious accusation, Danzo. Do you have any evidence to back this up? The daimyo asked. I do. Naruto Uchiha has been. It's Uchiha Namaka's you one-eyed fuck-faced old man. If you're going to talk about my brother then get his fucking name right old face fucker. Natsumi said and Tsunade pinched her nose. Natsumi, not now. Tsunade said. Who might you be? You seem familiar. The fire daimyo said. I'm Natsumi Uzumaki Namakas. Oh and I made that big ass tree you are so fascinated by. Natsumi said. Uzumaki? You're Lady Kashina's daughter? The daimyo asked. Yeah. Natsumi said. It is an honor to meet you. The daimyo said. Likewise. Natsumi said in a professional voice. Not a bad impression I guess. Tsunade thought. Now, this Naruto Uchihanamakas. Why do you call him a rogue shinobi, Danzo? The daimyo asked. According to my sources, he has been out of the village for nearly half a year with no contact and he just so happens to be able to walk back into the village. According to the law, any shinobi gone for longer than three months with no contact with the council or is deemed a rogue shinobi and must be treated as such. Danzo said. That is preposterous. Kaharu said. Lady Tsunade, your rebuttal. The daimyo asked. I was out finishing up my training with my summons. It took a vacation to finish up. It took me longer than I thought because of a slight detour on the way, but Tsunade knew about me being gone. She just didn't tell your old ass. You old fucker. Naruto said. Ha. Natsumi yelled and pointed at Danzo. This is why I don't like when the two of them are in the same room. Tsunade thought. Draining you say. Care to test your limits and see your current level? The daimyo asked. No offense, but I'm the strongest person in the village and Natsumi is a close second, but I can easily defeat her in one move. Naruto said. Prove it. Natsumi said and passed out from blood loss when he turned into a naked version of Hiroshi, using her own sexy against her. Told you. Naruto said and Natsumi sprang back up. You cheated. Natsumi yelled and he just shrugged his shoulders. I must say that this is certainly a meeting I'll remember. Now, Tsunade, do you have it on file that he was out on vacation? The daimyo asked. Yes. Tsunade said and unsealed his file from her arm. I see. This is quite the record you have here. Although I must ask you to do some D-rank missions as you haven't done them as a genin. The daimyo said and Naruto's eye twitched. Do things. Number one and I mean this with every fiber of my body. If I even look at a D-rank mission I will blow up the tower and bitch slap you. Number two, if you look closely you'll see that I was never a typical genin. I was an elite genin so I missed out on a lot of things since I mainly did C and B rank missions. Naruto said. Can we please refrain from using profanity in the meeting? Kaharu asked. 
Right. Sorry. Naruto said and she nodded. Oh ho. Before you were you've done quite the number of C and B rank missions. As you've done many A and S rank missions. What's this? You're responsible for the death of Orochimaru. The daimyo asked. Yes and that file is about to be updated because I killed Itachi Ichiha earlier. Tsunade has his body. Naruto said. He killed Itachi Danzo thought and looked at Naruto who had a Sharingan activated. Quite impressive. The fire daimyo said then gave the file back to Tsunade. Enough of this. I wish to put in motion the removal of Tsunade from the seat of and replace her with somebody who actually knows how to protect a village. Since she's taken over we've had more spies get into the village, more random bandit attacks, and Kanoha has been losing money by the millions. Danzo said. Is that true, Lady Tsunade? The daimyo asked. Yes. However, all of those bandits never made it past the gates, the spies would get in during a small gap in shift change, and Kanoha has not been losing millions of dollars. I started to use it wisely and on things that actually matter. I fixed the slums of this village, built a hospital in Shinobi, as well as a civilian academy there for those that lived too far away from the original academy. I paid for the hospital to get new medical supplies, gave the academy more funding for better supplies, and on top of that I negotiated better trade deals with our allies. Sure it costs us more money, but we get better products especially from the land of spring. Do you think it was cheap to expand our village with all of the new people coming to live here since we're prospering? I said I was going to make this village something to be proud of, and damn it that's what I'm doing. Sanadi said. Very impressive. The daimyo said. I also opened my medical program, which is why we have a much higher success rate on our missions and less casualties. Naruto also played a part in this as well, thanks to his medical seals he created. So excuse me for actually doing my job, Danzo. Sanadi said. I see nothing wrong with spending money the way she has. However, since it is time for your yearly checkup, I have to ask this. If you were to select a replacement right now, who would it be? The daimyo asked. The Kashi Haddock. Tsunade said. What? Nitsumi yelled. Will you shut up? Let her explain. Naruto said. Why Kakashi Haddock? The daimyo asked. Yeah. Why? Nitsumi asked. Nitsumi, I get that you're disappointed, but like I told you earlier. You're still a few years off from being. Despite the times we're in, you should enjoy your youth while it lasts. Being busy is a big responsibility, and sometimes I'm in the office for 10 days straight before I have time to go home. You have the power which is a given, but you lack the knowledge and experience Kakashi has. Kakashi was under two in his lifetime before he was your instructor. He was on your father's genin team and he was his personal guard. He was also Hiruzen's guard as well. Kakashi has the pedigree to take over for a few years before you become one. Tsunade said. I guess you're right. Mitsumi said. What about you, young Naruto? Have you ever thought about becoming one the daimyo asked? Not in the slightest. It doesn't interest me. Naruto said. So what would you do we need become one Natsumi asked. I'll be the guy to handle missions that are too dangerous for them to handle. I mean I'm a one-man army like yourself and I'm still growing in strength. Naruto said. I see. Now, as for your request to have Lady Tsunade removed from her position as Danzo. I reject your request as she has done nothing wrong. Now this meeting is over and I must get back to my home before dinner. The daimyo said and left. Take that you old face, wrinkly skin, limp dick son of a bitch. She's still and you're not. Now go back to your hideout and drink some damn prune juice. Mitsumi said. Nice. Naruto said and gave her a high five as Danzo left. Thanks. Mitsumi said. Alright. Now, I have three cloud shinobi in a holding cell and I need to see what they want. Naruto and Mitsumi you're with me. Sakura, you can go and do whatever you want with Shikamaru. Tsunade said. Cloud Shinobi. Are you sure I've been out for only a few hours? Naruto asked. Positive. Let's go. Tsunade said. Tsunade's office. Sorry about the holding cell, but we just went on lockdown right before you arrived. Tsunade said. It's quite alright, Lady Tsunade. My name is Samui and the two behind me are Kari and Amoy. Samui said and they bowed. Nice to meet you. These are Naruto Ichiha and Natsumi Uzumaki. Tsunade said. Sup. Natsumi said and Naruto stayed quiet. Now, may I know the reason Cloud Shinobi are in Kanoha? Tsunade asked. Certainly. The Rakage has requested a cage summit in the Land of Iron in a few days' time. Each cage is permitted to bring two bodyguards with them. Will you accept the invitation? Samui asked. I'll be there. Tsunade said. Hang on. Something doesn't seem right. Naruto said. What do you mean? Natsumi asked. Why is the Rakage calling a cage summit all of a sudden? Something happened that made him do this. Naruto said. The Akatsuki captured his brother the Eight Tails. Samui said. 
So that's what this is about. This is the same rakage that declined to help when Sanadi sent out a request to help take down the Akatsuki, and the same rakage who didn't lift a finger when the two tails were captured. Naruto said. Do not disrespect the rakage in front of me. Kerry said and pointed her sword at him. If you're going to point that sword at me, then you better be prepared to die. Naruto said from behind Kerry and she froze. H how did you move so fast? Kerry asked. Whoa. I didn't even see him move. Natsumi thought. Incredible. That was just pure speed. Amwe thought. Thank you for accepting the request. However there is something else I'd like if you don't mind. Samui said. What's that? Tsunade asked. Isn't it okay that I had a spar with Naruto? Samui asked and Natsumi snickered. What's so funny? Kerry asked. She won't survive. He's the strongest person in the village. Not even we can defeat him. Natsumi said. Surely you're joking. Samui said. I'm not. I just took out the leader of the Akatsuki and he killed Orochimaru and Itachi Ichiha. That in the amount of S-ranked missions as well as criminals he's taken out over the years would make people flee. Natsumi said. Oh. I also killed Dadara. Naruto said. When did you do that? Tsunade asked. During my vacation. It wasn't much of a fight. He really likes to run his mouth about art and I just cut his head off. Naruto said and everyone just looked at him. Why are you just now saying something? Tsunade asked. It slipped my mind. Naruto said and looked at Samui who flinched under his gaze. I don't believe you. Kerry said. I don't care. So, Samui, do you still want that spar? It'll be over before you even flinch. Naruto said. We're leaving, Kerry and Amoy. Once again we'll see you at the cage summit. Samui said and they left. We have a few days and the two of you are coming as my guards. Make sure your stuff is packed. Tsunade said. I'll have Kama take us. Naruto said. Great dismissed. Tsunade said and they vanished. Pain was dead. Itachi was dead and now Naruto revealed that Dadara was dead. Three more members of the Akatsuki are down and now Tsunade has to deal with all of the cages gathered in one spot. With the threat of the Akatsuki still lurking around and having numerous tailed beasts in their possession, now would be the time for each cage to come together in order to stop the Akatsuki for good. Chapter 21. Cage Summit. It's been a few days since Natsumi defeated Pain and Naruto defeated Itachi. Word got around about their actions against the Akatsuki, and it put smaller villages on edge, as well as some of the larger villages. Iwa personally sent a message threatening Konoha that if Natsumi or Naruto did anything to harm their village, that it would result in extreme consequences. Natsumi wanted to go fight the Tsuchikage, but Naruto just put her to sleep with a Sharingan because she was giving him a nasty headache with her constant yelling. The village was still on lockdown, but they were a bit relaxed on Shinobi returning from a mission. After the entire fight with Nagato, Natsumi finally got the respect in the village that she rightfully deserved and earned. She was the big name in the village, and kids came up to her asking for an autograph which she happily gave them. Naruto, who was a big name in the village, also had people who admired him, but they did so from a distance, since most people felt like only a select few people could walk up to him and talk to him. He had a huge group of fangirls, but none of them dared to treat him how Sasuke was treated by his, since it was a known fact that he was dating Tamari, and nobody wanted to explain why they were all up touching her boyfriend. Naruto and Natsumi were currently on their way to the Iron Country for the cage summit with Tsunade, but Naruto was distracted. The guy Atsutsuki. Even after killing your lover and having children, you remained on Earth. What was the purpose of you staying here instead of going back to your home? Naruto thought. Hey. Fish cake. Natsumi said. Huh? Naruto asked. Sheesh. We've been calling your name for hours. What's going on in that head of yours? Natsumi asked. Nothing. Naruto said. It doesn't seem that way. You've been like that ever since we left Konoha. Tsunade said. I'm fine. Really. You don't have to worry about anything. Naruto said. If you say so. Now, I want to go over a few rules for this meeting, and this particularly goes for you, Natsumi. Tsunade said. Why me? Natsumi asked. Because you're a hothead and you still have a loose temper. This meeting will be intense and filled with a lot of insults being thrown. Keep your composure and don't attack or do anything stupid unless I signal you to do so. Naruto, you two have a tendency to mouth off at the wrong time, but I'm sure you know how to handle yourself in a meeting, and I trust you'll be on your best behavior. No doubt that the Reikage and Tsuchikage already know your heritage, so don't be surprised if they start talking about your family. Just let me handle everything and this will end smoothly. Tsunade said. Fine. Natsumi said. Your fingers are crossed. Naruto said and Natsumi gasped. How'd you know? Natsumi asked and uncrossed her fingers. Natsumi, this is serious. 
if you can't control yourself in this kind of meeting, then you'll just hurt your chances of becoming, and I know you don't want that. Sanadi said. I got it. I got it. Mitsumi said. I want both of you to keep your sensing abilities on high alert for Danzo or anything suspicious. All five cage will be present in one place, so this gives him the perfect time to try and kill either one of us. If he attacks, Naruto will be the one to handle him. Sanadi said. Why can't I fight him? Mitsumi asked. Because Danzo has a Sharingan eye, and we can't take the risk of him trying to control you for the Nine Tails. He also possesses Hashirama Senjutna, so he has the potential to utilize wood-style ninjutsu as well. Naruto said. I can use wood-style ninjutsu as well. Mitsumi said. Yes, but I'm pretty sure he knows techniques to restrain you. I'll take Danzo on and you can take out the root. Naruto said. Fine. Hey, look at that. Mitsumi said and pointed to the ground. Is that an avalanche? Tsunade asked as she saw snow falling at a rapid pace and Naruto activated his Sharingan. No. That's Gara, Kankuro and Tamari. Comet, go down to them. Naruto said. Sure thing. Comet said as he flew next to them. Hey, guys. Want a lift? Mitsumi asked. Sure. Tamari said and they hopped on Comet. Tamari, why didn't you summon Skyrus to take you to the Iron Country? Naruto asked. She was put in charge of watching the new hatchlings apparently and we had to walk. Tamari said. Ara, I take it that you received the same invitation from the Rakage. Sanadi said. Yes. Do you know what it's about? Gara asked. I have a theory. His brother was supposedly captured and he's angry now. Naruto said. Do you think he's looking for an outlet to make himself look like he's not responsible for this? Kankuro asked. It does make sense. The Rakage is a prideful man and his ego won't allow him to accept that he was wrong or had any kind of fault in this. Sanadi said. While the Rakage will be pointing the blame, I'm sure he will make some interesting points. Tamari said. What do you mean? Mitsumi asked. So far out of all the members of the Akatsuki, none of them are from the Land of Lightning. Kanoha, Suna, Kiri and Iwai all have members from their ranks in the Akatsuki or had members in the Akatsuki since some of them are dead. That's his only point he can really make though. Tamari said. Let me and Gara handle that. Right now our only ally is the. They might try to use that against us, but we'll be fine. Sanadi said. It's funny how the rakage of all people decided to call the summit. This is something you'd call for, Lady Tsunadi. Kankuro said. Well, his brother has gone missing so it's clear why he's finally getting involved. Tsunadi said. Hey Naruto. Tamari whispered. What's up? Naruto asked. Have you told Tsunadi about what we found? Tamari whispered. No. Naruto admitted. Tamari sighed and wrapped her arms around him to pull him closer, ignoring the teasing look Mitsumi was giving her at the moment. You have to tell her. This stuff is huge and could persuade the other cages to help us. Tamari whispered. We also run the risk of not getting any help. I'll tell her after the summit is over with, but until then we will keep this to ourselves. Naruto said. What about Gara? Tamari asked. Same goes for him. Naruto said. What are you two lovebirds whispering about? Mitsumi asked. About how you still can't beat Naruto in a fight. Tamari teased and Mitsumi's eye started to twitch. I can beat him. Mitsumi growled. Uh-oh. Looks like the little fox is mad. Tamari said. That's it. Me and you. Right here. Right now. Let's go. Mitsumi said and stood up. You might want to sit down. If you fall off, Comet isn't responsible for you so I doubt he'll try to catch you. Naruto warned. Comet you'll catch me right? Mitsumi asked. Are you a dragon summoner? Comet asked. No. Mitsumi mumbled. Here's your answer. Comet replied. That's not fair. Mitsumi said and smacked Comet on his back. Hey. Comet said. Relax, Comet. Naruto said and Comet blew smoke out his nose. Stupid deeds. That's why I like Tamari better. Comet mumbled. How big are you? Tsunade asked. I'm about 300 meters long. I'll probably grow another 100 meters before I reach full growth. Comet said. You're not finished growing Kankuro asked. No. I'm bigger than the boss of the dragons and nearly the size of the elder dragon Ra. Comet said. We're here. Naruto said as he was looking at the ground beneath them and Comet landed on the ground. Alright. Thank you for flying the Comet. If you need me to pick you up, don't need me. Comet told the men went up in smoke. The two cages and their bodyguards made their way to the meeting point. Tsunade had her official hat on and kept taking glances at Natsumi to make sure she was behaving. After a few minutes of walking, they finally arrived at the building where the meeting would be held. Each of the five cages sat around a table while their guards were up top and Lord Mifune walked in with his own samurai following him. 
Mitsumi looked at Naruto who had his Sharingan activated and his eyes were rapidly moving around. She closed her eyes and began gathering nature chakra to enter sage mode. They were well aware of what was going on in the meetings, but they were checking their surroundings, and Mitsumi felt a large group of chakra signatures coming towards Iron Country. Naruto. Mitsumi whispered. I know. Naruto replied. What do we do? Mitsumi asked. We wait. I'll take Danzo and you can help the five cages with him. Feels like he has a lot of them with him. Naruto said. I feel over 200 chakra signatures surrounding a large one that feels tainted. Mitsumi said. Tainted? How? Naruto asked. This chakra feels like yours and mom's chakra, but not quite. Almost as if it wasn't originally in his body. Mitsumi asked. Well, I do know he has a Sharingan in his eye socket, but I'm not too sure about why his chakra feels like Sanadi's. Naruto said. Enough of this nonsense. This yell came from the fourth rakage, who was pissed off at how the current meeting was going on and punched a hole in the desk. This led to all of the bodyguards from each cage to jump into action, except for Natsumi and Naruto, who didn't move due to Tsunade signaling them not to do anything. Mifune just looked around before letting out a deep sigh. This summit is a place of discourse, so please refrain from any more behavior that lacks ability. Mifune said. Penkuro, Tamari. Stand down. Gara orders and his siblings nod. Ow, Chijuro. It's alright. May calmly said. Yes ma'am. Ao responded. Atsuchikij just nodded his head at his guards while Lei pulled his arm out of the desk and begrudgingly took a seat. Now, let's continue our discussion. Mifune said. The hidden leaf, the stone, the sand and the midst. The Akatsuki membership is compassed of rogue shinobi from your villages. That's not all either. From our investigations, we know that among you and the earlier cage there are those who have even used the Akatsuki. I said. The cage used them? Gara asked. That's why I don't trust any of you. I have no interest in any discourse, but the reason I summoned you all here is to ultimately question your loyalties. I exclaimed. What do you mean that they used the Akatsuki? Gara questioned. You were the son of the Kazakiyaj and you don't know anything. Just ask your village elders back home. You of the sand have previously used the Akatsuki in battle. I responded. Currently, all five great nations are equally stable. They are moving from military expansion to disarmament. As strain as relations are between the nations and the threat of war diminishes, hidden villages considered military power by their nations merely become costly hindrances and yet at the same time, completely eliminating such villages has shown risks as well. However, if war suddenly breaks out, relying on ninja with no battle experience would be problematic. You'd lose the battle without question. Unoki explained. The cage would realize that one way to avoid that risk is to use mercenary soldiers. Namely soldiers from the Akatsuki. Gara added. It takes effort and money to cultivate accomplished ninja from within one's own hidden village. The Akatsuki makes war its livelihood and is made up of experienced professionals. Furthermore. They can be hired quite cheaply. Best of all, their soldiers have always delivered superior results. Unoki said. Don't be a pompous Tsuchikage. The sand once used the Akatsuki to destroy the hidden leaf. I'm talking about Arachimaru who had already left the Akatsuki by then, but as a result, your father, the fourth Kazakiyajin the third, here is imperished. It's also hard to dismiss the thought that this was part of an even larger plan. The most suspicious of them all is the hidden mist. The mist never engages in diplomacy, and it's rumored that the Akatsuki started there. I said. You're wrong. Tsunade said. Excuse me? I asked. The Akatsuki didn't start in the hidden mist village. Tsunade said. How would you know that? I asked. The leader of the Akatsuki was an old student of the late Jureya, who took in three orphans during the Second Shinobi War. The Akatsuki started in the Hidden Rain village and somehow managed to enter the Hidden Mist village. Tsunade said. Why should I take your word? It's no secret that Kanoha helped the Mist end their bloody civil war. I said. You should take my word considering the fact that three of my Shinobi are responsible for the deaths of quite a few members of the Akatsuki. In fact, two of them are my personal guards. Tsunade said. She signaled for them making Naruto and Natsumi appear behind Tsunade. I'd like to introduce you all to Naruto Ichiha Namikas and Natsumi Uzumaki Namikas. Naruto himself has killed Itachi Ichiha, Dadara and Rachimaru. Natsumi has killed Sasori of the Red Sand, Kakuzu, and the leader of the Akatsuki, Pain. In fact, despite me sending out warnings to all villages, only Suna and the Hidden Mist village took me seriously. We were able to prevent Gara from losing his tailed beast. Tsunade said. Since it's come to this, I'll be honest. We suspect that somebody behind the scenes was secretly manipulating Yagura, the man who was before I took over. There's a possibility that that someone is the Akatsuki. 
Furthermore, it was the right move to go to Konoha for help, since it was discovered by Naruto that they were secretly being supplied by Danzo Shimura of the Hidden Leaf Village. May admitted. Sending spies into the mist is grounds for war. I said. Oh sit down. Lady Tsunade didn't even know about that until Naruto sent word back to Tsunade. Natsumi said. Thank you Natsumi. Danzo has been operating in the shadows ever since the first reign of the third, and we could never prove it due to a lack of evidence. Whenever his men are killed, they burst into flames destroying all traces of them ever being there. However, Danzo did not expect Konoha to aid the Hidden Mist in ending their civil war. Tsunade said. Yet another rogue shinobi from Konoha. I said. Yes. Which brings me to my next point. Danzo may try to ambush us here at the summit. Tsunade said. What? I asked. You heard me and as a token of good faith, I'd appreciate it if you all would help me in ending his life and his army of Anbu soldiers at his disposal. Tsunade said. Why should we help the Hidden Leaf? I asked. Consider it payback for trying to kidnap Hinata Hayuga 13 years ago. Tsunade said. Henkuro, Tamari. When they arrive, we will aid Konoha in battle. Gara said. Ow, Chijuro. We're helping as well. May added. Before anything else could be said, Naruto unsealed his sword and blocked an attack aimed at Tsunade. The root that attacked Tsunade had his head removed from his shoulders and went up in flames. Naruto, your orders are simple. Find Danzo and end his life. Tsunade said. I'm on it. Naruto replied and vanished. Itsumi, how many are there? Tsunade asked. Over 200. They're surrounding the village. Mitsumi answered. Lord Mifune, I hate that it has come to this, but do you have anywhere the civilians can hide while we fight? Tsunade asked. Of course. Mifune said. Itsumi, create as many clones as you can and have them evacuate the civilians. I want the real you next to me during the fight. Tsunade said. You got it. Mitsumi replied and left. Samurai Bridge. After leaving the Five Cage Summit, Naruto went searching for the largest chakra signature amongst the incoming chakra signatures and waited for it to arrive. He sat atop the samurai bridge until he felt three chakra signatures in front of him, including the strongest one of them all. So, you're here, Naruto Che. This is just perfect. Danzo said. Danzo began unwrapping his injured arm, revealing a pale skin arm made up of Hashirama DNA and implanted Sharingan on his arm. Listen, Naruto. I'm going to take your Sharingan and add them to my collection. Danzo said. Taking eyes from the Ichiha massacre. I honestly should thank Karen for raiding Orochimaru's base with me. She knew exactly where to go for some important files. Naruto said. FK, Torin. Deal with him. Danzo ordered. Before they could even move, both of their heads were removed from their shoulders, and Danzo jumped back, narrowing his visible eye, since he didn't see Naruto move from his spot. That takes care of those two. Naruto said. Danzo went through a few hand signs before taking off at what he assumed were blinding speeds and punched Naruto, only to get met by the rib cage of his Susanoo. Before Danzo could jump back, he was grabbed by the hand of the Susanoo. I told you a decade ago that you'd regret sending your guards after me, and I intend to keep my promise. Naruto said. Muscles began to grow on the body of his Susanoo, and not before long, Danzo was squeezed to a pulp, but his body reappeared behind Naruto who wasn't surprised in the slightest. Next, let's battle with our eyes. Danzo said. Danzo quickly made a kunai appear in his hand and tried to stab Naruto through his Susanoo. Of course it didn't work since the kunai broke and Danzo didn't show any emotion. Just as I thought. The Susanoo. That splendid armor to protect yourself with. Danzo said. He was smashed into the ground but once again he reappeared on top of the samurai bridge completely unharmed. The power in its attack is impressive as well. Danzo said. The Matarasu. Danzo suddenly burst into black flames due to Naruto's Sharingan ability, and of course Danzo reappeared unharmed. Danzo went through hand signs and used the wind style. Vacuum bullet. Naruto dodged every single one of them before countering with a fireball, and Danzo was forced to jump out of the way. Unrivaled speed, excellent reflexes and three Manjiku abilities in rapid fashion. You definitely are the son of Konoha's yellow flash and Sayuriya Danzo said. He then dropped down to a knee when he felt the wind get knocked out of him courtesy from Naruto's first being embedded into his stomach. Yet you still try to fight me knowing you're outmatched. Naruto said. He quickly jumped away when Danzo used the wind style. Vacuum blast in an attempt to catch him off guard, but like he said, Naruto's speed was unrivaled. It was almost like he was predicting his moves before he even made them. Naruto then broke apart into tiny little dragons that began flying around until Danzo saw Sayori standing behind him. Sayori? He questioned. Danzo quickly realized he was under and broke it before jumping away to create some distance. 
he was then met with Naruto's armored version of his Susanoo, aiming right at him before firing off an attack. Not being able to weave signs in time, Danzo used his arm with Hashirama's DNA to use wood style in order to avoid being killed again. The cells of Hashirama send you. No wonder your body is able to handle so many Sharingan eyes. Your chakra took a deep plunge to use this. You should have let me kill you and use the Izanagi to revive yourself. Naruto said and Danzo's eye widened. You knew. Danzo said. I knew the moment you reappeared the first time. Did you honestly think you could beat an Ichiha using his own clan techniques? Your ego is showing. Even with all of those Sharingan eyes and Shisui's in your eye socket, you'll never be able to use it to its full capacity. The strain on your body right now is still effective despite you countering it with Hashirama Senju's DNA. You're at my mercy now. Naruto said. He fired off another shot from his Susanoo and Danzo was hit, but he reappeared using the Izanagi. Danzo ran at Naruto again and was stabbed again only to reappear once more. Naruto just sighed as it was getting a bit annoying. Hiding Susanoo won't be easy either. His arrow attack is hard to dodge and I can't do Izanagi yet. I have to finish things this minute. Danzo thought. He wiped some blood onto his finger and used a summoning to bring out his Baku, which was a gigantic elephantine chimera which towers over Naruto's armored Susanoo. Granted, Naruto was only using the upper body of his Susanoo right now, but the size of Danzo's summons was impressive. The Baku began inhaling everything in its path, rendering the Susanoo immobile, giving Danzo an opening to attack from behind or so he thought. Naruto used the Great Dragon Flame to stop the Baku and then used his Susanoo to punch Danzo into a pillar, forcing him to use the Izanagi again. Four minutes. Naruto said. What was that? Danzo asked. That's how long it lasts. It makes your attack successful while rendering all of mine ineffective. That means you have 16 minutes left, but given the way this fight is going, you're not lasting 16 minutes. Naruto said. Naruto dropped the Susanoo and disappeared from sight. Danzo was on edge since he wasn't used to Naruto's moves. Typically when a ninja disappears, they would want to hide their chakra, but Naruto's chakra was felt all over the place, so he could attack from any angle he wanted to. He was hiding in plain sight, and Dasno was stabbed through the back with Naruto's sword, only to reappear with the Izanagi. Had I known he would be this strong, I would have taken him at birth. Danzo thought. You must be getting desperate, Danzo. Naruto's voice echoed around the entire bridge area. Desperate you say? How? Danzo asked. He wanted to keep Naruto talking so he could find his exact location. Attacking the five cage summit. A man as smart as yourself should have known the odds weren't in your favor. Five cages, two cage level shinobi and Lord Mifune as well. Bringing hundreds of roots here was a bad call. Natsumi and I were able to sense you all coming miles away. Naruto told him. Sometimes you must act brash to get desired results. Danzo replied. How's that going for you? Since you weren't able to make sure the Akatsuki destroyed Konoha, your plans became rushed. You've ruined your body to control the Nine Tails when in fact you didn't have to do that. Instead of enticing the village to harm Natsumi as a child, you could have simply went up to her as an old man trying to help and slowly sank your claws into her. The third wouldn't have noticed and possibly could have brushed it off as her being fed up with the hideous treatment of the villagers. Naruto sighed and Danzo narrowed his eye. Why are you telling me this? Danzo questioned. I'm telling you this because eventually you'll run out of time using the Izanagi, and when you take your final breath, I want you to realize how much of a failure you really are. Growing up, Hiruzen has always had such high praise for your efforts during the first shinobi war. I know the story about how he became and not much has changed between then and now. Hiruzen was willing to sacrifice himself for the village during the first shinobi war in order for Lord Second to walk away the victor, and that's the kind of person who deserves to be. Not somebody who hesitates when things get rough. A moment's hesitation can lead to one's death and become the turning point in an important battle. Naruto said. Then why isn't Sanadi here to fight me? Danzo asked. That's because you've been at the top of my shit list since the moment my mother died. Poisoning her after she gave birth to me is something that solidified me killing you. Lady Tsunade is with everyone else as we speak, fighting off and potentially killing all of your roots. Four cages, nine bodyguards in which one of them is a cage-level shinobi, Lord Mifune and an entire army of samurai. This is the end of your pathetic life. Naruto said. Naruto appeared behind Danzo and shocked him with the electromagnetic murder before kicking him away. Three kunai went flying at Danzo and stabbed him in three vital spots, but Dazno once again used the Izanagi. Naruto used his lightning manipulation to create a sort of pure lightning chakra, as Danzo coated a chakra blade in wind chakra. They ran at one another with the intention of finishing the fight and stabbed one another through the chest. You were too hasty. My last eye is still open. You should have been on my side. You could have seen all the good it would have done for you. I win, Naruto. 
You may think that you saw through my Izanagi, but. Danzo said. What? What is this? Why won't the Izanagi activate? Danzo thought. You're finished. Naruto said. He faded out of sight, and Danzo saw the very same lightning sword sticking through his chest from behind. Naruto's subtlety placed him under it to make him think he still had one more Izanagi left. You insolent boy. Danzo said. Did you really think you could stand a chance against me? I have been using the Sharingan since I was five years old, and I've worked till exhaustion took over on perfecting it. Meanwhile, you only stole your Sharingan eye and implanted them into your body. Naruto said. Danzo's body started to break down due to his declining health, and his Hashirama Senju arm began to spread out into a gigantic tree, forcing Danzo to break off to avoid being taken over. Danzo stood up and unwrapped his right eye, revealing one last Sharingan that Naruto already knew about. No. This is where we battle with our eyes. Danzo said. Even with that eye, you still couldn't detect that something was wrong. You must have used up its visual prowess sometime, and the time limit hasn't gone up yet. Naruto said. What does that mean? Danzo asked and Naruto held up his palm revealing a Sharingan eye. I believe the person this belongs to is already dead. Naruto told him and burned the eye with his Amaterasu. I am possible. Danzo said. Not impossible. Let me tell you a little secret that not many people know. My lineage comes directly from Madara Echeha himself. He had a child in secret, and his direct bloodline continued all the way down to myself. I have the most powerful Sharingan in Echeha history, you lost this battle the moment I was born. Naruto said. Danzo tried to run away which made Naruto sigh as he began walking after him. He followed Danzo's bloody footsteps, slowly catching up to him, Danzo eventually collapsed to the ground as his wounds became too much for him to handle. You're going to die. However, I leave you with some hope. The Hidden Leaf Village will not fall. The current generation of shinobi will carry on the will of fire and defend the village. You were so stuck into your own twisted world of ruling the village that you turned it into a personal fight with Lord Third. I'll take care of the leaf along with Natsumi. Naruto said. Anzo didn't say anything. He just snatched open the top part of his torn robe and activated a reverse tetragram seal on his body. Not too long after, the seal exploded and Danzo was no more. Meeting Hall. Scorch marks, busted walls and nine of the best shinobi alive were gathered back inside of the meeting hall. There weren't any casualties on their end, but the wreckage lost an arm from a lucky move by the extremely dangerous route if you were to ask him. He was too prideful to admit that a few routes managed to get one over on him. Well, that's over with. Mitsumi said. How did Danzo manage to gather so many shinobi to his side? Linoki asked. For years Danzo has been in connection with Orochimaru behind Kanoha's back. For the last four decades or so, Danzo has been kidnapping children from orphanages all over the nations and turning them into his own mindless army. Tsunade said. Why didn't Lord Third do something about it? May asked. He couldn't. You've all seen what happens to the bodies of his. They go up in flames and he's very good at not leaving a paper trail. I just recently discovered this when Naruto and Natsumi went to kill Orochimaru. Tsunade said. Where is he anyway? Gara asked. He's on his way. Natsumi told him. Is Danzo with him? Tsunade asked. No. It's just him. I don't even feel Danzo's chakra anymore. Natsumi said. Good. Tsunade said. Seems as if I missed a party. Said. Who's there? I demanded. The swirling vortex was shown and out came Toby who Naruto has already fought. My name is Madara Cha. I am here to explain something to you all, and once you understand it, I'll ask you a question. Toby said. What is it? I asked. It's about my plan. Project Tsuki no Mi. Toby said. I've heard of that before, but from where? Tamari thought. I wasn't having any of that and went to attack Toby, but he just went straight through him. What? I said to himself. Just calm down, Rakage. Let's hear him out and take it from there. Linoki said. Are all of you finally prepared to listen? Toby asked. Just get on with it. Tsunade said. It seems I miscalculated. I was hoping Danzo would be able to weaken some of the five cage and I could take some of you hostage, but I guess that was too much to ask of him. Toby said. Take us hostage. What for? May asked. To ensure that Project Tsuki no Mi was implemented smoothly. Toby responded. I'm truly surprised that Madara Echeha is still alive, but I'm confused. Why do you of all people need such roundabout tactics? With all your power, you should be able to bring any plan to fruition easily. Linoki said. My injuries from my battle with the first Hashirama were too severe. I currently have little power. I'm a shell of my former self. Toby explained. Oh I get it. This plan of yours is to restore your power. See, the bodyguard of A said. Hmm. I suppose you could say that, but there's so much more to it. Toby said. 
What exactly is this project Suki no Mi? Mifium questioned. It'll be a long story, so I'll need to sit down. Toby said and actually took a seat. Stop messing around. What kind of plan is it? Kankuro asked. All shall become one with me. In a possession form that unites all. There's an ancient stone tablet passed down within the Achiha clan. It's in a room below the leaf. Upon it are written secrets engraved by the Sage of Six Paths himself, but they cannot be read without visual powers. With the Sharingan, Manjekyo Sharingan and respectively, more and more knowledge is progressively revealed. Toby said. Their story is becoming more and more unbelievable. The Sage of the Six Paths is a myth. Lenoki said. It is the truth. He did indeed exist and he left that stone tablet behind. Toby said. Stop changing subjects. What does this Sage of the Six Paths have to do with your plan anyway? I asked. Do any of you know why he became a legendary figure? One that is revered as a god amongst shinobi. This is where the link between that man and my purposes lies. Toby said. Madaricha. You possess the Manjekyo Sharingan, and one of your fellow Akatsuki members possesses it. Do you know all of the tablet secrets then? May asked. Yes. Let's hear them. Lenoki said. The sage one saved the world from a certain monster. Toby said. What monster? Gara asked. Gara, you currently hold one small piece of that monster sealed away within you. It was the aggregate of all of the tailed beasts. A creature that possessed almost infinite chakra. The ten tails. Toby said. I thought there were only nine tailed beasts. Tamari said. I just told you. It was the aggregate of all of the tailed beasts. The ten tails chakra was simply divided up to create the nine tailed beasts that we know today by the sage of the six paths hand. Toby said. I really don't like where this is going. That's why the Akatsuki were out collecting all of the tailed beasts. Kankuro said. Where's Naruto at? This could all be useful to him. Tamari thought. The Sage of the Six Paths developed a certain ninjutsu in order to protect the world from the Ten Tails, that ninjutsu is still being secretly passed down. It is the sealing process for. Yes, the Sage was the Ten Tails. He sealed the Ten Tails within himself to suppress the monster. The Sage who saved humanity from being terrorized by the beast was revered as a savior and as a god, but the Sage feared that upon his death, the seal would come undone and the Ten Tails' immense chakra would re-emerge. So in his final moments, using the last of his strength to partition the Ten Tails Chakra into nine pieces and scatter them across the world. Then he sealed away the body of the monster now depleted of Chakra and hurled it up into the sky. It became the moon. Toby said. This tale is ridiculous. I mean, what human being could do something like that? Derry asked. That's because the Sage of the Six Paths wasn't completely human. Kagaya was from another world. Tamari thought. As the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, the Sage had already advanced beyond the realm of humanity. Toby said. I understand you want to collect all of the Nine Tailed Beast Chakra, but what do you plan to do with it? Sanadi asked. Revive the Ten Tails of course and become the Ten Tails. I would then use its tremendous chakra to strengthen my visual prowess and launch a certain. Toby said. But certain Noki asked. The super where I project my eye off the moon's surface. An infinite Tsukiyomi. All humans living on this earth will be placed under me and as a result, by controlling each and every one of them, I will unify the entire world. I will create a world without hatred or war. Everything will become one with me. Everything will be united. That is the project Tsuki no Mi. Toby revealed. You're insane. I'm not just handing the world over to you. I said. That kind of peace is just an illusion. Peace is only meaningful if it's achieved honestly. Gara said. So what exists inside such a world? There's no hope, no dreams. It's just an escape. May said. You want to unite the whole world, huh? Sounds like instead of uniting the world, you want to make the world yours and only yours. Lenoki said. Yet, with all of your talk, what have you 5 cage accomplished? You of all people should know the truth by now. There is no hope. To hope is the equivalent to giving up and it is the biggest deception of them all. Now, turn over the remaining 8 and 9 tails. Cooperate with my plan or this is war. Toby said. Or you say? Gara asked. Eight tails? What do you mean? You captured B. I said. The eight tails capture failed and he escaped. Now, there's a shinobi who's perfect. There's no one quite like your younger brother. Toby said and A started to go off, but he was ignored. I won't give up Natsumi. Gara said. Neither will I Mei said. What about you, Reikich? Lenoki asked. I'll never hand over my brother. I exclaimed and Natsumi who was just listening to everything finally spoke up. Yeah you prickly haired, orange mask wearing fuck. Fuck you. Natsumi said. I may not have any strength, but I do have the power of the six tailed beasts that I've collected. You have no chance of winning. Toby said. We won't abandon hope. Gara said. Very well. 
I hereby declare war. The fourth great ninja war begins now. Toby said. What? You're starting the fourth great ninja war now, are you mad? Unoki asked. The next time we meet will be in battle. Toby said and left in his typical fashion. All right, then. What should we do now? Unoki asked. Our nations must form an alliance. It's the only way to fight the power of six-tailed beasts. Gara said. Lord Rakage, you oppose this idea. May said. It seems my little brother is safe, but we cannot allow ourselves to be bullied by the Akatsuki anymore. Form the alliance and we'll settle this for good. I said. In order to stop Madara's Project Infinite Tsuki no Mi, we must keep the eight and nine tails out of his clutches. I believe it is imperative to get them into hiding as fast as we can. May said. That's absolutely right. If the ten tails were revived, we'd be done for. Chijuro said. Yeah. I can't even imagine the power Madara had amassed with six-tailed beasts, and if he possessed them, that would be a secret weapon. Unoki said. I agree. Otherwise he wouldn't have been so bold. Akatsuchi said. I believe the allied shinobi forces must blend to use the strength of the eight and nine tails. Don't you all agree with that? Unoki asked. No. Absolutely not. This is also a war to protect both of them. I think the reason that Madara is waging war with his six-tailed beasts is because in his weakened state, it is too difficult for him to capture the eight and nine tails with the remaining Akatsuki members. Even if it was possible the risks are too high. Also, he may be hoping to lure the two out with this war, for many reasons, using the tailed beasts in battle is not a wise strategy. Gara said. I agree. We must find a different plan. May said. Yes. I also agree with the Kazakiage. I said. Absolutely the fuck not. Mitsumi yelled. Mitsumi, calm down. Tsunade said. Hell no. You honestly think I'm going to go into hiding just because the rest of you are a bunch of pussies? No. I'm fighting. The Akatsuki have taken too much from me. First my parents, then the old man and then pervy sage. I am fighting and none of you will stop me. Mitsumi said. You have to understand. Mitsumi cut me off. No. You have to understand. This fight needs me and deep down you all know it. I didn't train for my entire life just to be cast aside and put away like some damsel in distress. I am a cage level shinobi without the nine tails chakra, I can handle my own against anybody in this room. Mitsumi said. You'd be falling right into Madara's hands. Do you not understand that? May asked. Of course I understand it. Here's another reason why you should want me on the battlefield. Mitsumi said and did a few hand signs. Wood style. Wood clone. The perfect wood clone appeared from Natsumi's body, shocking everyone in the room, minus Tsunade, who was just listening to Natsumi go on her rant. The wood keke Jenkai. May said in awe. My word. I never thought I'd see this. Unoki said. I'm fighting. I don't care who I have to go through, nobody is stopping me from ending the Akatsuki once and for all. Natsumi said and Naruto appeared. Wow. You guys certainly are up in arms. Naruto said. Naruto. Tell them I'm fighting. Natsumi said. We all know you're fighting. Let's be honest, do any of you honestly think you can hold her back for long? It would take a cage level shinobi to even have a chance to hold her back. She'll break out of wherever you trap her and head straight for the battlefield. Naruto said. See. He agrees. Mitsumi said. I don't think you understand. We're going up against Madara Cha. The power he possesses is immense. Unoki said. He's not Madara Cha. Naruto said. What? I asked. How do you know that? Tsunade asked. Because there's no similarity in our chakra signatures. Tsunade can attest to this. Chakra signatures are sort of like DNA amongst family members. Madara had a child in secret and that continued his bloodline. He would be considered my great-great-great-grandfather if he was truly alive. This guy may not be Madara, but he is no joke. Naruto said. If you're related to Madara, then you must know about the Achiha stone tablet. Derry said. Yeah I know about it. He's a fool for following that tablet. Whatever he thinks will happen won't. Naruto said. Explain. Tsunade ordered. The stone tablet has been tampered with quite a bit. Every time I would look at it growing up, the wording was different. One of my manjekyo abilities wasn't on the tablet since it was unknown, but a few years later, it magically appeared on the tablet. Someone or something has been messing with that tablet and trust me, whoever this guy is, he's about to awaken something even worse than the ten tails. Naruto said. Worse than the ten tails? What could be worse than that? May asked. You might as well tell them. Tamari said. The sage of the six paths mother is worse than the ten tails. She is the original user of chakra on earth and she's the one sealed inside of the moon. If this fake Madara actually gathers the chakra from all tailed beasts, we'll be in for the fight of our lives. Naruto said. Wait. 
How do you know all of this? Tsunade asked. I discovered this by talking to some of the tailed beasts, and my trip to the land of ancestors with Tamari revealed some of this information. A, your brother is able to use the eight tails chakra to its full extent, right? Naruto asked. Yeah. What of it? I asked. Itsumi will be a vital piece to the war, so instead of just locking her away, have your brother train her to use the nine tails chakra properly. If she can properly use the nine tails chakra, that would be a huge advantage for us against this fake Madara and the other tailed beasts. That way we'll have three full users of tailed beast chakra. Gara, your brother and Mitsumi. Naruto said. There are six tailed beasts we're up against. Unoki said. If it really comes down to it, I'll take control of one or two tailed beasts if possible and use them to our advantage. Naruto said. You can do that. Mei asked. Yeah. Anybody whose Sharingan is powerful enough can control the tailed beasts. I just never wanted to do it. Naruto said. This plan does seem to go in our favor a bit more. Unoki said. Go let her fight. She's the daughter of the Yellow Flash and Kanoha's Red Hot Habanero. Sanadi said. Yeah. I can totally handle this. Mitsumi said. I don't know. Military strategy is a foreign concept to my little brother. I can never predict what he'll do. He might bring his own band of chaos to the battlefield. I said. The same could be said for Natsumi. Gara said and Tamari chuckled. I'll say. Tamari added. Hey. Natsumi said. Be that as it may, chaos is what we'll need. She has my boat. Tsunade said. Very well. The eight and nine tails will be under protective custody until Natsumi gains control of the nine tails chakra. What do you say, Tsuchikich? Mei asked and Lenoki nodded. We'll share our intel on Killer Bee with all you stone, mist, sand and leaf. Use it to put together tracking units and get them moving. Tell them to inform me the moment they locate the eight tails. My younger brother will only listen to me. I said. Um, may I say something? Chijuro said. What is it? I asked. Uh, right. Well, you see it's just. Spit it out boy. I yelled. It's just, in the Akatsuki there's another member of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, Kisum Hashigaki. He has chakra equal to and his sword, or shark skin, is the most terrible of all the blades. When his chakra and sword merge, he's human, but he's close to that of A. He's like a tailed beast without the tail or so my elders have told me. He's extraordinary. Please do not underestimate him. Chijuro said. Yes. We already know about that, but anyway, are all of you sure about this plan? Lenoki asked. Actually, I wonder about that. The world's first allied shinobi force is being formed here at the very moment, and its strength is also unknown. Now there must be some risk in Madara using the Seven Tails beasts. Otherwise he wouldn't have come to the summit to try to negotiate. He must be facing unfavorable circumstances like us. Furthermore, we samurai shall also participate in this war. Is this more satisfying Tsuchikage? Nifun asked and Lenoki just grunted. The question of who will lead the allied shinobi forces is still an issue. If you find any of us cage suitable. After all, Mifune, you're the one who's disparaged every single one of us cage. Lenoki said and Mifune looked around. I believe appointing Lord A would be the wisest choice to make. Mifune said. You found him unsuitable because he's ruled by his emotions and relies on brute strength. Lenoki complained. But the eight tails still alive, I believe the rakage will stay calm. Also, he built a consensus with you earlier and was able to come up with a counter strategy. The rakage is the only one who can control the eight tails. A tailed beast that's key to the upcoming conflict. Mifune explained. Mizukage, Kazukiage, are you okay with that? Unoki asked. Oh for fuck's sake will you just shut your old ass up? You just basically asked for him to pick a leader. News flash you old fuck, the rakage is the only suitable person for that. Gara and Lady are basically new, you're an old fart, and Lady Tsunade is best suited for organizing the medical corps for the alliance. By the way, stop referring to Killer B as the Eight Tails. It's offensive. We have names. Fucking use them. When you refer to us like that, you're no better than the Akatsuki. Natsumi said and Tsunade sighed. Despite her vulgar language, she's right. Tsunade said. I agree. I'll put my faith in the rakage. May answered. Yes. We shall leave it to you. Gara said. Very well. I lead the allied shinobi forces. Lenoki, since you're the only one who's battled Madara Cheha, we'll need any intel you can give us. Now cooperate. I said. You still like taking down everyone and ordering them around, do you? Lenoki asked. You don't have to trust me if you don't want to, but at this rate the entire shinobi world is in danger of eradication. Now is the time to put aside our personal feelings and work together. I said. Well, I suppose it is better than losing this war. If this shinobi world were to disappear, I wouldn't be able to quarrel with you anymore. Alright. I'll cooperate. 
the Allied Shinobi forces are now formed. First we must report this to our respective feudal lords. Unoki said and Naruto just sighed. It's like they didn't even remember I said this guy isn't Madaracha. Naruto mumbled. It's okay, but it still doesn't hurt to prepare just in case the real Madara shows up. I'll send word through Tatsu for anything we discover on our end, okay? Tamari asked. Sure. Naruto said. There's something else bothering you, isn't it? Tamari asked. Yeah. You could say that. Naruto admitted. Wanna talk about it? Tamari questioned and touched his shoulder. Not yet. I have to talk to Tsunade first. Naruto said. Naruto, we're leaving. Kiss your girlfriend goodbye and summon a comet. Natsumi said and Tamari blushed. I'll see you later. Tamari said as she kissed his cheek and left with Gara. Oh by the way. Tsuchikich. Naruto said. What is it? Unoki asked. If you ever send a message to Konoha again threatening me and Natsumi, I'll make what my father did to you during the Third Shinobi War look like a walk in the park. This is your only warning. Naruto said. He looked at Lenoki with his Sharingan blazing who only gave a grunt in acknowledgement. It's not that he was scared, but he honestly didn't want to risk pissing off somebody who just admitted he's a direct descendant of Madara Che, who also has the blood of the Yellow Flash going through his body. Anzo is dead, Tobi declared war, and Natsumi was about to get more training. However, while this summit was going on, a certain snake summoner emerged from one of the many curse marks he placed on test subjects throughout the years. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.